Well, a very, very good morning, or whatever time of the day it is for you, wherever you're watching the race from. Welcome to Spa Francorchamps. This is the first part of the 12 hours of Spa. Six hours a day from 11.50 local time through to 17.50, just before six in the evening. It's going to be action-packed. The weather, as you can see, a little bit of cloud here and there. But the championship is one that takes the drivers all around Europe. Mugello has, has been ticked off. 12 hours here at Spa Francorchamps today and tomorrow. Then down to Monza in June, and then Estoril and Barcelona. Barcelona, completing a selection of phenomenal circuits, and that's why the series is boasting a grid here of 50 strong, and it's uh, really looking all set. What the weather will do, we cannot tell you, but we can assure you, wet or dry, the circuit is going to be absolutely fantastic, and no wonder it draws such a grid of cars, such a diverse grid, many classes, and that makes it all the more exciting. If you're not battling at the front, you might be in a, t a touring car down at the rail. But the calendar from Mugello to Spa to Monza, Estoril and Barcelona. Joe, it's a good one. It, it is, and it's a very diverse one with a six-hour qualifying race at Estoril. Quite a different format, that. It's effectively an 18-hour motor race, Bruce. Well, we're all set. So let's go down to the grid to the king of ceremonies down there on this coronation day in the UK, Nick Damon. Uh, Marvellous spa, and thank you if you've chosen the pomp and circumstance of the Creventic series over some little local event in London. Um, we won't be crowning our champion tomorrow afternoon, and our carriages are slightly less ornate, though they do have a lot more than four horses pulling them, about 400 or 500 horsepower. And the good news is, the only singing will be if Bruce or Joe don't get to the faders in time when I start a show tune. On with the grid. OK, so in pole, it's the ever successful Haas RT team. Um, let's have a wander. Let's talk to Sandrine Haas. Let's talk to the woman whose name is above the door. You, you, you're making it very easy. You win a race. You're in pole. Did you realize that racing was this easy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> we know it's not easy. We're just working really, really hard for it. I mean, to tell us a bit how the team came about, we know you as a fantastic motorsport photographer, and suddenly you've got a very successful Audi GT3 race team. Um, you have to be a bit crazy, and crazy about motorsports, I think. That's all. I mean, there's things move on. Don't get stuck with just no, doing what you know. Just move on. Thanks, Andrew. And proudly showing the flag of Antigua and Barbuda on the car. Um, they, I'll, I'll do a quick word with the driver because Fred Vervich is over the uh, side. I've spotted him. Fred, great qualifying, but that was in very, very different uh, conditions. We had wet, dry, wet, dry. Today we have that strange thing called sun. Yeah, it's very strange, definitely, in, uh, especially in Spa. Um, but uh, I think yeah, we can expect, uh, again, some unexpected rain probably in the race. So they will mix up things a bit, uh, probably tomorrow worse than, than today. So. Uh, yeah, I will enjoy the, the dry time <laughs> in the start. So, so obviously you've got a, a pro entry, you've got quite a lot of flexibility. I mean, I mean, is it a case where you're just you're starting to keep the car out of trouble more than anything else? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, the most experienced for sure um, <clears throat> of the team, and um, yeah, we want just to, to have a, a clean clean getaway. Uh, I have to say, I mean, uh, to start in pole position would be great for uh, for an M driver because it's he's free, he's <laughs> not bothered, but. Yeah, uh, I will just try to, you know, uh, have no track limits, no try to have no, nothing going on. That's important, and it's a, it's an endurance race. It's a strate strategic uh, race, so uh, I think that will be the most important. Great, well, thank you, Fred. Now, interestingly, of course, this is a split race, but this is a 50-50. It's six hours today, six hours tomorrow. So the concept of trying to stay on the lead lap, which on the shorter first half is often the idea, it's not going to be so easy. Let's meander across now to the team in second, which is the Santalock Racing Team, number 26, with Erwin the stub. Erwin, um, again, great qualifying in difficult conditions, but now you've got to do it all in the dry. Yeah, yesterday we were P1 for a small amount of time. Uh, before they removed the uh, Antoine lap time for track limit. So, yeah, we start on the front row. It's a good place, of course, uh, next to an official uh, Audi driver. So, yeah, we'll see if I can follow or overtake, maybe. Yeah, I know that because we were, we were walking the wrong way at the pit lane to go and talk to you and walk all the other way. Honestly, the amount of steps you gave me is awful. So, anyway, so what are the tactics for the first couple of hours then? Uh, we don't know really yet because it depends a bit of the weather. Uh, we saw yesterday that it can change really quickly here. So, we can see some clouds already. So we don't know. So uh, we know that the start will be dry, but we'll see what happens. Thank you, Eddie. It's actually right. If I look that way, 
grey. If I look that way, lovely and blue. That way, mixture, we're at spa. They'll probably do all three in the next half hour. Um, I'm going to pop back to uh, fourth place now, the heart of racing and, and Ian James. Ian, um, apparently you live at spa now, is that correct? Yeah, having never raced here, or, or 25 years ago, now I've raced here twice within uh, seven days, so it's kind of crazy, right? So you cha change from the GTE spec Aston to the GT3 spec uh, Mercedes. How easy is that? Is that change in, in mentally and uh, physically for a driver? Actually, surprisingly similar. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's quite an easy transition. Obviously, the weather here has been crazy over the last uh, 10 days, so we've had every type of uh, condition thrown at us. But the, the cars handle yeah, very similar. I mean, the thing is, of course, you're going from a more powerful, more aero, but um, non-ABS car to a full ABS car. That must change all your sighting points, all your braking points. Must change dramatically, surely. Well, with the you know with the slightly grippier tyre, you can brake a bit later in the in the GTE or GTLM spec car. But with the ABS, you have that advantage of just being repeatability every lap, and uh, it de definitely makes it a little easier from the driver's seat. Are you starting? I am. It's interesting because most people are putting their, their, their big pros in. Are they just saying, what will happen? We'll have Ian, he's the experienced pairs of hands, even though he's supposed, supposedly the amateur. Um, well, we're, we're saving Roman for tomorrow when it rains because uh, he, he's the rainmeister around here. But, uh, yeah, obviously in the M class, the, the, the semi-pro can only do three hours. So we have to uh, we limit uh, when we put him in the car to the best availability. Great stuff, thank you. And that is the heart of racing. Is in fact good point. In that it's the pro, pro is the pole, the pro is the pole in the AM class. In third, it is the uh, Phoenix team, of course, who are the current reigning European champions. Who uh, let's see, we a quick word with uh, Sven Herberger. Sven, how are you doing? Very good, very good. Excited. Car is starting third behind another set of Audis. Um, how are you going to get past them over the next uh, 12 hours of racing? Got to pass them. That's an interesting one. I, we rather see ourselves like in a sandwich, so because there are other people as well. And uh, no, it, it's going to be an exciting one. I think uh, when the weather stays like it is for now, um, it will be a clean start. I hope so. I mean, turn one, you never know. But I think the exciting or interesting stuff comes in the afternoon when the weather will change. And uh, yeah, the weather will change. It's spa. I mean. Just have interest, because there are so many Audis in this grid. Is the Audi particularly suited to Spa or particularly suited to the Graventic rules? Um, I think the, the the Audi as such, the R8, is a is a bulletproof car uh, here with uh, with um, how to say with a less aggressive setup. You can reach uh, a proper a proper level of performance uh, without stress, stressing the tires too much. And I think this is this is here the. The goal and also the recipe mid-engine always is, is good and uh, compared to the Mercedes or to the Porsche, I think we have a bit of a benefit because it's such a fast uh, track. Great, so thanks, Ben. Now, don't forget, there's a very strong rumor that Audi Acast Support Racing is stopping at the end of the year, which means support for these machines will end. Will we see Audis at this race next year? Now, uh, talking about Audi Acast Support Racing and, and Audi uh, uh, drivers, it's, it's Chris Meese from the Land Racing Car. Uh, Chris, um, you're quite a lot further back than we expected. Is that just because the rain was at the wrong time during qualifying? Yeah, we gambled a little bit, wanted to go out late, and obviously halfway through the lap, the, the rain arrived, and obviously it was only one lap, so half dry, half wet. Um, but still happy with P5. I mean, it's a long race. It's two times six hours or 12 hours total. Uh, long time and, good, and enough time to make some positions. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you a serious question now because this week it's heavily rumoured that Audi Customer Sport Racing are pulling out next end of the year. We've got so many Audis here. How does that affect you? How does that affect the teams? Well, honestly, I can't tell you anything because I don't know. So uh, I've read the articles as well, um, but we as drivers have no info. So uh, even if I would like to tell you something, I can't. That's fair enough. Thanks, <laughs> Chris. Well, well, we'll find out. We have our ways. But I'm sure Chris is being absolutely honest there. Across the way, we go to the brand new uh, GT3 Porsche with the uh, not brand new Herberth team, the team that uh, has dominated in past years and now uh, looking for a bit more uh, luck. Ah, now, it's a casual run hour, so I'm going for Alfred. Am I right? No. No! <laughs> Robert, are you casual? Yeah. I noticed your brother was back on the entry list. Is he, is he actually going to run in the race? Um, yeah, he will do some 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 since maybe depends on the weather. Um, like always, uh, we try to keep the M driver as much drive time as they have or as they can. Uh, depends on the weather conditions. Uh, it's yeah, clouds coming up now, so we will see. And you got another superstar in the team, in Lauren Heinrich. Yeah, he did a fantastic job yesterday. Um, set the fastest time in Q3. So yeah, definitely good move to have him on the car. And how's the new car going? Um, so far, yeah, really good. Uh, Performance-wise, it was uh, okay yesterday. 
and let's see uh, the race. We didn't uh, did the test on Wednesday, so lost a bit of track time, but in the end, should be working out. So I thank you, Robert. Robert. Honestly, they, 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 well, they say one's not driving, and they're trying to confuse me. They're per they're perfectly, perfectly confused, really, anyway. Okay, so we're meandering a little bit further down. We can find another, actually, it's a, a brand new Porsche. It's another brand new Porsche, but actually, it's a car in pole on 992 class, and it is uh, the uh, marvelous Red Camel Jordan. And let's, let's say hello to Evo. Evo, we're very pleased to see you here because basically, you know, you were nearly dead last week, weren't you? <laughs> uh, no, not nearly dead, but uh, I was suffering some, uh, some problems with my uh, appendix, yes. It, it, it sits there for like 50 years doing nothing and then something plays up. You must be really annoyed with it. Yeah, I was, I was. And uh, I had a choice. They said, okay, we maybe open it up and uh, clean everything and then you get an operation later. I said, that's not possible because next week I have a race. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, then we open it up. If we can remove it, we remove it. And uh, so if you wake up with some tubes uh, coming out, you cannot race. And if you have the no tubes, you could race. So I woke up and there were no tubes, so <laughs> I can race. Are you feeling, feeling fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Feeling fine, yes, yes. I have to say that for the, to some doctors listening in, so I'm feeling great. Good stuff. Now I'm going to have my. Uh, I've decided I'm always going to talk to the world's greatest tactical genius, um, <laughs> Paul Trussell. Uh, Paul, you obviously are known for running strategy. Is there any point running a strategy at Spa with the weather? Well, you do your best, don't you? And you make your calls. The trouble is the weather, as you say. Uh, even now, I mean, there's there's rain in them there clouds, <laughs> and. Uh, I mean, what we, what we want is for either it to rain properly or for it not to rain at all. The problem is this in-between stuff. And um, if you run on a, on a drying track with wet tires, you're only going to kill the wet tires. So you've got to be very careful when you make the choose, when you make the call to change tires. Of course, the big problem is it could be wet on one side of the track and not the other. Uh, what, on the, wet on the left and... Near enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it can be, and that's, that's the problem as well. So we, we, we rely on the drivers, and, um, yeah, we keep our fingers crossed. Great stuff. Thank you, Paul. And uh, Paul will be joining us uh, at Le Mans for the Radio Le Mans coverage in just a few weeks' time of the big 100th anniversary event at Le Sarth. Let's have a look at the next. Uh, uh, Ong is the... Uh, uh, the 16 machine, and that is the uh, Modern Motorsports. And uh, let's have a quick word with John Shen. John, good to see you back in the Creventic series. Was it was it the race, or was it just I've got to be at Spa again? Yes, this is uh, our, our uh, the most favoured uh, track, so of course we come back. What is it about Spa that drivers love so much? Well, it's world famous, and uh, all the in Asia, and everybody is just saying Le Mans and Spa, the top two. Yeah. And how close are you to taking Eau Rouge flat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nowhere near. I just want to bring the car safe and, uh, and uh, stay out of troubles. That's my job. John, thank you very much. Now, John Shen likes the track. Most of the drivers like the track. And now Bruce and Joe can talk us round the track. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. And uh, when you look at the track, you look at something that it's not flat, and Joe, so, uh, and Joe Bradley alongside me loves this circuit as much as John Shen. Talk us through from a driver's point of view well, these wonderful 19, 20 turns. You heard what John Shen said, you know, it's an historic venue. It's, you know, we, we've been racing here since the 30s, and La Source hairpin there, out of La Source, down the hill, very important corner because you're going to carry that speed, and if you can, we've heard that Eau Rouge is in flat, perhaps one of the most daunting pieces of racetrack across the globe, if not the universe. Up and over the hill, you have to carry momentum all the way down that camel straight, which is uphill all the way, and then it's heavy on the brakes for the right, left, and then accelerate. The right-hand bit of the exit of Lacombe is an acceleration zone. You want to be out of there because there's a potential braking point, uh, an overtaking point, the Bruxelles hairpin. Immediately you come out of that, the Jackie X corner, the left-hander, and again, you have to get that one absolutely right. Try not to use too much curb on the outside of that. And here we go into the double left-hander. That's almost flat, is it? Is it not? Double gauche is the left-hand sweep that carries you towards the, uh, the piff path, right and left. It's a very fast, it's not a chicane, it's more of an S-bend. And then here is the important bit through the Le Col corner and then into Stavolo, the right-hander, and you've got to get this absolutely exact. Carry that momentum. That's going to take you all the way through to that left-hand sweep at Blanchemont. And then if you can carry enough speed at Blanchemont, carry your speed quicker than your opponent, this is where you can chance a break. I'm not a fan of the bus stop chicane. It's a little bit Mickey Mouse after the sweeps and the flow of the Spa Francochamps. 
circuit, but it's a great way to break the racing up, and that ends the lap of this majestic track. It truly is a brilliant circuit. It's up, it's down, and of course, on top of all the difficulties of all the twists and turns, that is the eternal factor, the weather. And even since we started down on the grid with Nick Damon, on his grid, grid walk. It was sunny then, it's quite warm, but the clouds come, have come rolling in, and that really is something. We think the rain is going to come midway through the race, mid-afternoon, Joe. It's, yeah, it could, we could well end, we, we could well end this first six-hour segment in wet weather, because that's the way the weather works. Because of this heat, the precipitation will undoubtedly come. It's just a question of when, and that keeps it exciting. So let's go back down to the grid, to Nick Damon. Well, whew, made that. It's a very long one. These big grids that Creventi got now are certainly good for exercise. Uh, walked past some very interesting cars, actually, which the boys will talk about, including McLarens and uh, a Toyota and uh, several big GT4 class we've got here, which I'll let uh, Joe and Bruce talk about as we go. But we have got to pole in TCE, and that is held by the 227 uh, Porsche. And let's see if I can grab a word with uh, uh, the driver. Who is driving? Who's, who's the driver? Who's driving? Kutta. Kutta. Mr. So, uh, pole in TCE. Now, it means you're ahead of a lot of cars, but I suppose you're faster than some of the cars ahead of you. You must speak with the team chef, but I can only speak German. Apart from that bit there, which is perfect English, that's no problem at all. So there we are. A man who speaks... I wish, wish I could speak German as well as that. Anyway, so across the other side. Ah, this is more... This is a man who can definitely speak English. I, I, I'm sure he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rob Huff, Rob, uh, pole in, in, in TCR, um, only the smaller TCR class. Why do you think the TCR class is not as big as it was? I mean, that's a very good question. Uh, that's my job. These cars are, you know, they're so much fun to drive. They're amazing to drive. I think a lot of it um, is to do with the, the amount of, you know, faster cars on the track. Ultimately, you know, when TCR came out, they weren't, you know, they're much more of a middle class in, in this series. Uh, and I think a lot of guys don't like racing looking in the mirrors the whole time. So, um, you know, there's a few of us that still do, obviously, and, uh, and very much enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, Marcus did an amazing job yesterday. He did uh, Q1 and Q3 and uh, nailed the lap time of both of them. So very happy for, for both of us and the team that we're, uh, we're obviously on, on class pole. And obviously, as a former world champion in this in these well, this class of world touring cars, I mean, it, it, how do you feel about the, what seems to be the slow demise of, of touring cars around the world internationally? Well, we've got 1,200 TCR cars, so I don't think we're doing too bad. Well, the world's in Europe. 40, 45 championships across the world. How do you feel about the international demise? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, TCR Italy this year has got 50 odd cars. Um, the world world tour, I think we're 12 cars. TCR Europe's 12 cars. So, you know, for for us at the moment, it's going to be a new challenge this year in the world world tour, traveling around, joining national championships all over the world, uh, Australia, uh, Argentina. Uh, I'm finishing in Macau, so um, yeah, I'm excited for this year. I mean, you've obviously disseminated your absolute mastery of these front-wheel drive cars. You never think, oh, I'll have a hypercar now, or I'll get a drive in a P2 car. I mean, it's, you know, it's just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to expand your career, Rob, basically. Uh, I feel responsible, because I've known you since 2004, you know. Definitely not as much fun as a front-wheel drive touring car. Um, you know, I think I've, I've been very lucky that for the last 20 years I've, I've made a career out of front-wheel drive touring cars. Uh, I very much enjoy it. I love love the, the style of driving. I love the sprint racing, the endurance racing. You know, why change, change a habit of a lifetime? Seems a very good point. Well made, you know. Who, who am I to criticise a man who's a multiple world champion, eh? <laughs> Rob, and obviously the, uh, the, the, the rumour of the demise of uh, uh, TCR has been massively overstated, mainly by me. OK, in third place, it's uh, the Home Guard Racing. Um, car of the Sonics machine. It's uh, another one of the TCRs, 102. Oh, just wandered off there. I was going to try and talk to him. Just disappear. Ah, oh, we'll go. There we are. Some, uh, as one wanders off, <laughs> Michael Vidal wants to talk to me. So, um, four or five cars in TCR. Um, how do you see the battle going? Well, I think that today it's about being on the same lap as the whoever is going to finish first. And then the real battle is going to start tomorrow. And, of course, the ever... You know, the ever overarching issue here is that the weather could change on a on a moment. I mean, how do you? I mean, you can't plan for it. But sure, have you done have you done more pit stop practice? Have you got more? You know, what preparation you've done for those changeable conditions? Well, I think that yesterday we got a bit of practice in this changing weather, and so we've got to prepare as good as we can. It's equal for everybody. So, yeah, it's part of the charm of driving at Spa. We know it's like this. So. Um, yeah, it's difficult to, to plan your way out of this, so we're going to take it one lap at a time. 
I think some of the TCR cars in qualifying yesterday actually went out with wets on the rear and dries on the front. I mean, is that something that would work for the race as well? Is it just for a couple of laps during qualifying? Uh, I wouldn't do that for the race. You end up with wet tires in the front that you're going to maybe uh, totally wear out. Uh, so it's going to cost you more on the race if you have to do that extra pit stop. So, um, but again, you never know how the conditions are and what we're going to do. So, yeah, difficult to say. We never know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's meander further back. Let's, uh, we've always got right to the Let's go right to the back of the grid, shall we? Let's go right to the back of the grid because it's, it's in class pole, believe it or not, in the TC class. It's the, uh, the Bonk uh, Motorsport team. Look at them here. They're all, they're all here. Already, they've only got one car this time. Uh, so, uh, Martin Kroll. Martin, you've only got one car this time, so you have to commit just to this car. Yeah, so, so it's an easy job, just uh, 12 hours, two times, six hours. It will be easy with three persons. It's okay. But you've bought the lower-powered car, didn't you? Why, why not? Why, get you know, 70 horsepower, go for it. Um, well, you see, we have the number one, <laughs> so it's very easy. Uh, second thing is uh, the price will be the half price of the cost of what you have, and that's a lot of money. Because next week we go to the 24-hour Nürburgring, and then you have to save money. Ah, I see. So the, so the 400-horsepower car is going to Nürburgring, is it? Yeah, we go with one. Uh, no, and uh, Nürburgring we go with our, our old E46 from uh, well, yeah. the oldies. <laughs> oldies but goldies, like we. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. And of course, if you want to follow the uh, Nürburgring 24 Hours, which is in uh, two weekends' time, that is also on the Radio Show Limited network of channels where we'll be in sound and vision for that race uh, all through that cracking 24-hour endeavour. Um, we better have more time than I expected, Seb, so let's, let's move back forward again, shall we? It's a very relaxed, almost like they've delayed the start slightly. Marvellous. Um, now, there are a couple of interesting cars we meandered past because we kind of had to, so I'm going to walk uh, slowly back up the grid. Someone blows their first whistle, but uh, it is. I, I need to reiterate again. It is a lovely day. It's, it's very sunny. Um, there are clouds which are sitting down. I would like to say clouds with with flick knives, threatening something may happen, but you never know. Um, so let's look at the, one of the cars we have here, which we've not had for a while. Uh, we have the Italian uh, Lotus Esprit or Lotus Elite. Now this car actually was in Mugello, but actually only lasted about three laps till the gearbox went. Let's have a quick chat with the driver. Um, you'll be hoping for better luck than Mugello. Yeah, I, I didn't do Mugello, my teammates uh, did, did. Well, the car didn't really do it, did it? Yeah. <laughs> but I tried the car the first time yesterday, and it is impressive, really nice, really good engine, really good teammates. Stefano Daste did all the, the car, and um, we hope to do the better, the best in this race. It will be long, but uh, we do. I mean, it is a, it's a unique car. I've never seen a, a race car of this Lotus before. I mean, do you think that's advantageous or do you think it's a bit of a problem because you've got no one else you can ask about how to set it up? I think uh, all to the things, but uh, I think the, the, the best thing, the thing more nice that, uh, that we are the only one. So everyone is uh, watching us. We're certainly watching because the car's cracking and it's in a marvellous uh, uh, gold and black, reminiscent of uh, the cars, of course, which uh, Joe loves from the 1970s, also made by Lotus, of course, and sponsored by other manufacturers. Uh, over here we have um, the McLaren and we do have our only, Mr. Tefcon, we have our only uh, previous F1. Hello Christian, you were surprised to see me, I'm surprised to see you, how are you doing? Very good, thank you very much. What brings you to Spa? It's a beautiful circuit, it's a long race, it's a lot of drive time, hopefully, because uh, it's a big field, uh, you have to battle your way through it. And yeah, we enjoy the race here, uh, our uh, factory is close to here, so that's why we're here. You're a long way back, so I have to ask you, what happened in qualifying? Um, we had a slight issue in, uh, in the first qualifying segment uh, with one tyre, then we came in to change it, and then it was too late to set a time for uh, Patrick Krupinski, our team owner. So then obviously the average uh, uh, lap time was gone. Uh, that's why we are at the back of the GT3 field, and we have to work our way through, but it should be quite a nice afternoon, therefore. Yeah, I think most people know you've had a you know, fantastic career, F1, podium at Le Mans. How, how do, you, do you actually enjoy racing more now? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, I enjoy driving uh, the GT3 cars. I think it's uh, great cars. It's great racing. And, uh, you know, it's driving uh, without pressure. There is always pressure, but I enjoy it more just, uh, you know, driving these cars at the limit, battle with other cars, and uh, that's, that's the fun part, yeah. And, and when do you actually get in? Are you second or third? Uh, I'm second in the car uh, around one o'clock, probably, yeah. So thank you, that's Christian Clean out of the uh, 69 uh, McLaren. Let's fill over their, uh, their jacks. 
Um, the cat working to us. They said, oh, this is the silver fish. I've no idea who these people are. Let's see if I can have a, a quick word with the driver. Excuse me. It's uh, Mr. What's your, sorry, what's your, your name is? Lars. Lars, Lars. And then, so um, tell us a bit about this BMW. Yeah, it's a very good car. It's the first time uh, we did a race with this, so uh, you will see uh, how it's going. So how much have you, have you got the car set up, worked out, or are you still fiddling with it overnight? No, now we know, uh, now is the car okay, but uh, yesterday and Wednesday it was a little bit uh, struggling, but now the car is okay. And would you prefer wet or dry? Uh, wet. <laughs> Good lad. I mean, the young ones, the young ones always want it wet. I don't know whether it's their, their fitness. Now, I don't think we can talk, I want to just have a we can get a picture of this car, because this is another one of our unique entries. This is an Audi TT. Now, I don't remember seeing one of these before in the uh, Creventic series. It's the number, uh, it's a, being run by Land Motorsport, it's a 755 in GTX class. It, it's an interesting looking car. I'm not sure whether it's, whether it's a car from the One Make series that's been adapted, but that is a unique car. Well, anyway. We are being cleared from the grid. Yes, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, we're being cleared from the grid. So uh, what we do is we'll pass it back to the boys, and they can give you all the details of all the cars all the way round for the Spa 12 hours. It's always sad when that's over. That's uh, Nick's inimitable grid walk meander, call it what you will. But he caught a lot of drivers up and down the grid. And again, Joe, it just shows the sheer variety of machinery down there. I'm just happy Nick didn't burst into a coronor coronation chorus. <laughs> Coronary he, chorus, he, he, I thought yeah, you Yeah, it would have been. It would have actually been. Yeah, we've got, I tell you what, uh, though, with Nick's overview of the grid there, it's kind of reminded us that we've got quite a few cars out of place. We've got, for instance, um, the 992 championship leaders at the moment, the Vili Motorsport by EB Motors, the 955 car, way down the order in the 992 class. Sergio, Sergio Nicolai uh, will start that car, and that's a car to keep an eye on. He spoke to Christian Klein there, the uh, McLaren. We, we expected more from that McLaren. We expected it to be at least in the middle of the GT3 field, but problems, we're going to see that car, certainly in these early laps, have a bit of an overtake fest. Yeah, no, it, it enti entirely so. But a lot of that is down to the, the very, very quick fire format of qualifying plus the rain. One little problem in any of those sectors and you don't get an aggregate across all three sessions. Therefore, you have to go behind anybody who's got an aggregate on all three sessions. So it really, really hurts. So the JP Motorsport McLaren, I'm sure, will be coming forward. The Liput Motorsport Lamborghini, likewise, not even in the top 36 of this 50 car field. But look at the front. It's the Haas RT Audi on pole position by eight tenths of a second from another Audi, Santelot junior team. It was nip and tuck, but Haas did a couple of brilliant sessions. Shearer Sport PHX, that's the old Phoenix team with Shearer Sport. Another Audi in third. Then the first, the Mercedes. They were here last weekend. Heart of Racing, racing an Aston Martin. Now they've come to join the championship with the Mercedes. They will line up fourth with Ian James at the wheel. Land Motorsport, they've had bad luck so far this season, but let's see what comes their way. They'll be lining up fifth in their Audi. The first of the Porsches, Herbeth Motorsport. We heard from Robert Renauer. It seems his brother Alfred will be uh, joining Lauren Heinrich, Daniel Allerman and Ralph Bone, and Ralph will be starting that car. Then Moderna Motorsport. It's great to have such a cosmopolitan crew coming here, simply because because it's Spa Francorchamps, they love it. And then the best of the Porsche 992 Cup class, that is the Red Camel Jordans team, and Rick Broikers will be starting that. Then uh, we go down to row number five, Land Motorsport, lots of representation. Tim Fogler will kick off in Audi number 34. Then Red Ant Racing, they're having a really good season, reigning champions in the 992 Cup class. So they will be starting from 10th on the grid with Ayrton Redon at the wheel. Hofer Racing uh, will be starting in their all Mercedes row six alongside CP Racing and Charles Espinal will be kicking off the American crew here at Spa Francorchamps. Then MP Racing, it's all Gosner. Manuela Gosner will be driving their Mercedes, should be nip and tuck around that middle order. PK Car Sport, local team, home ground. Bert Longin will be at the wheel of their Porsche at the start of the race. Then row number eight, we move down to the first of the cars from a different class. It will be the GTX class with a Mark car with Raphael van der Straten. Remember that name, VDS Racing Adventures, the Van der Straten family team, and that car makes the best sound of all. And then completing row number eight, it's E2P Racing with their Porsche. So a real spread of cars. Moving on down, we then move back to some more cars uh, racing in the nine, uh, 911 GT3 Cup class, HRT performance with their Porsche, alongside Lipert Motorsport with 
They're a Lamborghini as well. They're one of these cars that's sort of out of sequence. Let's see where they move up to. Black Falcon, such supporters of this championship and all racing on the great circuits on the Spa Francorchamps and the Nürburgring of this world. They will start with their American and Luxembourgois crew. Carlos Rivas will be driving that one at the start. Then the first of the two Vortexes. They're orange, they're loud, they're quick. Let's see what Lionel Amrouche can do aboard that one. A lot of teams from Lithuania come next. Three in a row, we've got Porsche Baltic, Juta Racing and RD Signs. Again, showing the cosmopolitan and international nature of this amazing series. Red Ant, their second car from the Red Ant crew, and that'll be a Belgian driver, Sam de Jong, starting from 24th or the outside of row number 12. Moving on down, HRT Performance. This is quite a crew. Two drivers who've never been to Spa before. They race in the Asian Porsche Carrera Cup. That's Eric Zhang and uh, driver best known as Martin. But what a guide they have. Adam Christodoulou starting alongside them in that number 930 Porsche. So again, it just shows drivers want to come and race here at Spa. Another Porsche alongside Alexander Bohm. It's another black Falcon Team Techstar car. Then Vili Motorsport. This is the car that uh, should, by all uh, manners be further up the grid, but they had the little problems, and uh, that's one that Joe has picked out as one that will be working its way forward. Car number 955. And uh, certainly, again, HRT performance, many, many cars. Another of their 911 GT3 Cup cars in the mix. That's car number 929. Due to racing the second one of their cars, this one, a Porsche, starts on row 15. Alongside GT3 Poland's uh, Porsche with uh, Andrzej Luvendoski starting in that uh, with son Adrian. Next, coming up. So then Senko Motorsport, the 444 uh, BMW alongside the second of the Vortexes. That's car number 702. Then 9 on to 11 racing. Great looking car, but again, a little down the order from expected. That's 719, another car from the same class, the 427 Porsche. Then we go to Atlas BX Motorsport, all Korean crew. And uh, that's in a Mercedes with Land Motorsport running an Audi alongside. That's row number 18. Row 19 is the uh, X Swift racing events, the Toyota Supra, great looking car. TCL Motorsports alongside in their BMW. Then 20th row, PCR Sport with a Mercedes and JP Motorsport with that Christian Clean uh, in the crew. And then the final few rows, PB Racing, Stefano de Asti, Bugira, ZM Racing and Speed Lover. But now the TCE grid, Joe. Yeah, TCE, poor position in the in our touring car endurance series. It's the number 227, the SRS Team Saw Grain Sport. That's the Porsche Cayman. Uh, and then we've got the Wolf Power car. The Wolf Power car, rem uh, remember, this is a championship winning car with a world champion at the wheel. It's Marcus Menden, though, not Rob Huff, who will start the 117 alongside. Second row of the TCE grid, Home Guard Motorsport there. Leon TCR car will share that role with the TCR. DSG uh, Seat of Real Equipe by Todcar Sport. The Belloc Diaz and Belloc Ruath family are joined by Alvaro Rodriguez. It's Jorge Belloc Ruath, the young European uh, junior champion, current European junior champion from 2022, will be in that car. Well, we're on the pace lap now, Bruce, so we are pretty much getting ready to see that clock start ticking. And six hours, six hours of racing. It's important in a split race to stay on the lead lap, not so important when you split it right down the middle. It's very, very difficult indeed. And personally, if I was out there on the pit wall, I'd be treating this as a 12-hour race with a pause button right in the middle. That's why you're in the commentary box, Joe. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know what, Bruce? We're going to see so many strategies that it's going to be a moving set of goalposts that the teams are going to be looking at. And then, you know what, we're at spa Francorchamps, so that we're going to add in the mix of, of a little a bit of precipitation as well. The track's going to be wet, the track's going to be dry, and it's going to come down to a bit of luck of being out there on the right tyres at the right time. And sometimes it's very, very hard to make those judgments. And I think for a lot of the drivers, Joe, as they were driving up the climb from Radion up the Kessel, up the Kemmel Strait, they saw, oh, that's what it looks like in the next valley. Then they'll curl back round and they'll be able to look back up towards La Source. It's changeable. We have high cloud, we have low cloud, we have white cloud, we have grey cloud. But the important thing at the start of the race, at the very least, is dry on the circuit. Yeah, and that's what we that's what we like. You know what? If it was to be totally wet, great. Stay totally wet. It's dry at the moment. Stay dry. We like that. We like consistent track conditions. What we don't like, 
what we had in qualifying, we actually had a section of the track that was wet and a section of the track that was born dry. And and it, it's like, you know, th th for that, it's a voyage of discovery. Every time you go on the brake pedal, you don't know what sort of grip level you've got. And you know what? That's, as you said, Bruce, that's why you and I are sat here and the drivers are out there. Yes, it was extraordinary in qualifying. Dry at one end of the circuit. Now. Max Edelhoff uh, taking in the the early stages of this race in the grandstand uh, with, uh, I presume that's his girlfriend or wife. Um, he's a bit young to be married, so we'll take that his girlfriend. So he's, he's wanting to watch the start across from the the pits in the in the grandstand view. Always interesting in the formation lap to find out which cars have got the onboard camera. And, uh, number 34 uh, carrying around for Tim Fogler. That's starting near the sharp end of the field. But one car will be starting from the pit lane. It's one of the two uh, Vortexes. 702. Right. 702. The door is up. Thank you very much indeed. So that's one that should be going to the start with uh, Lucas Suliano, French racer on board, but he will be starting from pit out. However, just bear in mind that here at spa Frankenshaw, what's the first corner? It's a very tight hairpin to the right. It's last source. Sometimes starting from the pit, you can avoid other people's problems. But of course, no racing driver wants to start any further back than they possibly can. So just to reiterate, Fred Vavish in the 21 Haas RT Audi will be starting from pole position. Uh, he knows this circuit, forwards, backwards, sideways, absolutely superb in an Audi. But Erwin Bastard, short in career so far, but getting faster and faster. He'll line up alongside in another Audi, this one ended by Santelok. A third Audi in the top three positions. Sven Herberger will kick off for in the number one car. Shira Sport PHX is the entrance. And then something a little bit different, breaking the hegemony of the Audis. And it's Ian James, heart of racing team Mercedes, will be starting from four. So the field of cars coming up to what used to be the bus stop. Now it's effectively the chicane. It turns 19 and 20, a sharp right, a sharp left onto the start finish straight. And then they'll look up to the lights on the starting gantry. And then that really short but crucial blast up to that source. So ride on board. One of the best views will be coming from a car starting uh, just towards the tail of the top 10. Tim Vogler starting down in ninth, but it's on left of screen, closest to the pit wall. Haas RT, Fred Fervish. It's all blue with the flag of Antigua on the roost. It's Haas RT and alongside on the outside, Santelok racing bright green car with Erwin Bastard waiting for the start. It looks clean, two by two, becomes four abreast in the middle order. Very good start by Ian James. But he's on the outside line, so third will probably drop him back to fourth, which is where he started. But then they're three abreast behind, but neat and tight for the first half of this grid. Uh, as I say that, uh, Tim Vogler gets uh, another car on his outside and off into the gravel on the exit of La Source. They go yellow flag at turn one. No surprise, that car quite possibly is beach, but of course we'll leave that to the officials and a few of the others making good ground. One mistake, Joe, at uh, La Source and you can lose handfuls of places. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way that the cars have got to come together. As we approach La Source there, we were three to, and five cars wide down in the midfield order. And here we are on the Camel Street going towards the con for the first time and down the inside that's the phoenix car car number one current champions moving down the inside of the sonderlock junior team car audi battling one two and three and four at the moment vavish has gone he's checked out already and he's leaving behind in the wake in his wake second place car now the number one second third place is the number 26 the uh erwin bastard driven sonderlock car and then behind them just beginning to ease a bit of a gap the car in fifth place is now Ralph Bond, and that's the 91, the Herbeth car, the Herbeth Porsche. Hasn't really featured in qualifying, but guess what? Just keep an eye on that car, because that car will feature as we move through this race. Why on earth would you want Fred Vavish in your car? Well, the fact he can get two seconds clear by the tyre, one second clear by a really smooth run out of La Source, having taken a lead into the first corner, got clear out of Radion, slight mistake from Erwin Bastard. He then paid the cost of that. That's what allowed Sven Herberger uh, to get very close and indeed moved past but of course it's now swapped back over sorry Sven Herberg is still in second and now Erwin Bastard they go through Campus and then a approaching Corp Paul Frere what we used to call Stavolo bottom of the hill accelerating harder this is a corner that Joe is so crucial to give you that good blast up the hill but already disappearing yeah. in the diff distance uh, one whole twist about a second and a half maybe two seconds clear of the pack going into Blanchiment for the first time at full racing, racing speed. Brilliant job by Fred Verviche. And the first lap into the bus stop, always a bit tricky. Brakes are cooler, cooler than they perhaps need to be. 
and the leader already through the bus stop and out. Here's a look at the start again, Bruce. Well, the start was really clean from about the top two rows. Ian James on the outside of the second row in the Mercedes tried to break up the Audi battle, got alongside Sven Herberger, who was holding down third, but unfortunately it was diminishing returns for him as he got up to La Source. And this is where Owen Bastard got pushed just a little bit wide by Sven Herberger, and that kept him off the power for that nanosecond that was so important to allow Fred Verbeek to get clear long before they got to Eau Rouge. Alas, we had a car going off into the gravel after a little nudge, and then it actually spun across the track. Oh. It was the 909. It was Rick Cla Broikers. Class Paul. Class Paul. Don't worry, they will make it back. But there was Rick wanting to get in with the big boys in the GT3 class, and uh, I think he would just effectively, it's not always your fault, but if you're on the outside at the exit of La Source, you take the consequences of other people's movements, and he got a shoulder charge. I think it was from the 34 Tim Vogler Land Motorsport Audi problem with that is has he has he featured any damage there has he picked up any damage there it's easy to knock a wheel arch in onto a tire we'll see how that car it's a recovery drive now for the red camel car but uh midfield just continuing to sort themselves out that's the number 16 car john shen modern motorsports porsche just moving ahead of the number 58 that's the manuela gosner mp racing mercedes gosner coming back at shen though down to brussels the door being left slightly open by shen in the blue coloured Porsche, the bright green Gosner Mercedes there, clearly wanting to get by Shen and looking like it's got the pace. It just can't seem to get that move done. Here they come out of Jackie X and now down to Double Gauche. But there must have been a little little devil on one shoulder for Manuela Gosner, and the, luckily the devil was overruled, saying it is only the second lap of the race. Yeah. So she backed out and then down through uh, Double Gauche. Pouin for us older folk, uh, the metallic green Mercedes went. Just thinking back to the Red Camel Jordans Porsche, I thought it had gone in the gravel. I think it hooked a wheel and then must have gone across the pack, but we otherwise would have had that stuck there for quite some while in the gravel, so it was very good fortune. I don't know if the Porsche was touched. Now, what wasn't touched at all is our race leader, Fred Vavich, at the end of the opening lap, uh, clear very, very comfortably. And uh, he's just pulling away because the th second place battle, Sven Herberg, Irvin Bastard, and, Cr and now Christopher Meese making the moves are really closing in. 3.6 seconds was the gap at the line. He's just about to complete two laps. And I know we're talking about li literally just a couple of laps in a, in a 12 hour motor race. But as the second, third, and fourth place cars, the gap out to 5.5 seconds already. Second place, Sven Herberg, a great first lap from him. But Christopher Meeks now moving up ahead of him, but start the Sonderlock car, start at second, now being demoted by first by Herberger, then by Christopher Meeks. Meeks in the darker coloured Audi R8. Uh, and, and he's just moved forward uh, and been very, very kind of what you expect in a very Christopher Meeks kind of way. He, he was just there and he got straight onto it and he, he followed those cars around. Now he's in third and I'm pretty sure we're going to see him challenging that number one Shearer Motorsport uh, Phoenix Audi very, very soon. Well, Joe, you know full well that while Nick was doing his, his grid meander, we looked uh, at each other when he started interviewing Christopher Meese and went, well, he'll be going up the order and he's done exactly what has been expected. Now, it seems almost rude while just looking at the cars, describing them with the light bouncing off their wings, looking brilliant at this circuit in the high Ardennes. Some of the teams may be thinking, OK, we'll suffer a bit at the front, but we actually have got a set up on our car for the thing that we think might be arriving later, which could be that routine called rain. But right now, we'll take the sunshine, the spring sunshine here at spa Francorchamps, And Fred Vavish is maximising his opportunities. And who else is starting to make moves? No, Sven Herberger hanging on to that second place. Chris Vermees making the attack. Going a little further down the order, we've got Charles Espinal made a very good start, gained many positions. CP Racing, the white, red and blue Mercedes up into sixth position. He's just behind Ian James's Mercedes. So uh, look for that one. Ralph Bone, yeah, there or thereabouts, Herbert Motorsport. Let's complete the top ten. Eighth, Tim Vogler recovering after that little clash at uh, La Source on the opening lap. Then uh, another a Porsche. In fact, the best of the second best of the Porsches, it's Antonio Saniero for E2P Racing, and then Stefano Monaco. So he's made great progress, and he's topping the 992 class. But we have a car in the pits, and let's go down to Nick Damon. Yeah, it sneaked in whilst I was watching the field go. Now, it's got suspicious damage on the, uh, the front left. Now, whether that was anything to do with the first lap kerfuffles and people going on, they've completely taken out that uh, front left uh, headlamp, and they're now using oodles of tank tape to try and fix it. It's a 72, isn't it? No, it's a 71. 71 due to racing. There's two very very similar looking cars from the uh, 
uh, Latvian team or Lithuanian team. Um, yes, they have had a big accident that's taken out a corner of the car. And I assume that either had something to do with the car that got run off into the gravel or Rick Broek is facing the wrong way. Um, not sure if we get, we've got one of the drivers, which is, uh, actually no, he's a driver from the other team. What the hell, one driver is Valentin. Yeah, v Viterius Gulbianus is just looking on. Let's see if Valtteri can tell us what's going on. Um, hi, uh, what, what, who did, you, who did you hit? Other Lithuanian. You hit each other? Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Too many Lithuanians and uh, yeah, we had too many Lithuanians in that track, so it happened. We have a Baltic, we have a Baltic state incident. Thank you very much. The other, is the other car okay then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not our, our our car. Other other Lithuanians. Other Lithuanians. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but it's a long race. Thanks, nice dude. That's uh, uh, Vitinius Gulbinas from 79 here. We are we got code 60 boys. Yes, we have. Uh, that came out just as we went to you there, Nick. I'm just happy to have as many Lithuanians as we possibly can in this series. It's great to have them racing there. Just a bit unfortunate that they came together. Too many Lithuanians on the same piece of tarmac. Um, while we've gone Code 60, gives us a chance to catch up with our TCE categories. Uh, we've got a, a 1, 2, 3 in the TCR class leading TCE. We've got the, the 102 numbered Home Guard car, the Cooper Leon, that's leading ahead of the... And that's been driven by uh, Martin... Uh, Vedel Mortensen, it's Marcus Menden in the Wolf Power car, that's the 117, the Audi RS3, that's in second, and then we've got our current uh, European young driver champion, Jorge Belloc Ruiz, in the rail equipped by Todd Car Sport Cooper, he's currently third, first of the TCX runners, fourth in TCE, and that's the uh, Patrick, Patrick Gruter, uh, that's the Porsche 718, the GT4 spec 718 Cayman. That's currently fourth in the TCE part of this race. Fifth is the Audi RS3, uh, uh, the second of the Wolf Power cars. That's the 121, Ivers Vallas at the wheel of that car. And then sixth, it's the uh, BMW Mark II, Mark II M2 of the Hofer Racing by Bonk. Michael Bonk at the wheel of that car, 331. And it's the only car in TC, uh, but it is part of the TCE class. So. Um, TC part of the race, the touring car endurance series, part of this 12 hours of Spa. Quick update? Uh, ah, yes. Quick uh, update we from Nick. We just had the 85 car, the CP racing machine with Charles Espelab on board, trundled down the pit lane. I think he's gone for fuel, which seems really strange after, what, 10 minutes when they would have brimmed a thing you would expect to begin with. So, uh, not sure. It's a funny one, Spa, because it's such a long lap. It all depends on your track position, whether or not you take the advantage of a top up of fuel. And even just 10 minutes of fuel can sometimes repair you in boatloads, depending on when that Code 60 comes out and where the, your car, and indeed your competitor's car, is in, on the track in relation to the pit entrance when we go to purple. So, um, you know what, CP Racing, they, they, you, they had a pretty poor by their standards a pretty poor qualifying session so they are in a bit of a, a recovery drive for the whole of the 12 hours to get back up that grid order and to the front of the field which is where we are usually uh, commonly uh, more of a common side oh it's gone green and christopher meese there the pro driver christopher meese was really really awake and ready for that green and when it went green, Bruce, he had his car, what, was that, did he have that car in the gravel when he accelerated past the Herberger Audi? That's why you have Fred Vavish leading the race, that's why Christopher Meese has worked his way up the order. The teams would have been saying, right, we've got a message on our screen under one minute until the end of the Code 60. And again, I was just about to chip in saying CP Racing would have also had a guesstimation about how long the Code 60 may be, because they want to obviously not to be refueling when it goes back to green flag. And I'm sure they will coming back out into the race, they'll have timed it well. But uh, yes, indeed they are, and uh, just diving down towards Bruxelles, they've got a lot of cars around them, but they can go... go three laps longer minimum, four laps longer possibly when the others have to come in and make their pit stops. Uh, we're going to have another look at that replay where Christopher Meese was really on it. He was waiting for the, the Code 6 to be pulled in and he was the driver that was awake the most and there's the acceleration. It goes green and he immediately puts the car to the right of Herberger, puts his right hand wheels right into the gravel trap, spews out the gravel, but he had the acceleration and it was out of Lacombe down to Bruxelles 
where he was able to make that move, and it was before the corner, Bruce. He actually had him on acceleration rather than on the bricks. He did. It was the right-hander coming out of the, the end of the, the Le Combe complex, and, uh, yeah, there wasn't a lot of track left for him, so he didn't have a full car width, and I'm afraid we've got a spinner, the 9... Is that the 902 Porsche going 992. around? 992. 992, multi-coloured, but unfortunately for them, uh, and the driver on board, that's another of the Lithuanian cars. That's Porsche Baltic. Mil Milka Panu, actually, in the HRT performance 999, sorry, 929, I'm looking at, oh. sorry, Bruce. You were right, it was uh, Robertus Kupikas in the Porsche Baltic car. He was helped round, though. He was helped round, if you look, there's contact. And as they go through, as they go through Stavolo, it's side by side on the all important run towards, and they're just squeezing. It was the 955 current championship leaders who were on the inside. And Sergio, not... Sergio Nicola at the wheel of that, and he's got a lot of experience, but it was right at the apex of the corner when you're now just going, feed it in, feed it in, full acceleration, and unfortunately when you're hit halfway down your car on the door, you're already unweighted, you're already pivoting, and so it's going to be a recovery drive for Porsche Baltic 992, so he really just unfortunate He just there. turned in a bit too tight, didn't he? Didn't, give a, didn't account for enough room for the width of that... Uh, that other Porsche. So he's spun, he's rejoined. Didn't really cause much consternation to the cars behind him as he rejoined. And we now get the situation where we've got a few cars, Bruce, that are dropping down the order. The 909, for instance, that's the car that spun at turn one. Rick Breukers, um, he's moving back up the order into that 992 sixth place. He dropped right to the back of the 992 field with that spin, and he's already... You know what? If that's going to happen to you, let it happen on the first lap, because because the cars are so close, I can make a lot of ground very, very quickly. Well, very, very fortunately, the TV directors managed to get a, an onboard camera, it was already there at the start of the race, in the Red Camel's Jordan car, so that will be telling a story as Rick picks off those ahead of him, but Rick's been round, a, round the block enough time to know when to take a risk and when not but he's got a whole line of cars ahead of him going down towards Fania on the exit of double gauche and he's just got to bide his time he doesn't want to be someone suffering an incident like the Porsche Baltic car at uh, the corner after next now turning down into campus past the university facility down there and then into Kurt Paul Frere and uh, Rick will be looking for his moments but up at the front of the race it's uh, back to 3.8 seconds between Fred Vervish and Christopher Mies, the new second place runner, five laps on the board, down to 2.4 seconds, so a better lap for Mies than it was for the race leader, so it's Audi's all the way in the top four positions, but Hassar not getting away any longer, and another car working its way up the order is the JP Motorsport McLaren, of course, that started down at the back, we heard Nick talking to them on the grid, it's now with Patrick Kropinski, the team owner, up to 16th position, so it's gained a good 20 positions since the start of this race, and just to reiterate, Joe, 50 cars, it's a very, very busy track. It's very busy, yeah, very busy indeed and, and that code 60 has has uh, not so much brought the uh, the whole field together but it certainly brought the cars that were circulating together back together as it would do with the 60 kilometer an hour speed limit around the track there's the rick Breuter's car the new livery on the red camel's car just going down the inside of the source and taking another spot back that puts rick up to fifth spot already making ground out of La Source and down towards Eau Rouge and then up the hill and across the brow at Radion and onto the all important Kemmel Strait. It's an uphill, it's an uphill straight this, and you need horsepower, you basically need grunt. And just at the back of that group of four, I mean, we're, we're, we're too wide, too wide in groups of cars that are clearly because of the mixed weather conditions in qualifying we're finding cars that are well out of position and that's why we've got so much movement through this field very hard we need we need our necks like owls keeping an eye on this lot we do one person who's making very good ground we heard from nick damon the cp racing uh, charles esper now driven mercedes came in that's just caught onto the tail of john shen down to bruxelles it goes the mercedes up the inside so good recovery driver from then they were 20th at the start of the lap but they've gained i think two positions at the moment. So Charles Esplanade will be enjoying this. Frustrated not to be at the front, but they have, just reiterate this, 
come in and uh, re-topped up their fuel. They've gained three to four laps worth of fuel, and that will certainly pay dividends later in the race. But it's about being a little bit careful at the moment. John Shen just runs wide in the modern motorsports Porsche. Don't forget that started right at the sharp end of the grid in seventh place on the grid. But that's falling down a little bit. It's down to 16th place at the start of the lap. Very experienced uh, pair of hands and boots in that number 85 Mercedes or the CB car currently in the hands of Charles Espinov, who I learned something about this morning. I learned that at the inaugural Petit Le Mans back in 1998, Charles was telling me, and I don't know why we mentioned this in conversation, he was the safety car driver back in 1998 at Road Atlanta for the very first Petit Le Mans race, starting the American Le Mans series eventually. I'll um, have to go and amend my copious <laughs> notes. I love <laughs> finding out things nice like that. Nice little stat, isn't it? Nice little bit of deal. Was he, was he sworn to secrecy for 25 years? And only now, the Official Secrets Act, can he release such information? I'm, I'm trying to think what, what sparked the conversation to mention the inaugural Petit Le Mans, but I can't really come to me. I'll give you a ring at 3 o'clock this morning when it comes back. <laughs> right, waiting to see what's happening at the very sharp end of the field. So Fred Favish was ahead when we had the uh, code 60, and he was about five, nearly six seconds the good. And it was three and a half when they were released again. Now it's under two and a half. Christopher Meese catching the Haas Arte Audi in his land to Motorsport Audi. And I must say, I wasn't at Mugello, I watched it online, but uh, Land Motorsport didn't have the luck that went with their form, but at the moment, sitting quite pretty with the best of their cars, and they have many cars in field in second. It came in the pause, Bruce. They, had a, they, they identified a problem with the car that if they'd, if they'd taken park firm air conditions uh, in the interval between the, the split race, it would have manifested with a problem in the, in the uh, that would have cost them a lot of time. However, they took a 10 lap penalty to work on the car in the interval and that, that put them out of contention and they were very much in contention. So Christian Land uh, very much hoping that that is the bad luck out of the way for the season and then let's get on with the rest of the season have a go cracking this European Championship. Seems like a very good plan. Just look, at occasionally you get, it's not an anom anomaly, but something a little bit different on the screen. We've seen and talked about the McLaren from JP Motorsport working its way up the order. When you look at a McLaren 720S, it's incredibly sleek, and that's shown it's the quickest car of all in that first sector, which includes the climb pretty much the whole way up the Kemmel Strait. So look out for that. Patrick Kropinski gained four places last lap. He's up to 12th. Next car in his sights is Martin or Shinji Ji in the HRT Performance Porsche. We talked about that. It's second in the 992 Cup class, but that's the one that Adam Christodoulou will be at the helm of sometime later in the race alongside his two Chinese spa novices. Well, there, there was pretty much nothing to lose as we've got uh, lots of action developing in the 992 class. Some going wild out of, uh, I think that's Jack Yick's corner, and uh, one of our Porsche 992 class runners just behind the 955. I'm quite sure the number on that car, but getting very, very wide and uh, certainly waking the driver up. It's it, the car it, behind. It, it was the 929, Mika Panu, HRT performance, running in 22nd position, but that doesn't help your tyres and it well, could do other damage as well, but it was only the right-hand wheels hooked in the gravel, only. CB Racing Mercedes continue to make their way through the 992 class, arguably one of the most competitive classes, if not the most competitive class in the 24-inch series, certainly the European Championship, and as our live stream goes on board with Rick Breukers once again, who's recovering after that spin, there in front of him is the CP Racing car that's now making its way back up after that early pit stop. Currently in 17th place overall, 12th, and down the order in GT3. As I look at that, it changes 11th in GT3. So the number 85, and getting a bit of a tour out of the source behind that Mercedes. Mercedes, if anything, big trip up slightly. It's just behind the PK Car Sport car, currently fourth in the 992 class, Bert Longin at the wheel of the 924, that's the yellow Porsche, and the white Mercedes just slipping into its uh, slipstream, it should get by, hopefully, before Eau Rouge. Chris Vermees now under two seconds down on the race leader, so 1.8 seconds last time round, first part of this lap, actually, each time. The Haas RT Audi is better in the first of the three sectors, he's, he's got a tenth back, so it's, it's nip and tuck, but uh, all eyes at the moment really drawn to the cars that are recovering, and among the, their rank is Rick Broy, because he lost the position last time, which seems counter, but that's only because he was passed by the CP Racing Mercedes, which is a GT3 car. There's a great example of just that proves just how quick these 992 cars are. The CP Mercedes could not get past Bert Longin on the Kemmel Strait. He had to wait and use the better aero grip on the Mercedes to get through in that sequence of, of right, left, right corners at Lecomte. 
and just taking advantage while uh, Longin had to deal with the CP Mercedes coming by him. Rick Broikers has moved ahead of Longin, so that's a class position that Broikers has taken. So now Broikers in the 909 is now up to fourth place in the 992 class. He's demoted the PK car sport car down to fifth and he looks like he is on fire at the moment. He's scything through this field after that first lap spin. Well, he really is. The gap between Fred Vavish in the lead and Chris Vermees is... Uh, actually, he went out to 1.995 seconds, so we're quibbling about a tenth here, a tenth there. But important, he started lapping the back of the field, and he may be able to use a bit of the traffic to make sure that Chris Vermees doesn't get close enough to get onto his tail, to follow him up the Kemmel straight, and then maybe try and move. But both these drivers too experienced to to do anything rash at this early stage, but it just emphasises their pace. They've got eight laps on the board, they're lapping the tail end of the field, and it would have come sooner if it hadn't been, of course, for the Code 60 that uh, slowed everything down. But uh, neat and tidy through the source, they will choose their moments, but right now, all the drivers in this 50-car field, Joe, just revelling in spa Frankershaw, spring sunshine, dry surface. It may not last forever, take it while you can. And that really is developing into a, a bit of a scrap, isn't it, for the overall lead of this race, and of course, our GT3 class. Uh, 2.22.4.01, the last time by was a personal best for Christopher Meese, who is on a charge. And the gap was two seconds, it looks a little bit closer than that, actually, when you see it on the screen. One of the cars that's really been making progress, E2P, their Porsche E2P racing car number 90, uh, pressing on very hard indeed, and uh, Antonio Saniero really pushing Ralph Bone, but Ralph's been around the block several times, notably here at spa Francorchamps. so he holds on to seventh place for Herbeth Motorsport, into and out of Le Combe, but down the hill to Bruxelles. Another great gaggle of cars uh, a little bit further back is the Mercedes of, actually it's formed down quite a way, Chantal Prince, and she's got the Lamborghini from the GTX class. It's a second car in the GTX class. It's uh, car number 720 with another driver from Lithuania, Paulius Paskiewicius, and he makes the move up the straight. Again, classic manoeuvre. You get a good run, a better run out of Radion, or even equal if you're close, and then you've just got the slipstream all the way up the straight. And then as long as the driver inside isn't trying to do the old two-move manoeuvre, which is uh, frowned upon, yes, all is fair. Good move. Yes. Chantal Prince, of course. Uh, formerly uh, Chantel Kroll, who and former ladies champion in the 24-inch series, obviously changed the name, been married, uh, have two children, Alexander Prince and Chantal. Um, and great to see the Hofa team back, actually. They had a bit of time out while Chantel and Alex uh, went to work at creating a family, and it's a great family unit now down at that Hofa racing garage. It's quite handy spirit. having Grandpa here as well with Martin. We heard from him. Yeah, down yeah, yeah. Just further down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Kroll will see out in that car later as well. Right, yellow flag at turn 18. By my reckoning, that should be the exit of Blanchimont. It's not a slow place to go off. We'll wait for further messages there, but uh, haven't seen what triggered that. But just to reiterate, at the moment, it's 2.3 seconds. The last few laps have been better. That's the gap between first and second, between Fred Verbeek in the Haas RT Audi and Chris Vermees in the Land Motorsport car. And we haven't really mentioned the gap back to the driver in third. That's Sven Herberger, still Sven Herberger, but he's 14.2 seconds behind them, those first two. Their pedigree is shining through. Yeah, absolutely. Gap slightly out there, as you mentioned there, Bruce. So things beginning to settle down. Got a car stopped. That's Marcus Menden yeah, in the 117 one, uh, that's one of the Audi that he shares with Rob Huff. So he was on class in his class pole, but unfortunately for him, that's sitting sideways on the grass. Can't really see any notable damage, but again, can't see if the car's sitting on its belly or sitting on its wheels because there's a, a crest of grass between uh, the camera and where they're standing. The field's still streaming past. Yellow flag still protecting that position at turn 18. That's as the cars come back up the slope towards uh, the final chicane. Some cars are starting to dive in the pits in the background. Are those are cars possibly from the tail of the top 15 or so, maybe seizing the moment, code 60, so good move from those who dived in straight away, and it's suddenly going to be busy down in the world of Nick Damon, so we'll just listen out and hear when he wants to cut in, but code 60 down to 60 kph. Well, that 117 Wolf Power car, of course, that was the car that was holding on to second place overall in TCE, second place in TCR, the leading class in our TCE part of this race. That's left the home guard motorsport car, Martin, Martin Vedal, uh, Vedel Mortensen, at the wheel of the number 102 Leeds TCE. They've got the Toyota Supra on track between the two TCE protagonists, and it's Jorge Belek Rueth who lies in second place. Still third, moving up into third, I should say, is the first of our TCX class runners, and that's the Porsche 718 Cayman 
That's the SRS Team Sorg Rensport, Patrick Gutter, Gruter at the wheel of the 227 Porsche, third in TCE. Now, I've just picked up the car that flashed into the pit lane. The first one that came in was 979, Nico Verdonk in a Speed Lover Porsche. That dropped him down the championship order in a GT4 type. Uh, Porsche Cayman has trickled through, but that sounds as though Nick Damon is ready to talk. Yeah, the 979 came in. I thought, oh, he's going to trundle around and get some fuel, as the Cayman you just mentioned did, the 47. But no, they've uh, taken off the uh, rear deck, and it is um, leaking uh, water. It's a uh, coolant that's come out. Now, whether they overfilled it, and it kind of the back pressure blew off it, but they have got a large amount of coolant that's come out. Uh, and that is the stuff that's got the uh, various additives within it. They did put some very nice tap water ready to go but I think it may have, may have overfilled it it may have overheated or back pressured but that was not just a standard stop that was uh, a little bit of a mechanic here as well as the 416 GT4 Mercedes goes past me as well that's the one from Bagheera ZM Racing increasing force in the championship but yes Nick uh, relatively quiet but thank you for picking up that fluid leak and for rest of the cars out on the track they're going around still under code code 60 and joe just to reiterate it's the 117 wolf power racing audi that needs clearing up yes hopefully we can get that car recovered back to the pits um with a, a very small field bruce uh, in our tce touring car endurance series part of the 12 hours of spa with only five cars it's always going to be worth repairing the car it doesn't matter how long it's going to take even if it takes an hour or two for a, for a for a gearbox or an engine change we've got under a minute before we go to green so the drivers will be given that information that's the that's the information that's come from the officials and that's on everybody's screen in all of the garages so they'll be they'll be putting that to the drivers of the cars as we see leaders the 117 in. into the pits so we've got the leaders in both has rt and learn motorsport have come in uh, they're doing driver changes at land. I think it's also, I think Trevor Vich may be getting out. It's a bit further away to confirm that. We've just seen the uh, TCR car come back on a tow rope, so we'll see what's going on there. But yeah, so the top two have come in, taken out their pro drivers, of course, are limited in drive time. They've done what they need to do, got them nice and clear. Definitely Chris Meese got out. I'll have to go and check the garage to find out whether Frank got out as well. But they are giving full service and tyres. And in all honesty, it was a much quicker stop from Haas than it was from land. And they can, of course, they came in under the Code 60, though it's gone now. I'm not sure for either of them that was a tactic given to a good idea, guys. Who are we, though, Nick? <laughs> we, we, we can question at this stage, but then, you know, as things develop, we think, ah, right, that's what they did. That's why they did that yesterday. And it, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it's remember that you have to consider not just the strategy of fuel and how you use your tyres, but also driver time. And there are minimum driver times with our AM drivers. So you may, you know, they, they, they may want to, they may be cycling through drivers as well as trying to win the race. You've got, as part of winning the race, you've got to be able to do that properly as well. And how many times have we seen teams being caught out by that? Uh, time immemorial, but certainly you look at the teams that tend to be at the top end, it doesn't, very few teams come into the Creventian series at the very top end in the GT3 class and succeed. Haas are making a bit of a mockery of that at the moment being right at the sharp end yeah. at the moment but there are things they're going to have to learn things they'll see through the course of this race was that initial dive in the pits by cp racing inspired after just what was it four laps i've heard i've heard it. i mean just getting back to house rt and the comment you made there bruce yes the team are new but the people within the team aren't the people within the team are very old krista donka has been around this sport for a long long time however i've heard it i mean people like bob will the sport you know and uh, and and uh, mark remmer have said uh, have said it's very, very tricky to get your head around the regulations in the 24-inch series. How you use the driver times, how you react to code 60s, it's, you, it takes a little bit to find your feet. Uh, Mark Lemmer, I said Remmer, why did I say Remmer? I was thinking Jeremy Remmer. Mark Lemmer is the, is the guy who told me that. And he said it takes you, you know, you can't just come into this series and expect to be right on it. It takes you a little bit to find out just how you react to things. And, you know, we've got a, 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 a myriad of, of experience there in that Haas RT team. Oh, God, in, entirely so. I was trying to big them up a bit there. I know. But, uh, right, just to let you know, the 117 Audi that Kate was towed in was worked on in the pit lane. I had a look, but they've decided more work is required and it's just been uh, pivoted through 90 degrees and thrown back in the garage. Right, 
race, race is being led by Sven Herberger, Shearer Sport PHX, they're out each second in line with uh, Fred Vavish. Is it's Urban Bastard. So Fred Vavish, of course, had the pit stop, and uh, so did uh, the Christopher Mies car as well. I think uh, just trying to see who's taken that over, waiting for them to return after their their re refueling. But at the moment, Sven Herberg sitting on a lead, very tidy lead, best part of 11 seconds, and then another nearly 10 seconds back to Ralph Bone. So that black Herbert Motorsport Porsche, slowly, slowly working its way up the order. They do. How many times? We've been covering the 24-hour series now for a number of years. I mean, this is the fifth running of the 12 hours of Spa, and the amount of times I've said, how did the Herbert car get there? How did the Herbert car get in the lead? And it'll, it'll get into the lead somehow, and, and that's what we're seeing here. But also, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to see um, Erwin Bastard losing out to the tune of 10 seconds after how many laps did he have? 11. 11. Yeah. There have been a couple of slow... I, 10 seconds. I'm just beginning to think. I mean, it was very, very difficult in qualifying yesterday. I just think that Santelot might be a team that's erred on the side of a rain, rain ah. arriving earlier than some of the rivals. So, we're talking of Chris Meese. Let's talk to Chris Meese via Mick Damon. Uh, Chris, a very fast but very short stint, only half an hour. Why was that? Well, I, honestly, I think we did a mistake. Uh, probably the engineers thought the code 60 is going to be longer. I even told them on the radio, I can see the car getting pulled away. So I was pretty sure we should have stayed out. And uh, when I arrived here, tires weren't ready. There was only the driver in the pit lane, no lollipop. Big chaos, rookie mistake, and shouldn't happen. Well, I suppose the good news is you got 11 and a half hours to put it right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a long race, but still, I mean, you, you put your heart out there. You driving to the absolute limit. Um, obviously, I tried to catch Freddy, uh, which worked out in the end. So I was quite happy with the stint so far. And therefore, I would have liked to enjoy it a little bit more. Chris, thank you very much. And talking about Fred Vervich, I think he came in because he wasn't happy with the tyres. There was a huge amount of consternation and staring at the tyres that came off from the Hancock engineers that came off his car. And of course, he stayed on board and took half the tank. So I don't think he was happy with the tyres. And perhaps that may have been why Chris was able to catch up quite quickly after Freddie uh, got that lead. Yeah, a uh, bit early for pickup issues, I would think. So maybe that was just, you know, a pressure issue that he wasn't happy. And you know what? Fred Vervich will have, will have probably looked at the tyres when he saw, he's like, how is Chris Meese catching me so quickly? What is the issue here? What's wrong with the, and when he's pushed harder, the tyres have been not up to the job, and that's probably what he's complaining about. Or maybe it's like uh, Peter Ustinov's Grand Prix du Rock. He's just thought of an insult for the team, and he's coming <laughs> to tell them, and then he's driven off again. Uh, what I do like, um, what is refreshing, and the thing I love about the 24 series, we get a lot of, uh, you know, the Chris Meese there just called the team out. He's, he, he admitted we think it's a tactical error. And, and, you know, there's none of this sort of secrecy and none of this, oh, I can't tell you that. Um, his, t his team principal, Christian Lang, is, is ideal for that. He will tell you exactly what's going on. And it's just refreshing because there's nothing to hide. Everybody can see what happened there. Even Nick Damon saw it. So that's got to be something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. We were talking about this uh, yesterday, uh, some length, about how it's wonderful just to have honesty. And it gives so much more to the fans, the people following the series. You know, why conceal something? There are no great, great secrets. Of course, Herbert Motorsport have a locked box that includes their race tactics and how to handle situations because they've been doing this series since time yeah. began. And these things are a great scrap at the moment out on the track. Tim Vogler, Land Motorsport, uh, had a little clash. We think he was the one that put the red, the red Jordan's camel, a red camel Jordan's uh, uh, Porsche, just kissed it into the gravel at the first attempt. But he's recovered. He was ninth. He was eighth. He was seventh. He's now fourth, and he's trying for third, challenging Ralph Bone. He's caught Ralph, and now trying to work out where to put the 34 Audi past that Turbus Motorsport car. So, in fact, of course, Tim Vogler now knows he is the, the leading Land Audi because the sister car with Christian Meese came in for that pit stop, and we heard. Full honesty from Chris. He's in the garage now. Of course, he'll be talking with the team about uh, how not to do that again. But again, it's all part of the learning process. Well, that two-car battle for third and fourth is about to become a three-car battle because Antonio Saniero in the E2P Racing Porsche uh, in the GT3 AM class about to close up onto the rear bumper of the Tim Vogler Land car. And that'll be an AM battle for Ex class honours. Except... <laughs> As you spoke about him, Antonio ran off the circuit and has ah. just rejoined. He, he got it wrong 
down at the foot between Campus and Kurt Paul Frere. And I was about to say it's going to be a four car battle because Patrick Kropinski was closing in. But let's go down. There's more action with Nick in the pits. Well, there's not much action. There's um, some concerned faces leaning over a bonnet of the Audi RS3, the Wolfpower 117 car. And there are some liquids on the floor that should be inside the car, which is never a good sign. Uh, something oily has stopped being connected to something else oily uh, and resulted some of the oil not being where it should be. Um, uh, Nick, you're going to have to taste the fluids, mate. We need to know if it's engine oil, gearbox oil or coolant. They uh, all have different tastes. Um, I'm not tasting it, but it's definitely <laughs> oil. It's down here. It's a bleak there. So this is the back of the car. But I don't know how far they went back to the came in. Uh, there's some water underneath it. Dinks of oil. I don't know. Gibbs, I'm... Gibbs gearboxing. So gearbox oil is mixed up. Yeah, that is not an uncommon feature, what we've seen lately in this class of RS3, um, of, of Audi RS3s. We, we've had a few gearbox issues, haven't we? And Nick, during the week, if you could come down to my house and tell me what's leaking out the bottom of my TVR, I'd be most appreciative. <laughs> Could be anything, frankly. Right, leading the race, Sven Herberger, Shearer Sport PHX Audi by. It was over 10 seconds, it's come down a little bit, so Urban Bastard now settling down in the Santalok, uh, bright green challenger. So it's Audi, Audi, Porsche with Ralph Bone holding down third place. But as I say that, he no longer is, because Tim Fogler, the number 34 Land Motorsport Audi, has made it an Audi 1, 2, 3. He's nipped through and is pulling clear. Let's complete the top six. It's uh, Patrick Robinski, and let's complete Nick's train of thought. Uh, guess what? Gearbox oil! Yes, it was a gearbox that's broken. Now, uh, interesting, I can answer your question, uh, Bruce, about what's leaking out of your TVR, and the answer is money. Money is leaking out of your TVR. I feared as much, I just didn't want it confirmed on air. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Never doubted you, Nick. Never doubted you could see where it was coming from. Again, some great battling up and down the order. Chantal Prince working her way back up the order a little bit, went up, fell down, but in fact, as I say that, she's now getting lots of pressure. Kerong Lee is in close company in the Leipzig Motorsport uh, Lamborghini. More pit visitors. Moment, trying to work out who's just diving in. Certainly wasn't Sven Herberger. 14 laps on the board for Shearer Sport PHX. Just going down to Nick to tell us who's just dived in. Sorry, Nick. It's the 979 again, the speed love with Nico Verdonk. They came in earlier, Matt. They were the uh, people who spilled out all the engine coolant. That car's back in again. Um, they haven't yet taken anything apart. They're going to be a chat with the driver. Nothing's leaking off. It has gone straight into the garage, and the driver's getting out. So this is going to be a bit of a longer one. Thank you very much, Nick. Now, a little competition. Who was fastest on the track last time around? It was the driver in fifth place. Patrick Kropinski came up from off the bottom of our timing screen. He's now up to fifth. The next target is Ralph Bone. Ralph was just passed last lap by Tim Vogler to lost third position down to fourth. And Kropinski started the run between... 40th. He started 40th. Started 40th, but yeah. he started this lap just six tenths of a second down on... Uh, Ralph Bone, so I'm sure the move will come as they get towards the top of uh, the Kemmel straight, perhaps in behind. Right, let's talk a little bit about the battle in for the Porsche 992s in the 911 GT3 Cup class. It's Sam de Jong in 10th place overall, leading that class by mm, nearly six seconds from uh, who? Rick Boykers, wow. Rick Camels Jordan. So he's picked his way from about 10th in class, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, and now the writing is on the wall. Just comparing their lap times last time around. In fact, uh, it was a better lap for Sam de Jong, but I'm sure traffic had a role to play there, and Rick should be getting onto his tail any moment now. It's, uh, it's hopefully going to be another season-long battle between the red species, the red ants versus the red camels. Sam de Jong is showing he has the same sort of pace that Rick Boykers can produce. And it really was a fabulous recovery drive. Rick having to pick his way through the field of both cars in the 992 class and, all, and also te uh, content with the GT3 cars coming through. Cars like the Patrick Kopinski JP Motorsport McLaren. Isn't that great to see McLaren up there on that top of that timing straight? Currently fourth in fourth place. And the gap of 23 seconds now between itself the McLaren that is in fit or oh, sorry fifth place not fourth fourth place is Ralph Bond no no it's no I'll, I'll give you fourth he's taken that position in the first third of this lap oh, just right, waiting okay. for confirmation that, yeah. just looking at a, another graphic on another screen and Tim Vogler has also got by Ralph Bond for third 
So the, the Herbeth car under a barrage of, uh, of attacks here from all sides. It's Audi or McLaren. Which one's going to be next? Yeah, but what you need at this stage in the race is a lap time in the 225s is all low, low, low two minutes 26s. And in fact, Tim Vogler has got, as he comes out onto the very short start finish straight, jinking around. I think that's the, the BMW from Hofer Racing by Bot Motorsport. Got the, the McLaren right under his tail. Grupinski has a look up the inside into uh, La Source. That would have been a really daft move to make. He wasn't close enough, but he's shifting the McLaren around. It really moves around the track so much in comparison to the Audi in front of it as they try and get the power down coming down the hill past the old pits. And then, of course, what comes next? We know what comes next. It's Eau Rouge. They're going through there now. Then Radion. Who's going to get the better exit? But even if he doesn't get a better exit, which he does, yeah. the McLaren would get the toe up the straight. But again, remember? We found out that was the fastest car of all in that first sector of the track, and the move was made super, super easily. Easily, so Kropinski was fifth, it was fourth, is now third. Long before they get to their comp, he's into that third position. But heads up driving from, from Kropinski because he knew the Audi was about to get back into his slipstream, and we've seen this before, where the slipstream has then assisted the car behind to regain that position. So change for third, the McLaren moving up the order, and the land. Audi now, Tim Vogler dropping down to that fourth place. We'll probably see Krapinski moving away now from that Audi and already through the double gauche, uh, sorry, through Jackie X and heading down to double gauche and already a cushion. And already a cushion between not just itself and the land car, but the land Audi there, the white car with the blue striping, is moving ahead of the Urbeth Porsche and moving away from that Herbeth Porsche, having got that place. What is so noticeable, though, through the run down from Jackie X corner, through Pouin, and then through Fania and down, down to, to Campus, the Audi is better, but when you get to the longer straighter bits, that, that's where the McLaren will pull away. So uh, as long as he gets uh, Patrick Kropinski gets a good exit from the Corb Paul Frey, not a bad one. In fact, he can turn in where he wants, whereas the Audi seem to just take a little longer to get to the apex. That gap should go out. And last time around, in fact, Patrick Kropinski was a second and a half faster than the race leader. That's Sven Herberger. So the pace is there. But then, of course, the big question is, what's happened to those two cars at the sharp end of the field? Haas, RT, have to look all the way down to 27th position at the start of Waslan for, for Fred Verwies. And obviously, they've had the knockback. They had the visit to the pits. And even further back down, 35th overall, Tim Mullen now at the wheel of the 55. That was the uh, you know the early contender as well. Yeah, and Nick talked about how the uh, the pit stop for Land Motorsport uh, didn't look as sleek. That was then explained to us quite fully by Chris from Meese, how they simply weren't ready. So they're going to be needing to atone for that. But at the moment, Sven Herberger, eight seconds now. It was 10, it's down to eight seconds. His advantage over... Owen Bustard. And the last few minutes, it's suddenly gone from quite bright to oh. quite grey. Oh, and the rain is on the way. Let's check, right. check in with the pits. Oh, my word. Uh, can someone bring my coat down, please? Yeah, it we'll... Is, it's spitting quite heavily now, and there's a big dark cloud. Um, this may develop into heavy rain. I mean, yesterday, we saw a torrential downpour for about four minutes. It made one of those. Nothing may happen, but I can tell you right now that the uh, people in the pits are getting a little bit nervous, a bit mildly. Your coat is on the way, dear. Oh, uh, we've got our Scottish contingent bringing it oh, down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Oh, the service I need. Yes, yeah, so we've got some cars coming in. We've got a, uh, the green Mercedes and also the, the sole Toyota GT4s coming in. So we've got the 418 Mercedes that's come in, as has the uh, Toyota of uh, ex Wifit Racing. Uh, looking like, oh, no, that's a real problem with Toyota. The Toyota's just full of smoke. It's so just full of smoke. We need, I need to get the camera somewhere else. <laughs> this car's more interesting. The, <laughs> the cockpit is full of smoke. I don't know what's going on there. Look, it's, a, it's coming up through the the, uh, the engine and it's smoking back up through the almost like through the air intakes. So I've got no idea what's happening there. And the thing is smoking like anything. Gavin Pickering's hopped out. Uh, Gavin, that looks quite unpleasant. What happened? It's obviously, uh, as I say, it's an electrical fire, do you think? Yeah. It's got that, I've got, I've got a taste it, Joe. It's got the smell of electric. It's bad. Like, I'm glad you're OK, but I certainly had to hop out as quickly as possible. I'm not quite sure why the, uh, uh, 
Mercedes came through. Hoffer Racing in their Mercedes 11, they're coming in as well. They look like just doing some bad stop. Uh, we have the, one of the uh, instantly wrapped Porsches. Uh, John Shen actually is getting out of that one. The uh, steam machines, that is the uh, David Motorsport. Oh, and they're putting wets on. David Motorsport are putting wets on. Yeah, Nick. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, Nick. We've uh, we've got torrential rain at the far end of the circuit. That's moving across from Lacombe and making its way towards you in the pits. But right now it's torrential out there and wet tyres. That's the order I would suggest now. So you're going to see a flurry of cars into the pits. We've got a dry La Source, Bruce, and a very very wet Lacombe, Bruxelles, and through Jackie Yicks. It's absolutely soaking wet out there. Yeah, as the cars accelerate out of Radion, they probably have a little bit of something on their screen, but it's fully wet when they get up the top of the Kemmel Strait. And again, as the cars are coming up from the lowest point on the circuit from Kurt Paul Frere, they don't want to go too fast through Blanchimont. It's such a fearful, fearful corner anyhow in the dry. But right now, cars all with wipers on as they get up to the top of the straight. But again, here we can say it's, uh, it is spitting here above the pits, as Nick reported, but the track is still full bone dry. How long do you hang on out there? How long do you wait? The race being led by Sven Herberger, it was 8.6 seconds at the start of the lap. This is the point at which you could throw it all away so, so easily. Yeah, this is the point when you hope you've got the most experienced superstar driver in the car. A team that has indeed got that is Rick Breukers brings the 909 in. And if somebody like Rick Breukers cannot cope with the wet track on slick tyres, then I'm pretty sure no one else can. So tyre choice for the 909 coming now. And it's also a time for the brave, maybe, because Herbeth Motorsport have just moved back ahead of Land Motorsport. The 91 Porsche with Ralph Bone has moved ahead of Tim Vogler. Good move. But again, how much of a risk do you want to take? Easier to get it wrong than right at the moment. Suddenly, the pit is a flurry of cars coming in, some of which probably had a little bit of escape. But just keep an eye. Will Irvin Bastard close in on Sven Herberger in the lead of the race? Or will his suspected maybe slight wet up? wetter setup for that Santa Lock car be wasted by the fact it is fully fully wet here but busy in the pits Nick have you got anybody coming in near you the have we got any of the top uh, teams so far maybe because they're in a different part of the track to be honest um, but the rain is now coming in it's like hey we've seen several cars just go past the straight and they're breaking at the same point for the source they were before the wet tyres are going on to the 99 Red Capital's Jordan the 955 uh, new motorsport Full tires. Here comes the Mark BDS car as well. So at the moment, it's most of the cars in the GTX and GT4 class who come in. The GT3s appear to be uh, toughing it out at the moment. But I'm sure in the next lap, if we get any more rain here, as it is now properly wet in the pit lane, uh, they're going to have to come into the tracks and be down the whole way around. Thank you very, very much, Nick. Yes, busy down there. It's always do we jump now or do we wait another lap? And. Uh, just want to point out, CP Racing worked their way right up the order. They've had that early pit stop, but will they be among the pit visitors? Will it slightly undo them? So Sven Herberger in from the lead, but Irvin Bastard takes the lead for Santa Luc, uh, junior team in the number 26 Audi. He's going on for a further lap. The Audi TT RS also diving past our commentary position. And the 444 BMW from Senka Motorsport has also issued visiting the pits. It's Herbert, the number one car, the... The uh, Phoenix team, the reigning European champion Sven Herberger, he's being pushed backwards into the pits. So it's more than just a tyre change. It's, and it's absolutely torrential rain now over us. We've obviously picked oh. up that rain. I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised if people could stop and hit their marks. Two, yeah. Fork and car comes beneath us. Two cars uh, off at Eau Rouge at the moment. The 427, which is uh, the Lion Speed uh, Porsche Cayman. Got the 416 Bugger Buggerat Mercedes as well. That pirouetted down and probably needs uh, not just a new set of tyres, but a new set of underwear for the driver of that car. Um, didn't hit anything remarkably. And Nick, they are big drops of rain, aren't they? Code 60. The rain is massive, uh, globule un unlimited, and it's now so it's it's pretty much undrivable. This is a, this is a sort of rain where you kind of slow down, try hide under, hide under a bridge on the motorway. Um, the engine covers come off the number one car. They're still in the pits. They've done a change. I think they've got a problem on the rear right. 
Uh, let's see if I can just if I can grab a quick word. Uh, Sven's disappeared. I'm not sure if I can grab a quick word with someone in the team. They've uh, put Ella Earhart back in the car. Let's see if I can grab a quick word with Pierre. Uh, Pierre, what's the problem with the car? I don't know. We tried to figure out. We have some uh, heavy vibrations on the car, and now we do a ch safety check. So. Actually, here's Sven. Sven, um, all going well. Then you pulled the car in, but obviously it's actually gone into the pitch. You know what the problem is? We have bad vibrations. We don't know what. I don't know. As a driver, they're checking this now. And uh, yeah, let's see. But I suppose you're quite pleased to be missing this rain, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, rain is fantastic. I, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in the winter in Finland, and there we do always drifting. So. So just back on this vibration again, has this suddenly happened or has it been getting worse and worse during the stint? I don't know, uh, I really can't tell whether it's a drive shaft or, or whether it's a weight of the, on the tyres, I don't know, they, so the technicians have to check. Yeah, they've done a full check on that right rear, they've done a kind of a, uh, not quite stringing it, Joe, but they had a look and they were checking all the gaps that were correct on the various bits, and they pull it out now, and it is just so wet, the rivers of water we're, yeah, we're trapped in this garage now because we haven't got a rain cover on the camera. Uh, car goes away. Hopefully, it's just, that's not going anywhere. But spectacular. That's just one for the for the replay uh, highlights reel. Um, yeah, so the cars are all coming in. They're all they're all taking tyres. They're under code 60, which is a good idea for safety. But obviously, uh, Phoenix have lost. I would think probably two and a half minutes doing this check. Thanks very much, Nick. And Joe, of course, when they're finishing the pits, they go to refueling. Just describe how it is. There's not a lot of place to s space to play, is there? Well, fueling is actually the, on the old heritage pits, which is a very, very steep downhill pit lane. How they ever worked in that pit lane, I do not know. Because if you leave a tyre there, if you're not careful, it'll roll away. It's really, really steep. Well, that's where the fueling stations are. So you're effectively pulling into the pit apron for one of the old historic heritage pit, pa pit garages, still used in things like the Spa 20 24 hours for teams to work from but right now we've got a bit of a queue it's like turning up at the supermarket service station and finding yourself not able to get on the pump and having to queue up and wait your turn and that's what we're seeing now not as much time lost if we were under racing green conditions but under code 60 and the code 60 is being brought out i suspect bruce we don't really have to be told officially that rain came down so heavily we went code 60 to enable the teams to, for safety reasons, to get their cars onto the right tyres. I think you're entirely right, but just the sight of the 416 Mercedes mm. from Bagheera, Bagheera ZM going off at Eau Rouge and then drifting backwards down the wet grass bank. I've never seen that before, but that was an absolute sign. And bear in mind, what, five minutes before? It was bone dry. And even now, as the cars are going up the slope towards uh, the top of the crest there at Les Combes, the weather's improving. It's still raining, but it's not stair rods of rain. And, uh, of course, for all the drivers, they'd be going, hmm, maybe I could have stayed off. But that, that is properly wet. And the wettest part of the circuit now is the section we're looking over at La Source. I knew it was going to be one of those weekends, Bruce. I looked at the weather forecast and uh, the, the, the week or so leading up to this weekend. And every time I looked at it, it was different. It was different every single day. Uh, you know, I, I looked at it last Tuesday. It was going to be sunny. I looked at it on the Tuesday afternoon. It was going to be wet and sunny. Looked at it on the Wednesday. It was going to be snowing. You know, it was. It's kind of like that place. We're very high altitude here in the in the uh, the hills in the Ardennes region. Um, and that's why we get such changeable weather conditions. And like you said, Bruce, already having seen, we've got rivers of water running across the track at La Source, and then what looks like a pretty damp track out there at uh, Lacombe. Well, gosh, it seems a long time ago that we had the start of the race. Right now it's fully wet, but drying. Well, it's easy for me to say that from a dry commentary box, but uh, have people jumped too soon? How quickly will it dry? But it's properly wet at La Source. It's starting to be less wet at the point where the rain hit first, which is, as so often is the case, up at Les Combes. And then greeting them all the way down through Double Gauche, through Fania and Kurt Paulfrey. And then gradually it came up the slope just in time for Nick to get his coat on. And then it struck the pit lane, but... Uh, quite a few moments there and for a lot of the crews they worked their way up the field but don't forget a lot of them would have stumbled in their timing of their visit to the pits they wouldn't have got to the front of the queue for refueling and that makes a massive massive difference 
could you afford to stay out longer? Well, Erwin Bastard did that, and he's only now coming into the pits that are all but empty, while everybody else came in and did their fueling. That might have been a very clever move, but uh, the start of the race, fully dry circuit, 50 cars, and it was two Audis on the front row. And it was Fred Vavish on pole, which is the pit wall side, and on the outside of the circuit in front of the grandstand, Erwin Bastard, another Audi, that's from Santalot Racing. But it was the Haas RT Audi with Vavish that took the lead into the first corner, into La Source, behind Ian James, had a bit of a challenge with Svet Herberger, but it went around. And then there was the spin at Eau Rouge for the Red Camels, Jordan Porsche, and another car pushed wide in, into the outside. Rick Broyker's got going again, but he's one of the drivers having a fight back. And the car that was running second very early on, the 55 Audi, that was the one started for Land Motorsport by Chris Ramis. Tim Muller has spun that right at the bottom of the track. As they go down, he's level with the exit of the old pit. So at the foot of Eau Rouge, no doubt he lost it going down the slope on the grass. You don't stop on wet grass. Effectively, where the track kinked to the right when you go down past the old pits, he went straight across the circuit, didn't have grip, and somehow he stopped at the foot of the grass and then got the car going, drove it across the track, but now he's facing at 90 degrees the travel of flow at pit exits. He's cleared it. He's cleared, Bruce, well he, done. He was trying to get the car cleared. We've got the 50 year, the Gossner car, the that's, Gossner Mercedes. Yeah, that's Thomas Gossner has just taken over. Manuela did the first into the race, MP. No sport, but oh dear, it's very, very tricky. Don't think just because they put wet weather tyres on, it's going to be easy for them out there because they don't know how uniform the water is. And they're just spinning, just turning in, and the rear end carrying too much speed. The rear end grip not as grippy as the front end, and then we had the car just come round kind of harmlessly through 90 degrees, and then he's able to resume and just pull that car straight. We had a very, very... Uh, tricky moment for Tim Vogler and just look and and what we're seeing cars at Eau Rouge and that's the uh, the Hassar T car getting all it all wrong it's the rivers of water that's running down the hill towards Eau Rouge just when you're starting to want to slow the car up and the, the drivers applying the brakes they're also adding a bit of aquaplaning and that's why we're seeing cars spinning off down into Eau Rouge, one of the perhaps trickiest parts of any racetrack in the world, adding water, adding rivers running across the track, and this is what we're seeing. Even the most experienced of drivers struggling just to get their cars round, Bruce. It's, a, it's, a, it's quite incredible. It, it, it's quite incredible even for Spa. It, it really is, and uh, you know, if that's not exciting, just seeing people surviving on this track, it was also then suddenly there was a gaggle of six cars. It was the, it basically the lead grouping, uh, or the second, third, and fourth, in the 992 class, HRT Performance Red Ant Racing and H the second HRT Performance car with Martin on board, Yannick Redon and Stefano Monaco and the, the Mark II, the great Mustang lookalike uh, with, uh, from Team VDS, all side by side, but luckily they're now nose to tail. It was a sharp intake of breath there down at the bottom of the hill, the curb Paul Frere accelerating gingerly out of that long, long right-hander to get the power down to come back up now. Will the puddles be the same next time around? Hopefully they'll become rather less, but certainly at the foot of uh, the dive past the old pits, the front end of the Haas RT car just washed away. Suddenly no option but to take to the grass. But a good, good recovery. But they're way down the order now. You get a measure of just how much water's out there by the amount of spray that's being created by these cars. And, and really, when you're following in the wheel tracks of another car, you literally, your wipers can't cope. You're, you're driving blind. You, you absolutely certainly are. And uh, Fred Vavish, it's luckily they've got him still on board. That when you have the most experienced driver on board your car when the weather's at the worst, you, you thank your lucky stars. And in fact, Fred has uh, moved that car back up the order to sixth and with a couple of other cars in refueling, that's possibly up to fourth position, but we'll let you know in the next minute or so because it's uh, sorting itself out very quickly indeed. Where is Christopher Meese, uh, the Tim Buller car, having had that bit of a spin now down in 29th, so losing time did uh, Tim. He's got the car going again, stayed at the wheel of the land car. That's the car he took over from Christopher Meese, remember, currently 13th in GT3. And I've just uh, <laughs> been sent a great little message. It's no longer today Eau Rouge, it's Eau Deluge. I rather like that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just Eau Rouge, I'm yes. sure. Up the, but suddenly the spray as the cars are coming up the Camel Straight. Anybody with a camera looking back down the order, they, they'll just pick up headlights. Eventually they'll get a bonnet, then some lights. It's a very slow-moving BMW there, being very, very cautious. It's letting all the GT3 runners through. It's down in 
Trying to work out who that is. I think it's Richard Gonder for Senkir Motorsport. Of course, clearly in that class of car, he's not going to challenge a GT3 car, but some drivers out there are just being, well, actually probably advisedly very cautious for the next couple of laps just to work out where things lie. We've got a 992 car that's come through in the lead of this race overall. It's the 904 numbered Red Ant Racing Porsche. Uh, Sam de Jonga at the wheel of that car and he's got 18 seconds. The first of the GT3 runners is Erwin Bastard, who has now stayed at the wheel of the Sonderlock car after that pit stop, four wet tyres. Uh, the McLaren, I've got to say, up to third overall. Uh, we've ticked by the first hour with all of that consternation and drama, Bruce. Uh, I think we're ready for our first hourly rundown of uh, at least the top 10 just to get a grip and well, you know what it's going to change in the mat in a matter of 10 minutes before i've even finished Probably. the sentence so let's do the top 10 on the track as they are at the moment sam de Jonga leading overall in a 992 porsche that's for red ant racing owen bastard down to second place he just pitted last time around he may have fallen slightly further in the 26 santa lock audi third place as joe just mentioned jp motorsport patrick kopinski in their mclaren that's come up from 40th charles espinal that early pit stop for them in the cp racing mercedes they are top in gt3 am and fourth overall ian james heart of racing mercedes second in gt3 am and fifth overall fred verviche at the moment sixth but you can be sure he'll be advancing in the haas rt audi and bear in mind he just had an off-track moment and he's got that behind him elliot Earhart, he's taken over the car that was challenging the shearer sport phx audi that's in seventh tenth place antonio saniero e2 P Racing Porsche, that's seventh in GT3 overall and eighth overall. Matt Kehoe, American racer for Black Falcon uh, Team Techstar, that's second in the 992 class, or the 992 for 911 GT3 Cup cars. And third car in that class is tenth overall. It's Red Ant Racing, Yannick Credon at the wheel of that. In the GT3 class, of course, it's uh, 26. GTX, it's number 720. And uh, that, I'm just trying to see how far down it's Paulius Pas Cascavicius in a Lamborghini, who's top of GTX. TCE, TCE's being led by a TCR class car. It's the Wolf Power car, car 121. Ivers Fallers at the wheel of that car in 36th place overall. Second in the TCE categories uh, is the first of our TCX class runners, it's the Porsche 718 Cayman SRS team Sorg Rensport. Patrick Grutter started the car, he's still at the wheel of the number 227. They're in 39th overall. Third in TCE, second in the TCR class is the Cooper TCR of Real Keep by Todd Car Sport. Jorge Pelek Ruath still at the wheel of that car, having started it. That's number one, two, three. They're in 41st place overall. 42nd overall and fourth in TCE is the Home Guard Motorsport, Cooper Leon. And it's uh, Jonas Home Guard at the wheel of that number 102. Fifth, a little bit further back, is in 44th place, is the Alexander Schmidt driven Hall for Racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW M2. That's car 331. Sixth is the BMW M2 of Roma Racing by BMW Team. And it, that's Johan Lambrex, car two, four, five, 47th overall. And then the last of the TCE runners, it's the Marcus Menden car, still in the pits, remember. The 117 car, seventh, but dropping time all at this moment with that problem with that Audi. You talk of the pits, let's head down to Nick Damon. Well, the uh, Haas racing car has just come in. Fred Verveesh has got off, and I think an important point is he did those entire laps on slicks. Oh. So he's not had wets on at any point. So those gaining he was doing, he was on slicks. Uh, they've come out now and they've done a full driver change. I, must admit, I was a bit distanced away. I couldn't see what they put on, but my expectation is they put some wets on the car. So Fred doing a, uh, a superhuman effort. Let's see if I can uh, uh, grab a word with the man himself. Fred, I've just seen that they've just... Sorry, let's this for a bit. I've just seen they've taken slicks off your car. You must be... How is that? How did you do those laps on slicks? Yeah, my, my suit is brown, so... No, it's... Uh, I, I tried it was possible, but then there was a heavy, heavy shower in Sector 1, which, which gave crazy aqua planning, so undrivable, and I think we're lucky <laughs> to, to have had no, no contact on a wall or something. Uh, because yesterday the track dried quite quickly, so... Uh, we tried again, but we expect more rain so to come, so... Uh, yeah, we tried something, it didn't work, uh, but let's see uh, yeah, later on. I think it will be a race like that, so... 
He came in about, before the rain, he came in a, a code 60, which seemed strange. The team were looking at your tyres. What was the problem? Uh, yeah, we were discussing, discussing the different options and so, yeah. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, yeah, we as a driver have some info from, from inside. Uh, but obviously we don't know what will come. Uh, the, we don't have the weather forecast, so it was a discussion and well, let's see how it, how it goes. So now it's mature driving and uh, yeah, uh, we're on the right tyres now. You have, good, you have a well-deserved rest. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. A change of overall as well. That's incredible to think that. I mean, that explains why he got out of control in that aquaplaning incident in the World Rouge. And to think it took a driver of Vavisha's skill and experience to control that. Um, interesting as well, teams are reckoning more rain coming. So, again, I mean, that's not a massive surprise, is it? No, it's not a massive surprise. Um, the McLaren, Bruce, I've got to say, that has been really impressive in that climb from 40th uh, on the grid when this race started, now up to a very, very solid third place, only three seconds behind the second place per start-driven Sonderlock uh, Audi and 27 seconds behind the overall race leader, which happens to be 992, the cup car leads this race overall it doesn't just lead the race it's got an advantage of nearly of over 24 seconds it's all fallen into place for them so sam de jong pushing on very hard at the moment in that glorious uh, blue car and he's sharing with john de Vilder and philip vills but at the moment driving like that he doesn't fancy coming in but uh, none too surprisingly there are messages on the overhead gantry saying lights on because otherwise still the camera crews wouldn't pick them up at the end of the long straights and it's about staying on your toes and uh, again, just staying off the kerbs wherever possible. Jorge Palek Ruiz, current junior champion. He took the crown at the end of the 2022 season. So he's our reigning European junior champion at the wheel of that rear keep car. And uh, a very experienced driver there. Just back end of that front wheel drive car, just rotating round, which is exactly what he wanted from it at the Brussels hairpin. He just uh, turned the car in, got a bit of karting experience. Uh, he's a, he was working in the Ultimate Karting Championship in the UK at uh, last season. So I got to see a little bit of him, actually. And uh, he's, a, he's a chap, that a young man who's uh, trying to forge a career in motorsport, not just as a driver, but as an engineer as well. And you, as you can see, the way he's driving that car, just letting that car float across the, the wet track and just using as much of the track as he needs and just really just that car just dancing around and sliding around in these wet conditions well it did make me laugh just as you were describing that he ran off the circuit i don't I think yeah, you were yeah, looking at me he, he and just let it go he, he let, it, let go. it go he just let it go he's not fighting it he's letting the car breathe he's letting the car dive around just float around and slide around and that's if you if you if you try and correct that that's where you can lose control and thankfully, you have the room to be able to do that, of course. Exactly. <laughs> there are points on the circuit you can and points you cannot. But uh, just to point, give you a guide, of course, we had that really heavy flurry of rain up at uh, Le Combe and eventually through the pits. And the best laps at the moment are about 20 seconds off the pace. Slightly busy in the pits. Let's go down to Nick. It's Di. It's Di. Hello, Di. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I've taken over from Nick down here in the pit lane, so I'll be, I've um, got my wet weather coat on just ready, so just waiting for some more activity, but Nick's gone for a well-deserved break, but I'll be here now. Just like being, just like being at home hours. for you, just like <laughs> being at home for you, die back in the borders of Scotland. <laughs> exactly, exactly, but um, it's all quiet at this moment, obviously, as you were talking about, the weather just threw itself down and then it sort of stopped again, but it's still looking a little bit grey down here, but most people are sort of taking a little bit of a deserved rest at this minute in time. Well, you can't blame them. Out on the circuit, we've just seen the third place McCarran being overtaken very easily. It wasn't for position, though. It was uh, by car number 34. A car that was a front runner. It was a Land Motorsport car that was started by Tim Vogler. And uh, he is way down the order, but he's got the pace at the moment in the wet but track conditions changing as we speak still windscreen wipers on around much of the circuit but uh, even as the cars dive past us spray as they put the brakes on as they approach la source but uh, again a time for caution all cars still being told to keep their tail lights on stan de jong just waiting for him to complete another lap is he going to still be 24 seconds the good if anything he's actually marginally pulling away from urban bastard so that's a really good performance for a driver in the nine uh, 11 gt1 
oh, sorry, GT3 Cup class. And uh, again, just waiting for that lap to be completed. But they're lapping north of 2 minutes 40. A quick lap, as we said, just before the rain arrived, was a 2 minute 25, 2 minute 26 second lap. So it they're way off that pace. Incredibly, Bruce, that 992 class car that leads this race overall. If you look at the last laps, uh, last time they came through together, all of the top three were lapped in the 2 minutes 42 seconds range, let's call it. De Jong has just gone through in a 2.44. Let's see what Owen Bastard. Completely different classes, these. 241. Ah, right, mm. that tells me mm. that the rain is subsiding and maybe we're getting a bit of track evolution. Car still picking up a lot of spray, though. So it's not like we're talking about the, tra the, the track transitioning to dry, it's just transitioning to less wet. Yes, in indeed, th that very much the case. I really want to just. Uh Work out. Max Edelhoff was the second driver into the 34 Land Motorsports Audi that uh, Tim Fogler started. He looks like the fastest guy on the track, just looking at his pace. Oh, yeah, 2 minutes 41 again. Marginally yeah. faster than Owen Bastard, who's second. But Fogler, though, unfortunately, we saw him in the grandstand at the start of the race. He's taken over, but he's down in 17th position. Fight back, but that's looking really handy at the moment. Yeah, former race winner, of course, uh, Max Edelhoff knows how to win, win these 24 inch series races and uh, a good pair of hands now at the wheel of that 34. Not saying that it didn't already have a good pair of hands in the previous drivers, uh, but Max will know how to maximise that drive. He's got a gaggle of 992 class cars ahead of him, five, four of the cars uh, from fifth place down to eighth place in the 992 class. 992 being led by our overall race leader. Not very often we get to say that. Uh, Sam de Jonga leading this race overall and leading the 992 class. Uh, we've got to look down into ninth place. It's a Red Ant car in first and a Red Ant car in second. Yannick Redont at the wheel of the 903, currently in ninth overall. Tenth overall is Matt Keo in the Block Falcon team Porsche. And then we've got Rick Breuker started on pole, had that spin at the first corner, and then recovered through to lead the class, but currently fourth in the 992 class at 11th overall. Right, quick scan down the, the time. I'm looking to see who's further down the order, reshuffled, maybe didn't get in the right position in the refueling queue, but uh, the person who's quickest last time around, you have to look some way down the order, but it's down in ninth, eighth position now. Lauren Heinrich has taken over the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. He's a fast, fast rising star in the world of Porsche racing, and he's doing a very good job. Look out for him. His next target will be Antonio Saniero in the ET2P racing. Porter, he's got to find about a second. He should catch him. My sense we might have die in the pits. No, again, just picking up a bit of bit of noise down in the pits there. And in fact, looking out the window, from what we can see, the 55 Audi is just rumbling past this. Don't forget, Tim Muller was uh, right at the front end of the field early in the race. Yeah, it's um, it's 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 raining quite heavily for that number 55 car. It's a little black cloud over it at the moment, dropping down to 32nd overall. That car was in overall contention, remember, and that's not anything to do with Tim. That's more to do with circumstance for the Land Motorsport Audi. They're currently 15th and 32nd overall, like I said. Now in the pits, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, Maybe, maybe it jumped past the refueling. You never know, because that was very, very busy, and sometimes it's better not to sit at the back of the queue, go round, do another lap. But this was the car that Chris Meese started, and the one where he surprised the crew. They weren't ready for him, and that definitely cost them moments. But the 34 Audi is going better and better. Max Edelhoff on board, we mentioned it last time. He's lapping below 2 minutes 40, which means it's very quick. The best the rest. Oh, and Bastard picking out the pace, 2 minutes 40.1. But that's very impressive. No wonder it looks quick. But unfortunately, it's just gaining. It's, unfor it's fortunate it's gaining position. Unfortunately for them, it's way outside the top 10. Only just now moving past the Porsche Baltic 992, number 992 for 16th. So, but from these lower ranks, people can rise. I tell you what, Bruce, that uh, leading 992 car lapping in a 241. Car behind him, Bastard in the Sunderlock car, the GT3 car, two minutes 40.1. The gap has come down to 20 seconds, but I tell you what, if these conditions, these track conditions continue to be on and off, soaking wet to moist and dry, then you know what? We could see a bit of history here this weekend. I mean, all right, we, you know, four hours and 44, well, 10 hours and 44 minutes to go, but uh, I'm going to be, you know, presumptuous to think that that is a possibility. My guide to how well Sam de Jong, a Belgian driver in that 
904 Red Ant racing car that's leading the race. How well he's going. Two minutes, 41.7 last time around. Yeah. I'm comparing it with the gold standard for me, Rick Broikers, similar sort of car. He is a second and a bit slower last time around. We'll see in the previous lap, it was about the same. So anyone who could match Rick Broikers, I think he's doing yeah, a yeah. fantastic job. But right now, Sam de Jong yeah. is astounding. 904 leading the race for Red Ant Racing. So as you pointed out, they had first and ninth. So that's looking pretty good for them at this point. And That's first and second, of course, in the Porsche Cup class. Moving back up the order and into contention. We talked about him a little earlier on. Charles Espinlai with the number 85 Mercedes. That car up to fourth overall, 42 seconds behind the leader, 12 seconds behind Patrick Krapinski. Uh, Krapinski in the McLaren. And Krapinski, if anything, not on the pace of Bastard. So the McLaren not liking the wet weather as much as it liked the dry, and we knew where that performance advantage was with the McLaren. It was certainly on the straights, Bruce, uh, but that's been negated somewhat in these conditions. Yeah, and just before it started getting uh, even slightly damp, before it became fully wet, we were just looking at the, the, the McLaren against a, a, nearby, a nearby Audi who was challenging, and the Audi was so much better in the slower corners and just seemed to be able to turn in, whereas the McLaren certainly for JP Motorsport looked quite twitchy but their 69 car in third place maybe it's just a case of the driver settling into the car into the conditions but the conditions of course are not stable it is drying out but try telling that to some of the drivers they're going wherever i look if i'm behind someone i've got a face full of spray so certainly you've got to know the circuit well and maybe use some sighting points alongside the circuit rather than just what you can see through your screen when you're trying to brake at the top of the camel straight for example Let's say hello to some of our viewers and listeners on Twitter. Dave Alcock joins us. Mike Nash, former competitor here uh, with that Seat. I'm sure Mike uh, Nash still has that Seat in his garage somewhere. I'm sure we'll find somewhere for you to race it in the series. Marcus Miller uh, joins us. He's astounded that we, we've got, uh, we're about to see very shortly, I would think, uh, Adam Christodoulou go out in a Porsche. He's still got his AMG Mercedes works driver overalls and underwear on. Oh, but that don't deal worry. is only for the Nürburgring. That deal is only for the Nürburgring. Uh, so, Marcus, don't worry. Alan Prosser is with us as well. So, um, and Kevin Payne, Ian McCarthy. Hello, guys. We've uh, got Martin the game. Webster. Yep, they're, they're all along for this very wet ride here at Spa. So, you know, keep your tweets coming in. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll see it through to the first part the conclusion of this first six hours of the 12 hours of spa fastest driver on the circuit is in seventh place seems a bit of an anomaly but that's lauren heinrich the 91 herbert motorsport porsche making up ground two minutes 38.1 for him also going well is max adelhoff two minutes 38.8 he's down in 16th in one of the land motorsport audis i think it's safe to say that the order was becoming set and then it was juggled and then it was shaken around yeah. a bit more and with the Haas RT car with now with Mathieu Detry he's a second driver in that car only down in 22nd position but he's one of the quick drop guys anyone lapping underneath two minutes 40 is doing a good job and behind him uh, Matthias Besch for Moderna Motorsport is also making moves so we're on board with Rick Broik is in the 909 car, currently in, where is he? He's currently third in the 992 class through Eau Rouge, up the hill at Radion. Looks quite dry from the driver's perspective, using all the curb on the left there to fire himself out. The Camel Straight is uphill, all the way along this straight, one of the longest straights in motorsport towards Lacoon. Now he's moving across to the right-hand side of the track to get it more on the wet line. That's to cool those wet tyres. So even Rick can feel the tracks coming back to him and stays, oh, gets the car all very, very sideways indeed on the into the braking area for Lecomte. Now the right-hand bit out of Lecomte towards Bruxelles using the wet line, you'll note, just a, a little bit off the optimum racing line. That's where the grip will be. We're off the more rubbered-in line and he stays around the outside of the Bruxelles hairpin. And moving downhill through the Jack X corner. Very tricky corner, this off camber, left hander, leading to the. And again, we see Rick getting offline and moving onto the wetter line. He's, he's nursing those wet tyres. He wants to stay off the dry line because he knows he's just going to overheat those heavily treaded wet weather tyres through the double apex, double gauche, and then on towards Piff Paff which is a right-left S's. The first part, very tricky to get the car to turn in, and then you kind of have to be patient here. As you turn into the left-hander, be patient, be patient. Again, using the, the wetter outside line. 
through there into Campus, which is a pretty conventional right-hander, but it's you want to keep the momentum up using all the curb and more there for Rick, and then into the right-hander at Stabilo, and then that run, that long run, flat out through the gears, up through the sweeps, the right-hand sweep, that leads to the left-hand sweeps of Blanchemont. Got to position the car right, and again we see Rick getting more back onto a conventional line through the left-hander of Blanchemont. He just misses his apex by a metre now then on the uphill stretch to the bit of track here that breaks it up. He's down the inside, staying on the wetter line into the bus stop chicane, which is basically a right-left chicane. And that left-hand bit, that finishes the lap, that's almost a hairpin. And it really is. When you look at the, from the helicopter shot, if you look at that, you're almost into a 180, it's about a 100 and 60 degree turn great lap from rick and it did really show just how tricky those conditions are you saw how much opposite lock he had on at times yeah i just wanted to see in fact that was a yeah it was a good lap two minutes 41.8 whereas our race leader in the same class rick now is in third in the 992 class a two minute 42 so he took a little bit of time out of him but our race leader sam de Jonger, just goes on to the 29th lap for the 904 porsche from red out racing we have a while to wait and erwin bastard should be next to the start finish line but it's a lot of seconds erwin crosses 13.8 seconds down so advantage that lap to our race leader in the 992 class sam de Jonger, the red out racing 904 porsche stretching clear again but it, it's, a, it's a question joe of where the traffic is at the moment and not wanting to go on the outside line and at the moment the guy doing the chasing is definitely rick broikers once again we've seen that 992 class car just blast past a gt3 car on the kemmel straight and into lacombe they're into the brussels hairpin now and it's the it's the land motorsport car with tim muller at the wheel tim just being into the pits he's been out for a couple of laps now having just taken on fuel so he's been refueled under green, so he'll have a full tank of fuel, full quarter of fuel. Uh, Wicker Bill makes a very good point, thanks for this, Wicker Bill. Um, some really sensible driving out there. I know I shouldn't be surprised from this series, but that sudden downpour would have caused havoc in other series. That's a good point there, Bruce. We could have had havoc. The conditions kind of were, were, were met, was meant to create havoc. The amount of water we had uh, dropping down, so full credit to all of the drivers that had to cope with those conditions, but that was a, a very good observation there. Well, we did. We had some very, very sensible driving, and there was a lot of time given up by drivers that we might not have seen in other series where it's a little bit more intense in the more professional levels. Yeah, I think you can cut yourself a tiny bit of slack, and if that's what keeps you on the circuit. But you know, even in the dry this morning, we had the round of the Spanish Formula Four Championship and the European, not the single seater class, a little bit higher, Euro, Euro, Euro Cup three series, and you could sort of go right, okay, when's the red flag coming? Small incidents, but drivers in the dry going off into the gravel, and here every provocation was out there with weather was just truly abysmal, even catching out the best. But how many are in the gravel at the moment? Not one. So, yeah, full, full marks. But at the moment, this race belongs to Sam de Jonger. He'll be just reveling, leading outright in a Porsche Cup class car. The 904 from Red Ant Racing. The sister car is in ninth overall, second in class. So, glorious days uh, for Bert Redon, the father who sort of stepped down from racing so his two sons can uh, take over. Ayrton, who started the 903 Red Ant Racing Porsche, and now brother Yannick at the wheel at the moment. You can see the racing influence in there, can't you? But, uh, a little bit, yes. You, you can somehow. Yes. Uh, his brother, uh, Ayrton and Yannick, apparently not named after Yannick Dalma. Go on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think Yannick is a kind of a yeah. French-Belgian kind of name. And I said, oh, Yannick Dalma. And he says, uh, Who was the tennis player? Really good tennis player. I'm trying to think. Answers on the postcard, please. Yannick, I'll think about it in a minute, but anyhow, <laughs> it'll come. The best name is Sam because Sam is leading the race. Sam is Sam de Jong, Red Ant Racing, car 904. Gap down to 12 seconds though, Bruce. It's, we are, the, the, the universe is about to be righted. We've got a 992 class car leading this field overall. I know we've talked about that, but that is quite a distinctive thing that will uh, uh, be occurring here. However, we've seen 992 class cars just being able to barrel past the quicker GT3 cars on the straight here at Spa, and the gap down to 12 seconds, that's come down from 20 seconds, but it's coming down ever so slowly, and all De Jonga will need is for another downpour, which is probably due any moment now by the look of the sky. Yeah, often it's talking about degrees of rain, 
and at the moment up at uh, Le Combe, it looks a little bit wetter than it was, but... And uh, just let's go for a pit report, because uh, weather's changing all the time. Die. In pit lane, it just has started to spit with rain down here. Quite light at the moment, but it's more a little bit cloudy over us, but it's definitely spitting with rain now. So everyone's sort of coming out of the garages to sort of have a look and looking up at the sky and walking out in further out into the pit lane just to double check, but definitely spitting now. Yannick Noah, of course, was a tennis play. I've obviously got such a small brain, I can only focus on one sport at a time. So, a choice of Christian names. Patrick is not named after Patrick Dubai. He's got spelt a different spelling. <laughs> He's third overall. Patrick Kropinski, the number 69 JP Motorsport McLaren. Yes, the one that started 40th on the grid. But that is struggling a little bit in these tricky, tricky conditions. But he's been started in the dry, worked up the order, managing the rain at the moment. But you can be sure Christian Clean is thinking, hold on, check the weather forecast, check it again another minute because it could have changed. Will I go in next or will I do the closing stint of this first six-hour segment of the 12 hours here? I was disappointed to hear you weren't named after Bruce McLaren, actually. And I was very disappointed my parents not named me after Joe Bonnier. Yes, I know. Uh, the know. lack of foresight, yes. quite staggering. <laughs> yes. Just trying to think who Nick might have been named after. Uh, um, who's that golfer? <laughs> Nick Faldo. Yes, I think it was Nick Faldo, wasn't it? <laughs> he doesn't play golf, by the way, everybody. Probably gather that. It is drying, it, despite the little little flurry of spit here, but you can't say that looking at that source and then turn to the left and not expect to see great grey clouds, which is exactly what I'm looking at as I look up towards. From the commentary box, I can just glimpse the track or the, t the area around Le Combe and then the dive down to Bruxelles. It's grey over there, slightly tinted windows, but it's still not exactly bright. But the real key point, of course, is what is the racing surface like? Is there a bit of a dry line? You don't see rivers running across the track anymore. And it's be interesting to see a shot of the field down into Eau Rouge because, of course, down there was where the water was at its worst. But looking at the lap times, they are just about starting to come down. And it, a few drivers now lapping beneath 2 minutes 40. Anyone doing that can gain one or two seconds on the car that they're chasing. Really good little battle for fourth and fifth places. Charles Espinal holding off in the CP Racing Mercedes. The one that got out of sequence after just four laps, or was it three, when it dived in and uh, took on some fuel, but uh, battling the American racer against the driver base in the States, Ian James, heart of racing Mercedes. They're separated by half a second. They're lapping at a fairly decent pace, but they've been caught by who? The driver who was seventh is now sixth. It's Lauren Heinrich. He took uh, three and a half seconds out of that battle last time around, so he will be starting to close in. We said he was working his way forward. Uh, he's doing a good job, but in fact, he's some distance behind her, but he's certainly taking great chunks out of their, their, their lead in fourth and fifth positions. But, yeah, uh, but wait and watch on that front. I'm not sure Heinrich is a, 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 a new driver to the Herbert Motorsport team. Certainly is in this series. I've not seen him being paired with uh, the likes of Ralph Bond, Daniel Allerman, and Alfred Reynauer. Uh, but he's doing a cracking job, as we expected he would do in that 91 Herbert car. And one thing I've just noticed, of course, the lights are supposed to be on on the cars, but for the car in 33rd position, the 70. One Audi from Juta Racing is missing its left headlight. All it has at the nose of that car is a headlight in front of the truck uh, on the right-hand side, and the other side, it's all taped down. That was a car that got caught up at the first corner, and uh, Nick elicited one of the quotes, too many Lithuanians fighting for the same bit of circuit. I hear that every week in, week out at races around the world. Not. But certainly it won't uh, help the drivers too much if it gets a great deal darker. This race due to finish at 10 to 6 local time, so there should still be plenty of light in the sky at this point in late spring. But at the moment, a lot of the drivers will feel as though they are driving in the night. It's still a lot of spray. So with four and a half hours remaining, let's have a bit of an update on what's happening in TCE. Being led by the 121 numbered Wolf Power Audi. Ivers Valas still at the wheel of that car. The Rail Equipe by Todd Car Sport, the Cupra of Jorge Pelec Ruiz has been at the, the, both of those drivers have been at the wheel of the TCR classed cars since the very start. Car 123 it is, that's currently second. And those cars are currently 30th and 39th overall. It's the Home Guard Motorsport, Cooper Leon in third, the 102 Jonas Home Guard car in 41st overall. And then we look at the first of the TCX class cars. It's the Porsche 718 Cayman car. The SRS team saw Rensport Patrick Ruter at the wheel of the 227, 43rd overall for that car. The BMW M2 
is fifth in TCE. That's the Hover Racer by Bob Motorsport. The only car uh, running in the TC class, so currently leading the class, Alexander Schmidt at the will of the 331, and they're in 44, 45th place overall. And then sixth is the other BMW M2 uh, running in TCX. I think that's something to do with the, the power of that uh, car, 450 horsepower car, putting that car in TCX. Roma Racing, Johan Lembrex in the 245 in 47th, and still in the pits. And think possibly, I mean, I know it's worth, I said it's worth repairing any problems. The Wolf Power car, the 117, we saw the Audi RS3 going into the pits uh, quite a while ago now. Uh, maybe Dyke and pop along there to the 117 pit and just see how that is going, whether the, they've taken the decision to do whatever is needed. Because you know what, Bruce, with such a small field, there's always a chance of getting a podium when there's only five cars in the field. So that's worth, that's worth, and it is, hashtag, uh, this is endurance. It's very much the spirit of endurance racing. The challenges to get to the finish of any long distance race, where you finish is kind of, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but it's kind of a, an aside, really, isn't it? Uh, definitely is. Just while you were talking, I'd been mentioned just before that, mentioning the battle for fourth place. Charles Espinal in the CP Racing 85 Mercedes, just ahead of 27, Ian James, heart of racing Mercedes. Car catching them, but unfortunately, 40, 50 seconds behind, but closing fast is Herbert's Motorsport. I just wanted confirmation of that gap that uh, Lauren Hein... Heinrich was a, aiming at one of the Porsche Juniors, in fact, the Porsche Junior in many ways, having won a shootout at Aragon last year. We've certainly seen him doing a lot of racing in lockdown. He was a, one of the stars of uh, the digital Nürburgring Langstrecken series, which was a fabulous digital platform. And since then, he's just going from strength to strength. But let's go down to the pit lane to hear what Dai has for us. You were just chatting there about the 117 Wolf Power racing car, and I'm here outside the garage, and it's definitely not uh, continuing in the race, unfortunately. The car is um, parked up in the uh, garage area here, and the drivers have both um, left the circuit, but I understand they're coming back a little bit later, but there's no chance that the car will continue, which is um, a, a real shame for them at this early part of the, of the race. So is there anyone there to tell you exactly what's failed on the car, Di? No, they've, um, they've all gone for the moment, they've but gone I understand for lunch, they are coming they? back. They've gone for lunch, haven't they? <laughs> um, but as soon as I get an update from them, I'll let you know. And right. as I'm just saying that, the number 26 um, Audi's just come in, and that looks like a full service. So you've got the wet tyres ready and a driver change on that car right now. So that's Erwin Bastard there from uh, Di reporting on the second place, overall second place car into the pits for full service. Of course they'll be coming back, it's beer tasting this evening. It's part of the programme here this weekend. Was that not last night? That's tonight, I'm sure. Hold on, have I Is missed it? it? I, think, I think we might have, it's possibly a good thing that we did <laughs> miss the beer tasting. And that might be tonight, you're, you're probably right. I woke up full of anticipation. Saturday after race part one. But anyhow, much more to look forward to between now and then. Sam de Jong is still banging in really quick laps. Slower lap from Erwin Bastard because he finished it in the pit. So the car that was running second, the Santelok 26 Audi reporting for a pit stop. It's been a good stint. That means Patrick Kropinski, unless he dives into the, the pit lane as well. He was about, oh, how many seconds behind? He was about another 15, 16 seconds behind Owen Bastard. No, he will stay. He will be promoted to second place. Charles Espinal still ahead of Ian James. Great scrap. Just half a second between those two Mercedes. One car that's really going super well, leading GTX. Paulius Pascovicius uh, for RD Signs, that Lamborghini. He's in 11th overall to lead GTX. The next car in class is Raphael van der Straaten, the VDS Mark car, down in 23rd position. So, advantage very much. Uh, for, in the GTX battle to so the car 720. But let's go down to the pits. You're just chatting through the 26 coming in, uh, running in second for the driver change in full service. Owen's just jumped out of the car now and I'm able to have a, a chat with him. Um, a challenging first start to the race here at Spa today. Yeah, it was a bit difficult at the start of the race with the Pro-Am car behind, a bit lighter than us, so it was difficult to defend in straight line and then the rain appeared so we had to manage for some laps stay on track wait for a code 60. Um, we didn't pit at the code 60 or at the end of the code 60 so we just had time to change tire no fuel but yeah it was enough the pace was quite okay on the rain uh, with wet tire so yeah pretty happy second place still in the same lap than the leader so we will see what happened with with my teammates. 
How important is it for you to be managing all of that as it's going on, you know, looking at the pace of the car, managing the traffic out there on track and the changing conditions? Yeah, that's a bit tricky because some guys are not on slick tires, so they're losing the car pretty much everywhere at every break. So we have to pay attention to breaking the tire and adapt to drive style and overtake where you can and where it's safe. From this perspective, right at the start, some really good driving out there on track for the start. Yeah, the start was a bit uh, tricky, but <laughs> I, I, I did my best to stay on track. And it's a long race, 12 hours, so we have time. Just play it safe and at least Phoenix the six first hour in the same lap than the leader is already good. Well, I'll let you get a rest. Good out the chat to you over the weekend. Thanks. Owen Bastard there doing a very, very good job in very, very tricky conditions. He's just uh, coming now from the race lead, the Red Ant Racing 992 class leader. The overall race leader has dived into the pits. That means, as providing he doesn't come in, Patrick Kaprinski, nine seconds down, will take the lead in the JP Motorsport McLaren. It's a good moment for Nick Damon to jump in to the commentary box. Nick, you got wet early on, but <laughs> largely when it was wet, you left die down in the pits, and now you're in the warm and dry of the commentary box. Ever, ever the chivalrous man, yes, absolutely. I've, I've, I've left die to um, to enjoy the uh, the excitement of, uh, of, of, of the weather, and there was a lot of weather out there, um, even fog now and swimming, but, uh, yeah, it's it, it, yeah, absolutely sheeted down, and I was very pleased I've managed to get in, and uh, it's raining again now quite heavily. So we're going to get more weather coming in, more uh, question marks about what tyres they're going to use, and more excitement. It is far, far wetter than it was when Nick put his bottom on the seat alongside me because it's suddenly at the top of the circuit, very wet indeed. At Bruxelles, the cars are struggling to stay in. They're trying to turn right, 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 but the dry-ish line is on the inside. Slip wide, and it'll be goodbye. Well, Bruce, you now have to make the difficult wet transfer furniture from the back of the paddock to the uh, the area for lunch, which gives me the chance to welcome in uh, Mr. John Hindoff. John, how are you doing? Good afternoon, Nick. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the typical Arden weather has played uh, there, played its part, hasn't it? The weather card. Somebody, somebody ruled a six, <laughs> as you used to do in the old Grand Prix. Uh, board game and uh, that's incident and it's come up rain and then not and then rain and then not a number of people uh, Nick and possibly this is a good chance to bring people up to date asking how that Red Ant racing car with Sam de Jong actually managed to get to the front of the field because the pit stops were pretty similar between that and the GT3 cars and you'd think as a number of uh, correspondents to at RSL underscore studio have mentioned okay, you think the GT3 cars would be better when it was wet because of the uh, because of the additional downforce so how did it get to the front of the foot okay Joe, uh John, sorry, 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 we've got um, we've got uh, Di and she's actually with Sam right now Yes, I am with Sam right now, and I just heard you, John. Good afternoon, and uh, I'm with Sam. John Heinhoff was saying, how did you get that to the front of the field? Uh, by pushing. <laughs> no, I knew uh, we were starting a bit more on the back of the grid, uh, 24th place, and I, I didn't think that was the realistic position for us after quali. I mean, it was for everyone a gamble yesterday, so it was fine. But I knew in the beginning I, uh, I could probably push and uh, find some gaps. Uh, and I did, and I took some risks because I, I needed the track position uh, to get into my rhythm and to give uh, in the pit stop to give the wheel to, to Philip, to our second driver. So, yeah, I was just pushing, but actually only in the first laps. And after that, I could really manage the tires, and it was fine. But once the rain came, that was, wow, that was a, a hot moment. Yeah, tell us how easy that was. More than you would imagine. I mean, uh, in the beginning, it's, it's perfectly drivable. You're actually surprised by the grip the, the six are giving you. Uh, but once there's a bit of standing water, there's just like, yeah, zero grip and uh, you start to flood. Uh, so the Porsche is becoming more like a boat. And uh, yeah, coming to, to the bus stop here, it's super tricky. I only, almost lost it and then going uh, into Radion or Rouge, the same. So I was, I was on the radio with my engineer like, guys, do you really want to stay out or do you want to pit? But uh, yeah, in the end, it all was 
fine. And I'm guessing, you know, managing the traffic at that point as well, with everything going on and the changing conditions, because there's a big grid here this weekend. Things happen, don't they? They're out of your control, but all you can do is your best. I mean, that's the job of the driver. I mean, uh, I think all the mechanics and the staff, they have a much tougher job during the weekend, but during the race, the pressure is on our shoulders. And uh, I think for sure, for pro drivers like myself, um, of course, it's key to stay on track. Uh, that's our job. And if you stay focused, it's perfectly, do perfectly doable. And sometimes you have to put the ego on the side and, and be smart. And how much do you sort of talk with your engineer during each lap? Well, almost none. So uh, this is a personal preference. I don't really uh, need it. Uh, I'm, I'm by myself. And the only thing I need to know if, if, if the rhythm is good enough, if it needs to be better, if I can just yeah, lay back a bit more and, and, and manage the tire. So that's the only info I need in regards to our direct competitors, and that's it. How would you describe the Spa circuit from a driver's perspective? Well, the mo most beautiful one in the world. Um, of course, I'm Belgian, so uh, that's easy to say. But in general, I think that the fun thing about Spa and the, and the tricky thing about Spa is that it's, it's always changing. Uh, the conditions, uh, the, the weather, you can never predict. That's a factor. but. Even just the track layout, I think in every car it's it's a bit different and it needs different things, and but it's always on the limits. Uh, and I think in the end that's what drivers uh, like the most and what they enjoy. Um, thank you so much. I'll have to tell you though that my commentary team decided to put me out when it was wet. <laughs> I think that's a bit unfair, don't you? So how did you manage that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Diana Binks down in the pits and the weather up on the Camel Strait getting worse, the visibility getting worse. You can barely see halfway down that straight from Le Combe. And these are the conditions for which this circuit is absolutely famous. <laughs> and this is where concentration, Nick Dearman, comes into its own. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. Uh, I say yesterday we thought we had four seasons in one day. I think today we've had 11 so far. Um, <laughs> the, so, well, I think one thing that's quite interesting, it, it, it doesn't always come out on the cameras, is that the this front straight here is very heavily diamond cut. So they've got uh, long grooves yes. cut right across the tarmac, which actually helps dissipate the rain. So actually, it, we see some spray. But at other parts of the track, which are aided by both the, the rise and fall of the circuit, the hills, the amount of water it holds is, is, is incredible. And of course, this circuit knows it's going to get wet, but they, uh, they still have to work with it. And it, it's, it's more of a challenge. It's more of a, of a thrill. It's more of a real pain in the backside for the, strat the strategicians. And that's quite yeah. obvious by the fact that you know, who we've got leading this race is not who we'd expect. Because at the moment, people are all over the shop where they are on pit strategy, on driver strategy, on tyre strategy, which makes it very exciting. Because we're going to get to this six-hour mm. mark and the freeze, John, who will be on the same lap, who will be on a different lap, who will be nowhere near where they thought they were, who will have hours of fast driver left, who have no hours of fast driver left. It's really exciting. Four hours, 16 minutes at 24, 23, 22, 21 seconds to go. And we are back to having the top half dozen, the top six, as GT3 cars. Red Ant Racing, after that stop, to put Yannick Redont in it, is in seventh and leads the 992 class by about three and a half seconds from Rick Breitness, who's burning a bit of his time in the number 909 now. Still red, but sort of red and multi-red uh, for Red Oof. Camel Jordan as... We have a yellow flag for the 7 or 2. This is the Vortex, and it's gone off heavily. This will be, I think, a code 60. Laurent Mischbach, 6th in class, and 36th overall. The, the purple flags are out, and hill. this is coming up from the tricky uh, Eau Rouge corner, but he hasn't even made it to... Hasn't even made it to Radion at the top. He's hit the wall quite hard. And that car's been turned around. And we've got intervention vehicles on the truck. Oh. Not safety car, remember. We seldom do that. The flatbed is out there as well. John. And uh, Tyre making its bid for freedom, going back down the hill towards Orugnik. But, John, that is a Vortex, and that is a wheel rim that's come off with the wheel braking again, just as they had one in Mugello did that. Now, whether that was a result of it hitting the wall uh, and then it fell off, or whether it failed prior to that and that caused the accident, that is the wheel question. Wheel centres. Yeah, the wheel centres. Wheel centres. We've had... 
We've had a couple of those because we had the CP Racing do exactly the same, if you remember. Mm. Yeah. So um, as as well. Obviously, what what can be called? What can be It was left. It was less left rear. I remember that they had the problems with on uh, on the cars at Mugello. Um, but that that remember as Nick brilliantly has uh, just pulled out of the metal filing cabinet that is his brain, and it's exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. The wheel centre has pulled out at, at the spot where the spokes go into the wheel centre. So when we see the car, we will see the remnants of that with the wheel nuts still attached to it. That is extraordinary. Now, is that a machining problem? Is that a batch issue? Is it the fact we speculated on this, Nick, did we not? at Mugello that perhaps it hadn't been put on correctly mm -hmm. and it was putting that undue stress on that part of it because you remember they had so much trouble tightening the wheel nuts up at one stage. Yeah, that, that to me is old fashioned, what we would call metal fatigue. Now, the only the only caveat from this is whether it, it pinged against the wall and then that popped off, but it didn't seem to have any damage yeah. on the outside yeah. indicating that. Now, it, is, it looks like the left is attached, so if it is, it'll be the rear right that's gone, so it's slightly hidden uh, on that camera shot by a, a uh, yeah, marshalling board. Good point, board. good spot. But, yeah, but the point about it is it does sound, uh, I, at this point, you know, it's one of those things where you have to kind of almost ground all the vehicles, don't oh. you? Anyone using those wheels, they've obviously got a fatiguing <laughs> issue there. How can they, uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm sorry, if they know it's a batch, John, they have to go, right, we can't use any of that batch anymore. If yeah. it's just what they are, they might even have to make a decision not to go out anymore. Yeah, good point. Uh, one of the 992 Cup class Porsches there, I think uh, that was... No, I'm not going to say it because I, I didn't actually see uh, the number on the front of the windscreen, but has clearly been grass cutting recently because there was some <laughs> fresh green grass in the middle of it. The Code 60 is out. This is our fourth Code 60 uh, for about... Uh, what, 15 minutes, nearly 16 minutes uh, that we've had under code 60 in the first hour and a half or thereabouts, getting on for two hours, isn't it, now, of the race. Opportunity for, for cars that were somewhere near a pit stop to get in. Quite a lot of the leaders had already done that, um, although we've seen... Uh, the JP Motorsport McLaren that was leading the number 69, Christian Clean, yeah, your old drinking buddy from uh, <laughs> Petit Le Mans a few years ago when he was the, the, a the, the Peugeot look, driver. The look on his face when I walked up to interview, he was like, what on earth are you doing here? <laughs> very, very I know, much. that was both ways, wasn't it? I know, really? yeah. what are you doing? He's well, been in and out. Lauren Heinrich for the Herbeth number 91. That's one of the two 992 GT3Rs that's in. Moderna Racing has the, the other... Uh, version of that. So I reckon Ian James, Heart of Racing by SPS, is leading this motor race now uh, from CP Racing, Charles Esplanade, um, uh, and uh, Charles Putman, of course, with a suspension of his ring permit hanging over him from the uh, qualifying weekend after blowing a cord, uh, a cord 60 slow zone there by some margin. Just missed it. Um, so that could have repercussions when we get to the Nürburgring in a few weeks' time. Full live commentary from Thursday onwards. We'll have Midweek Motorsport from there on Wednesday. And then live in sound and vision. Many of the drivers that are here this weekend in the 12 hours of Spa will be heading the 90 kilometres or so south and east to from the Arden to the Eiffel. And into the pits for Vili. Motors by EB Motors as they come to get a bit of fuel as well. The chrome red Toro racing car. Now, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed. Uh, see, you look at the list, but even with 50, never mind 135 or whatever it is we have for the Nürburgring, there's always someone you miss, but I recognise the Toro uh, racing uh, livery from Porsche Carrera Cup Asia. Mm. Uh, also, I noticed Moderna are running one of their Porsches in a very similar livery to that which John Shen runs for them in Carrera Cup Asia. They had their first round at Sepang a couple of weekends ago, including some uh, wet weather running and some darkness running yeah. uh, as well uh, for them there. They had the, uh, the evening race. Right rear is ripped asunder from the 702. Now, what are they going to say? 
That's the 702 Vortex. What are they going to say at the 701 Vortex? Well. And that... its driver as they're out there. Yeah, and there's a very busy, busy first pit. position for... It's a very busy Sorry, pit lane. Ahead. And uh, Dai's got... Uh, I think she's been into Vortex. She also gives an update on the movers and shakers who've been coming down there. Dai, from Vortex... Yes, the 701, I've just been into the garage and, and spoke to the team manager and they lost radio contact with the driver, but the driver has um, is out of the car. I think you may have spotted that while watching around, you know, when you're looking around the circuit and can see him. But he couldn't tell me any more than that because he's not been able to speak to the driver yet. Thank you, Dyke. And as actually we were in the pit lane, as you, as you rightly say, lots of cars coming in, um, coming back up the pit lane. It was quite frantic a few minutes ago when I was inside the Vortex garage, but now I've come out. There's been a number of cars just coming in to uh, change drivers and change tyres. So I'll make my way down the pit lane now to find um, who I can speak to who've just jumped out from those sessions. Very quick one, Dyke. We're seeing windscreen wipers on, but is it actually raining in the pit still with you? No, it's stopped. OK, cheers. And, and actually, it's cleared up a little bit. I mean, there's a couple of drizzles, but it's nothing like it was, say, 15 minutes ago. Thanks for that. Thanks, Dyke. So, the Supra back into the pits and the... Um, I was going to say the front cover coming off, but that is actually the bonnet. That is the engine cover on the Supra, of course. Sharing a platform would be dead for. But with their own engines in that car, their own engines in that car so four for now 20 minutes let's give you a quick rundown heart of racing ian james have come in from the lead and is fueling up the mercedes amg gt3 the number 27 charles esplanade has followed him in and done exactly the same thing there's about 13 seconds between them when they came in uh, to the pit lane just having gone out christian clean for the mclaren of jp motorsport herbert motorsports lauren heinrich uh, and that's the number 91 car and share sport PHX for Elia Earhart. That's the Audi. That's now the lead Audi after we had Audis 1, 2 and 3 in qualifying. A very damaged Vortex. And that might be done. I know how hard, Nick, the guys from Vortex work, but I think that might be done. I'll quickly run through the classes before we go back to green. Red Ant, 903 in the 992 Cup class ahead of Red Camel in the 909. Good comeback from Red Camel as Evo Breukers has been installed into that car after it was facing in the wrong direction and pretty much dead last at the end of the fir first lap. In ninth overall, RD signs uh, Lamborghini Huracan number 720 leads GTX. And in GT4, it's TCL by AR and Gary to Clavers in the BMW GT4. That's the G82. That's the newer shaped BMW because G comes after F. <laughs> um, that's the only way I remember it anyway. The 488, they're down in uh, th 32nd position ahead of the Atlas BX Motorsport. Uh, Taken Yang in the Mercedes GT4. That's the 403. In TCR and therefore leading TCE, Wolfpower Racing, Yasmin Preisig out in the Audi LMS TCR number 121 from Real Keep by Todkar. Jorge Belloc Diaz in the Cupra. And in third, Holmgard Motorsport for the Cupra Leon competition. That's the 102, Jonas Holmgard guard in that and in tc the bmw cs racing 365 horsepower alexander schmidt huffer racing by bonk they're saving a car for the nurburgring but they're bringing a lovely i think he said it was an a46 Six. didn't he yep that they yeah uh, and that's the 331 and those are your class leaders as we are under purple uh full course purple with the Vortex now on the back of one of the DAF flatbeds. There is a cutout just over the top of the brow on the Camel Strip, which is where that uh, truck will go. He has to reverse in, but then he can get in through the interior roads. Front right, left rear. Front right is still attached, but broken. Left rear, Nick, I'm afraid, has been completely ripped off at uh, that Vortex. Lots of work if... And it is a big IF. That car can even well, come back. Well, my guess is, as it went through the compression over route, obviously you do turn left, which puts the pressure on that right-hand uh, rear t wheel. That's when it failed. The car would have spun around and, and done the, uh, the front and the rear into the barriers on the left-hand side mm. uh, going up the hill. I, 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 I genuinely, and I'm not trying to make trouble here, I genuinely think that Vortex needs to have a think about this. Um, even only financially. I know the driver got out and he's absolutely fine. Those cars are very tough, big, tough space frame cars. But... You know, that, that's two. 
And that's two within, what, three racing hours, four racing hours that have gone. Because the other one went towards the back end of Mugello, and this one's now gone in the first couple of hours of this event. So I, I think that's, that's very worrying for a team. For those who follow such things, we've had six different races, uh, leaders of this race, up until when Ian uh, James popped into the fuel and pits for Heart of Racing. Greg Newell, by the way, has taken over that car. Uh, before that, it was JP Motorsport. Red Ant led for a wee while in the Cup car. Then Santalot Racing Team, Share a Sport, and, of course, Haas RT led the first uh, 10 laps or so after... that uh, McLaren almost dwarfed it certainly in width well that vortex has been in both sides there's uh, paint from the tyre stacks and on the left hand side of that uh, vortex as well uh, and I can't see that one I know that they work really hard now I say that it is a proper racing car uh, and therefore uh, and therefore um, corners can be unbolted and rebolted it will be down to what's in the middle about to go back to green shortly i would say let's just check in with diana binks in the pit lane where the weather seems to have passed over uh, diana and things if not clearing up at least the rain isn't falling anymore as we come to the end of this code 60. John, the rain, you're absolutely rec correct, John. The rain's not fully down here, but it's still a little bit grey. I have to say, I think the wind's picked up slightly because all the flats are now moving much foot more than they were earlier. Um, I've been up to see the Vortex team, but they can't give any update at the moment. I know the car was making its way in the flat pack, so they want to look at it, but I think you have pretty much covered that. I don't think that will be back out on track. Um, tried to get another update on the 117. Wolf Power Racing, but again, still the car is parked in the garage, not even working on it. So um, the team manager will be back a little bit later, so I'll be able to get an idea of what actually happened there from them. But the pit lane has gone a bit quiet at the moment. And as I say, it's, uh, the wind's picked up, but not raining yet. Yeah, I think the, uh, the 117 is done, I'm afraid. I mean, they, 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 they could have fixed it. They've got a gearbox issue. Um, and that's a big, a big job with the TCRs. It's engine out effectively, uh, get the gearbox off the side, put a new gearbox in. And at that point, you are just praying that somebody else has a problem, which therefore means you can actually gain some positions because you're going to lose an hour, an hour and a half. And I suppose I mean, they, they could, I suppose, if, if they want to take a leisurely repair over the course of the... Uh, of the, the, if we go back to green, take a leisurely course over the, co the repair of the evening and then just come out for the six hours, the second six hours with, with another 10 lap penalty if they want to get more time, if they want to get more hours under the, the belt at Spa or perhaps if they just don't want to spend the money on the uh, car hours, they will call it a day and just feel very, very um, hard luck. not uh, Charles Putnam is not listed next to that car I think he's had his license suspended uh, possibly an opportunity for Di to have a wee word uh, and find out what their plans if any are uh, towards that four hours to go first two hours of 12 four hours to go today we'll put effectively the whole field under Park Fermi conditions uh, overnight and anything bar full laps in terms of gaps will disappear and here's how they stand at the end of that first two hours it was heart of racing by sps came in at exactly the right time managed to just about hold on to the lead in the 27 mercedes ian hanging uh, handing over ian james handing over to gray newell with shane lewis now behind the wheel of the 85 cp racing car Christian Clean in third position for JP Motorsport for the 69 McLaren, that gold 
20s herbeth and lauren heinrich in fourth position then the battle for the 992 category evil brutus red camel racing uh, leading in the porsche class ahead of the second place car which is red ant racing now so that's a change uh, since that uh, since that uh Code 60, Red Ant dropped down to ninth position overall and second in the 992 class. So we run through, down through to the bottom end of the top 20. E2P Racing in 10th, Land in 11th. Modena Motorsport with the other 992 GT3 car in 12th position. And I've just realised Francis Cheers in that car as well as John Shed. John from Vancouver, but both of those drivers uh, from Porsche Carrera Cup Asia this year, which is in fact a Pan Asian Championship. HRT performance is uh, R, should I say, at 15th and 16th, and third and fourth in their class, uh, fourth and fifth in their class, should I say, the 992 category down into the bottom end of the top 20 more of the GT3 Cup cars with the 967 HRT the Porsche Baltic car the 992 running in the 75th anniversary multicoloured livery Black Falcon in there as well that's 6th, 7th and 8th Santa look a bit further back I think than they would like Paul Everard behind the wheel of the number 26 in 21st position a lot of cars to get through here so we'll rattle through the leaders in class gt x is gt3 portland that's fifth in class for the gtx category their leaders by the way is still the uh, other lamborghini up in 15th position yucca racing down in 30 seconds it's another audi the lord is still running fourth in class as well in gts uh, I noticed there. Boogie Ra Racing, fourth in GT4, uh, which is led at the moment by TCL Motorsport in 33rd position, then Atlas, then Lion Speed. So they're all quite close together, actually, in 33rd, 34th, and 35th position. Top 40 completed by Swift Rate, seeing that's another GT4. That is the Toyota Supra. Good to see that car, Peter Dennis. Vortex 701, Oliver Gomez was driving that car. He's out of it, it's on its way back. PCR Sport and Speed Lover, the 979. Speed Lover, a, a multiple pit lane and garage caller early on in 43rd. So that's how it stands in GT. In the TCE categories, Holmgard Motorsport leads for Cupra. It's Jonas behind the wheel there, ahead of Yasmin Pricing. So they've swapped over uh, as well uh, in the full course purple third is the cupra of tot car the really keep car zorg rensport hoffer roma and wolf power for your top seven in tce and in tcx it's team zorg rensport that leads hiko eichberg at the wheel of the 227 Porsche 718 and in TC Alexander Schmidt for the BMW CS Racing uh, 331 is the leader in TC and that's your live results at the end of two hours for the TCE Touring Car Endurance part of this race John Heinoff and Nick Damon with you and the clock counting Ever closer to two o'clock Central European summer time. And the vagaries of the Ardennes weather continues.
triple techs. But really, it's about it's about survival and staying on the lead lap. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we've got to stop on the fact that one of my favorite, my, my favorite cars, which is the, the Audi uh, TTS. Uh, that is stopped on the track. Is at T5. I, is, I think that's top of the hill, I, isn't that? I, I think that's the exit of the pits uh, uh, towards ah, the top of Radion. Right. I would say. And he's, um, he, he used to call the AA because he's just got out, lift the bonnet up. So. Looks like, he's, looks like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> in all honesty. Um, so. We've got a yellow flag for that TT. As you were musing about that, whether that was an old TT Just wondered, Cup car. Yeah, I don't I'm, think it is. Because you, you, you saw those guys racing, didn't you? On the, on the, I think, did you get, didn't you get offered to go in one, I think? Or, or, yeah, because you saw them racing certainly when you did the TTM I did. Years, didn't you? I did. It was a support race. In fact, I'd been here to Spa and was going to the Nürburgring 24, and it was a support race on the Grand Prix circuit for the Nürburgring 24. And the car that I was meant to drive got written off in the previous <laughs> race. Which um, you did that? It was, it was, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to mention who it was. It was a car journalist, but I'm not going to mention who it was. Um, but the, uh, the up, it, was, it must have been four or five, no, it must have been five years ago, so I just got the 968, brought it here at the spa, had all the kit in to do the radio from... Nürburgring, plus my race gear, plus even ice kit for you know uh, two weeks in uh, on the on the continent, <laughs> and I got offered some some track laps around here, which as you know I'm not big into into track days in cars, but I thought if I don't do it I might never get the chance, and on my very first turn around as we were released by the safety car in the last source, I went into it. And very nearly ended up in the pit wall to the right, <laughs> and it was all, all down to the the 968, rather than uh, rather than a skill of Hindoff, I have to say. Um, but uh, that would have been bad. Still, it didn't put me off enough to have another go on the Sunday when it, the track was a bit quieter, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, yes, I, I, yeah, I don't think that is a TT Cup car because of the rear arches. There was a couple of of TTSs that were built for. Um, for the Nürburgring oh. and the NNS races. Oh, we're back to Code 60. Must be, that, can't, that can't, obviously uh, probably isn't at the end of the pit lane, then it's probably is somewhere on the side of the track. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was wondering that? really, because the reason I, I suppose that is because I couldn't work out, and you're probably going to tell me now, what that car would have been built for. It's obviously not GT3 spec, so I was kind of working no, out, it's and, it's not. Not, and it's not GT4 spec, so I couldn't work out why someone would have built it unless they had converted it from one of those celebrity cars. But, you know, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just a guess, really. There was a few of them, as I say, that were built for NLS uh, racing, and I can't, for the life of me, remember uh, the name of the team that did it. Uh, but I don't think it was Land, um, interestingly. We were running that one for Christopher Tiger, who um, is the driver who's out of the car. Um, obviously, he was earning his stripes earlier on in the... Yeah, yeah. and he had breakfast. It was great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> exactly. Great. Now, um, also what I can't remember is whether that's a quattro um, or not. Um, that's the other thing that I remember talking about. Johnny Palmer would have remembered this because we talked about it for ages at an Nürburgring one year um, about it, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, car 967 uh, is the has been called... Uh, for overtaking, and that's the HRT Performance 6th place 992, Amadeo Pampanini, uh, overtaking outside the track. That'll be a 10-second penalty, uh, by the way. And the uh, also the teams have been reminded uh, to park their cars properly when they come into the pit lane because there is a little row of... Uh, uh, row of cones uh, that blocks off the rest of that old endurance uh, pits. So we uh, obviously the Creventic team are up and about and talking to their teams and their managers. And the code six is a great chance to find out more about the team that was leading only a few minutes ago, Red Ant Racing. I am Bertrand, and uh, I am the team owner of Red Ant Racing. 
and we have uh, here two Porsche 992 Cup cars. For most people, it's uh, the section of uh, turn number uh, two and three, Eau Rouge and uh, uh, Redion. That's uh, a, a very dangerous uh, curb, as we saw last week in, uh, in a race there. Uh, several cars crashed over there, so you need to be on the exact uh, thin line there is at uh, more than 200 kilometers an hour. So that makes it very challenging. And it's also a track, it's uh, in the forest, goes up and down with fluent curbs. It's a very, very nice to drive. And uh, I don't think there is any circuit like it in the world. Yeah, for us it was the first time we won. Uh, out of the blue, <laughs> we weren't expecting that, but uh, we took the victory home with pleasure. Uh, but now we are much more prepared and we know what to do. Uh, that doesn't give us guarantee that we will win, but uh, last year was certainly a big surprise for us. Me in uh, every case, uh, I don't have pressure for that. Uh, it's a race like all other races uh, and I don't think other uh, drivers or other cars are looking at us as uh, the reigning champions. It's uh, a race you need to drive. It's a very long race, all the ra like all the races in Creventic, so anything can happen and you need a bit of luck. Uh, and last year we had uh, a lot of luck also, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, so don't think that adds any more pressure than the normal pressure you have. My, my two sons are driving in the 903, but I will not be driving this weekend. We have three gentlemen, uh, two gentlemen and uh, a very quick driver on our other car. Since this is our home race, we want to do uh, the best we can with both our cars on home turf. That's why we have two very fast uh, dri driving uh, trios on both of the cars. If one uh, doesn't succeed, maybe the other one. Yeah, I, I, I threw it out there. We've got the answer. No, that obviously is what the car is. It's an ex uh, Nurburgring machine. I'm sure probably available at a reasonable, quite cheap price. It's got nowhere else to race. Um, when have they got any more than we can buy? Sorry, we could get. <laughs> so, still working now our fifth code 60, and we have the answers on the TT. Number one, thanks to Mark of Baronswad, it's at the uh, runoff uh, as if it was going straight on down to the old track at Le Combe. In fact, if they'd opened that, those gates, there is a great cut through. Uh, and at the WEC last weekend, one or two people have been a bit fast and loose with that. Notice the Iron Dames did it a couple of times in qualifying, trying to get position and uh, not have to slow down for Le Combe. So thank you to Marco for that. And between Right Turn Lover and Jera Serks, um, Raider, Raider Motorsport have been running those TTSs in the VLM. And they were built by Rotec. Of course they were. And they are, as we speculated, front wheel drive. Right, this will set off another set of pit stops. And um, Paul Trustwell, Nick Damon, has decided to bring in the class leading Red Camel. 909, despite the fact that Evo's only been out four laps. Well, it's, it's all about fueling now. And I think, that, that, yeah, the, there is a point here now where you want to have as much fuel as possible to give yourself as much flexibility with this weather as you can. Um, so it's even more important to be full, full tanked if possible. So it just means you can go a bit longer, you can come a bit earlier. Um, yeah, we've also got uh, uh, the Audi Sport, Sherry Sport, uh, Phoenix Audis in with Ella Earhart in the pits. You've got uh, E2P Racing, Matthias Besch at the uh, Sports Out at the fuel station. Uh, and Shane Lewis at CP Racing has come in from third place, um, and it is still overall, it's great new and heart racing SPS from Christian Cleaning JP, JP Motorsport. But those problems early on for the Lamb Motorsport 55, and of course for our kind of pre-race pre favourites, the 21 of Haas RT, has thrown it wide open. They made that mistake of coming in, John, on that first, or sorry, that second Code 60. One for a problem, one just because they admitted it was a mistake. And it takes a long time to get back, especially in these conditions, and especially with so many Code 60s. Yeah, and, and working out where um, where they are uh, in terms of their strategy, it, it, we're back to the athletics analogy, aren't we? And the the four by four hundred meters relay, where the stagger doesn't unwind until, mm. in that case, two hundred meters into you know they stay in their lanes until two hundred meters into the second leg. Well, here, the stagger probably won't unwind for the first part until the end of today. Uh, and, and then, really, you have the direct race tomorrow. 
Yeah, I mean, the question really is some of those real, as we go back to green again at the end of that, because one of those gut teams of people who are going so quickly at the start of the race must be thinking the back of my, oh, perhaps we can get a lap, perhaps we can get a lap in a lot of the field. They're actually now a lap down, so their fight now is to get back on the lead lap before we uh, we close the play this evening at, uh, at 10 to 6. So they, they haven't got to try and find an entire lap tomorrow because, yes, they're quicker, but with the multiple talented teams, they've got so many hours with their top drivers. You know, getting back a lap is not the work of the moment, even for a Phoenix or for a Haas RT. So, Gray Newell leads the motor race for Heart of Racing. Ian James having not raced for quite a long time at Spa, some quarter of a century, he's been here twice in two weekends. He did a great opening stint, and despite the number two on the top of the heart of racing. No, JP Motors should be ahead. So that's a change back to the McLaren. So where's the number one? Uh, the number 69 car. Slightly conflicting I think they had in to formation. Probably have to finish the lap, I think. Well, they've both got, uh, yeah, I think they had to finish the lap and then it, it should sort itself around. The gap was a couple of seconds and now, yeah, if you look on the, as the sectors pop up, uh, Christian Clean is leading yeah. by a couple of seconds from Gray Newell, but it's got to unwind as it actually go past start finish in about um, 45 seconds time. Yeah. I fortunately do have uh, a screen that shows me things changing by sector times. I keep forgetting to look at that one and that's why... I am uh, confusing myself. Uh, so settling down into the middle portion of this race as we are 43 minutes, or well, thereabouts, away from half time today. The race starting a little bit earlier tomorrow. And do you do it? Are you going to do another uh, Nick yeah. walk tomorrow? I, I am intending. I think, uh, we, we, as we saw at Mugello, it's slightly more uh, truncated because not everyone always comes out to celebrate. I mean, one thing I will say is that, yeah, it was, it was glorious weather, really, but they had a, there's a really good crowd here. And they had a lot of people on the pit on the, on the pit walk who were enjoying themselves. We had families and, um, you know, a lot of people in, the, in full Red Bull regalia because we are obviously uh, very close to the, the home of... Uh, uh, well, actually, this is, of course, this is his half the home of Max Verstappen, of course. He is, of course, who has a Belgian mother and a Dutch father. And so there was a lot of Red Bull support, a lot of uh, kids who are getting a, an introduction to proper multi-class racing uh, and getting a chance to see the cars up close and personal. And there's, there's several people sh in the uh, grandstand. Interestingly, John, they're obviously locals because they, they know to sit as far back in the grandstand as possible because then even when oh, the wind's yeah. going the wrong way, you don't get wet. See, that's good local knowledge, isn't it? it is. That's very good local knowledge. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. But yeah, so. But ah, the, very the, good. There are, there are, it, I was surprised. We came, when we drove in today, there were, there are, there's a lot of people around who are enjoying. Well, it's obviously a free, it's a free event, which is fantastic. And it's, uh, and, it's uh, yeah, and they've been certainly being intent. I'm sitting thinking we're only like two hours, 20 minutes in. I can't believe how much has happened. <laughs> we managed to keep. Four Considering how much racing. Sorry, uh, Nick, no. Con considering how much racing there's been here in the last couple of weekends, there was a huge crowd here for the WEC, one of their biggest crowds ever over the three days, which was Friday, Saturday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so th there's been plenty, and there's still a, a keen, um, enthusiastic support for particularly, I think, long-distance motorsport. Now, did I hear Diana down in the pits there? I, I don't think so. Um, Diver oh, was okay. you shut up again, but I didn't get that in my ears. But then again, you know, yeah, old age, who knows? <laughs> I have voices in my head so often <laughs> nowadays. Um, <laughs> oh dear. So yes, yeah, so, so three hours and forty-eight minutes to go. Sorry, Nick. Come no, I was just saying, it, 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 you know, we get, we're lucky enough to get some, some, some long shots, which you, which you obviously have watching, we've not seen, but it, it looks like you're viewing through fog as they come up the Kemmel Strait. It is, you know, that, the water just hangs in the air, it can't go anywhere, it's trapped in by the trees. So that's why, and then you get this weird situation where you've got a bit of rain someplace, a bit of spray, and it is obviously now beginning to dry. There's a pretty, it's, the sky is looking 
lighter over now on Starfish, and we're getting a, a decent breeze. So they're going to start getting in, into the issue which uh, Paul Trussell spoke about on the grid, where you've got three, he said you've got three laps on these tyres before they destroy themselves once they start running any sort of dry conditions. They're very, very soft wets, the hand goods, apparently. Um, it's, uh, there's not much you can do. Oh. Um, let's go down to uh, Diana Binks, who uh, is in the pit lane, who has now just uh, popped up uh, in my ears. And it is with whom, Di? I am with JP Motorsport, and I'm with Patrick Kapinski, who um, started the race here at Spa. But let me just take you back to qualifying. Obviously, you didn't achieve what you wanted to in qualifying. Started quite far back on the grid, but really pushed your way through that grid to run at the front. Yes, in quality yesterday, we have a bit unlucky day. We have a tire puncture and not finish, not one time left. But at Spa is my favorite track. It's for JP, the home track, and uh, I enjoy to overtake the car. The car balance is really good, and uh, yes, I'm optimistic for the future, for the for this rest of the time. I mean, you, you really did come through that pack. You managed to, the cars, the traffic, and then of course the race with the conditions out on track. But as you say, your favorite track, that's where experience comes from. I cannot understand it, it was loud. Yeah, I know, it's a bit noisy in the pit lane, I'm so sorry. Um, that first stint obviously really pushed the team forward during this race. I know there's a long way to go, but um, how was the manage, How did you manage the traffic during that session? It was difficult because I have a lot of slow car in front of me and um, a lot of people, they don't look it in the mirror. It was not so easy. We had uh, sometimes small contact, uh, but yes. The car is still okay, <laughs> and we're at the front. <laughs> well, you know, a long way to go yet, but yeah. was there a sort of strategy plan from the team going into the race after that qualifying? Uh, I have no idea, I'm not the engineer. <laughs> I'm sure you talk to your engineers then. I'm sure you talk to your engineers. No. no. And when are you going back out on track? Uh, in the next thing, the, the next thing, I'm back in the car. Very much, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I I like the fact he doesn't talk to his engineers. Leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I don't think that's really what you should be doing. To I think you should be talking to your engineers, especially in weather like this, all the time. And I can see a dry line, by the way, John. Now, as I look out the, uh, the commentary booth window to my right, a dry line in the braking area uh, for uh, La Source. So people are going to have to start making decisions about tyres because they're going to start turning into globules of goo rather than effective methods of propulsion and turning very soon. Nick Damon and John Hindhoff in the Global Broadcast Centre for the Hancock 12 Hours of Spa, part of the 24-hour series, solidly into its European run now. Now, back into the pit lane for the Rotec-built TTS, this front-wheel drive car, and... That looked to have just run straight on at the end of the Kemmel straight. Diana is looking at it. Can't see any major damage here. And the bonnet was pulled up by uh, the driver, Stefan. Uh, yeah. No, it wasn't Stefan, was it? It wasn't that land car. Um, it, 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 well, the, the, I think this might be mechanical, Diana. I think it is. I think you're correct, John. There's no obvious damage to the car. I'm just taking a bit of a look around now. I'll just go around to the other side, which is in the pit lane. But no, there doesn't appear to be any damage. The team are now putting it on the trolley jacks and taking that in to the garage. It's just come off the flat track in front. Um, but yeah, it looks, I mean, there's a couple of scuff marks on it, but nothing that is obvious now. Um, there's a lot of gravel clearly in the front that they've just taken out and there's that's now out in the pit lane but let me try and see if i can grab um hello it was christopher sorry, tiger who was driving was chris. it chris yeah. chris sorry about that um it looks like there's not any major damage was that oh, an electrical crash. i think the turbo ladder gave up the turbo gave up yeah so we have oil in the 
Engine bay, I think the turbo broke. It's a two-hour fix. Engine needs to come out. It's not good. <laughs> no. The not team will get fun. to it, though, I'm assuming. I think we're going to repair it. Still a long race, and we're here to have fun, so we go out and have fun. I mean, it's disappointing at this early stage for that to happen to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's very disappointing for us because we are running well thus far. Also, in the in the rain, we're doing well, so... But that's the way, that's what that's racing. So now we're going to repair it and we go again. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. That was Chris Tiger, Christopher Tiger, who was in behind the wheel of that car. You get the feeling there, Nick, that uh, that might not have been the first time that this has happened with that car because he seemed to know straight away when he looked, uh, he went straight to the engine bay and opened it up put the bonnet back down again and basically called for recovery. Yeah, I mean, I see it's the five-cylinder. He's turned up, he's gone, oh, there's no power. That's a turbo issue. He's probably crossing his fingers. It was a pipe that had come off. And then you see a big puddle of oil. You think, ah, right, so the turbo, um, some part of the turbo in innards have uh, completely uh, munched themselves and it's now spewing oil. So that's... Uh, uh, I'm surprised that the turbo is a two-hour change. I see it must be the location of it, because most of the turbos are on those uh, Audis that are relatively easy to get hold of. I've seen them change turbos, the biggest problem is letting them cool down, to be honest. Um, but I suppose it must be underneath and, and hidden in this, this more race version of the car, job because it, it, it often it's one of the easier things to change, because it's, um, it, it's a kind of like a, a bolt-on device that's just across from the, uh, the manifold and on the exhaust, but um, must be hidden. But... But of course, it's a transverse engine uh, yeah, yeah. in in that car because it's the front wheel because it's the TT and it's a front wheel drive. So I wonder if it's actually behind yeah. the engine, if you will. I, I don't know. I should really know that because that five-cylinder in line five is one of my favourite engines ever. It makes a great noise um, and a single turbocharger on that. But if the if the oil seals or something like that have gone or it's ingested something you can um, ingest bits of the um, yeah yeah the rotors could go uh, the bits bearing. of the filter yeah the, yeah. Got the, the other thing I was thinking about that of course like we, we have seen that engine very regularly in the Preventic series but yeah. in the back of a KTM correct um, in various states of well tune made. some of them over tuned if I'm honest with you but <laughs> various stages of tune in the uh, in the clamshell KTM and we've, uh, we did, did, we've got uh, we, have, we have had the uh, Razban racing Raz, Raz, Gap, Raz Dan racing team with their KTM for the last couple right of races. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, yes. Uh, they're not here this week. I'm sure you'll the, rejoin the series later. Um, we had a pretty good um, Kuwait from them with that car. And the, the latest version of the, uh, the KTM Expo or Crossbow. Uh, yeah, and they, they use both the four and the five cylinder engine. The old uh, EA Triple Eight is the four cylinder. Can't remember the, the designation for the five cylinder, <laughs> but that was the, the one that went into the GT2 version of the crossbow as well. Um, I did say we'd mentioned Alan Prosser, who is uh, getting ready to open up the pub. Uh, and he's got us on, on his laptop or in his uh, pad, uh, iPad type device on the top of the bar at we, the moment. We must be getting close uh, to the crossover. Gin and tonic for me. <laughs> we must. Be, you have that. We, we must be getting close to the crossover now because the amount of dry parts of track and light coloured track I can, we can see now, I can only assume they're going to run it out now until the tyres can take no more um, and just try and get it as dry as possible. But realistically, I would think, certainly if you came in now, you go on slick. And my guess is a slick shot car would at this point be quicker. Uh, than these cars on the old wet. But now, we're, now we're playing tactics, now we're playing well, where we can go on tyres. They're probably hoping is there a chance I might spear off and we get a code 60 for a cheap tyre change. Christian Clean has been out for 11 laps since he took over the JP Motorsport Gold Macca. Uh, Lauren Heinrich, 10 laps, actually 11. They double, they double dipped, didn't they? Because they came in for both. Uh, no, they came in at the beginning and the end of the last code purple, full course purple. Uh, in third place, the 27. Why can't I see the 27's pit stop? Hang on, have a look. See how long they were in. Four and a half minutes. Uh, Gray Newell got in right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So they've been in for uh, 10 laps as well. Out for 10 laps, I Yeah, I mean, it's a case really at this point where I suppose you have to work out where you are 
it's probably I think he ran the extra laps a better bet in saying that in comes the 34 which is the uh, what was the car collection number of course but now being run by Land Motorsport even though it's a lot of our old, old car collection uh, racing friends there including um, uh, Max Edelhoff back and Dr. Yannis Kirchhoff I think it's Tim Vogue who's the third driver in that one and then looking at the uh, the shape of the driver I think that's Dr. Dr. Kirchhoff getting in um, Max, of course, I'd is, agree um, with that. Max is a is one of the slicks. There, yeah, that's the. It's the only answer. It's the only, the only decision now. Max Abelhoff, of course, one of the fastest of the young drivers who's kind of grown up with the series, and only raced occasionally now because for some reason he put his career first. Can you believe that, John? <laughs> Honestly. So the 34 Kehofer Gruppe blue and white car with a set of steaming Hancock slicks coming off. Uh, uh, wets rather coming off. I tell you what, though. They'd, they'd hunt together very well. Were they hot? Yes, they were, but not really any big sign of scuffage across the tread blocks, which is what you'd expect to see if they'd overheated and, and those tread blocks were melting a little bit. So maybe spot on time for them, Nick yeah, Dermott. Less, less chewed than I was expecting. Examine yeah. tyres. I must admit, there were less chewed than I was expecting to see, though, although we didn't quite see whether it was a front or a rear that came off. The rears were really suffering. But yeah, the, the track is, you know, when you look at it, um, is apart from this top end of the circuit, the bottom end of the circuit is still grey, uh, so there is water sitting on there. Not the sort of water that actually would, would trouble slicks as far as having an accident's concerned. Uh, a little bit of spray is still coming from the back of some of the cars, especially when they go slightly offline. But the racing line effectively now is dry, um, or always dry enough for slicks to be probably six to seven seconds faster than the wet. So if you look at the, you know, the wet times are 16, 15 seconds off the speed and we've been talking about uh, Land Motorsport, we're talking about car collection, we're talking about the uh, the star who is Max Odenhoff. Well, Diana is going to have a quick word with young Max himself. Di, off to have a word with Max, give him my best. He's, uh, he's just uh, having a quick drink as we walk out of the garage because as you saw and we're talking about just pitted. Um, Max, it looked like the perfect time to do that pit stop. Looking at the tyres, they, they looked in good condition. Uh, yeah, that was very tricky because the tyres were very hot. Uh, maybe we should have done it a little bit earlier, like one or two laps before. But um, yeah, you never know. You expect a little bit more rain uh, in a few minutes, but it didn't come. So um, we decided to yeah, uh, continue this in with the rain tyres. How would you summarise that session for you out there on track, managing the traffic and coming through the process? Yeah, it was quite fun in the rain at the beginning. Um, at the end, it was very difficult to, uh, to search for the red tracks and the red points to cool down the, the tires. Um, yeah, and I had a little bit lack of, of the space on the track, so I could drive a little bit um, yeah, faster maybe than other. And uh, yeah, but it was a great team, a uh, great, great uh, lap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, your teammates and your team as you came into the garage were all very happy um, so they obviously feel you did a great job yeah at least the car is still in one part uh, i think that's uh, the best uh, situation for us and uh, the speed was also too good um, yeah but i don't know where we are so uh, <laughs> i'm able to bring the, uh, the car in one piece back i mean it's incredibly challenging isn't it these conditions but it's to be expected here in Spa. Yeah, uh, we had a little bit of luck because we uh, had rain uh, on Wednesday, so we tried the rain setup uh, on Wednesday. So for us, uh, we got used to the track, and uh, for, uh, it was great to drive here. Thanks, Max. Thank you, too. <laughs> Alan Prosser has just sent me a picture of the gin shelf at his pub. Um, Hang on, that where, he's where, at is at the moment. where is his pub? I've just asked him that. We need Sorry, to know where that is. A, a, a collective is trip. He, yeah, is he at a pub or does he own a pub? Because if he owns a pub, well, he's certainly working there. in a pub. Well, 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 yeah. This is, this, this is the key information we need. Where is it? How could we get there? Will the beer still be cold? Or in your case, will the uh, ice have melted in your gin? Depends how far away it is, really. <laughs> um, he said, Which gin would I like? And there's a big gin section. And I said, I'll start on the left. <laughs> Seems reasonable, doesn't it? The leader I once tried to do that at a Polish vodka bar in Bir at Birmingham. It didn't end well. Uh, leader has come into the pits. Christian Klein, um has... That's a bit early for his fuel, Stick Nick, but I suspect tires. that's tyre. Yeah, as, yeah. As, he, as he rolled away from me, and I'm, I've got a beautiful view out towards the Formula 1 pit exit, not pit exit here, because he's both parts of the pit, like the old pits and the new pits. You can see the stickers rolling around on the rear tyre, so obviously they've gone into slicks, pet Christian in the car, he'll now pick up fuel, um, and rotating to the top is some 
a bloke called Lauren Heinrich in the Herbert Motor. Lauren, of course, yeah, an absolute Porsche star. And uh, again, you know, Herbert at the top of a uh, Creventic leaderboard. That's a surprise. Well, actually, do you know what, though, Nick? It is a bit of a surprise, considering what they've uh, what they've been through in the last 18 months or two years, isn't it? Because they haven't always been top of the pops. Although, what you might say is they've had the pace, they haven't had the reliability that for so long we absolutely associated uh, with them. Yeah, they've not really gone out due to accidents, they've gone out due to incidents, which is different, and, and mechanicals. And, they, and, and you're absolutely right, John, it's, mm. been, it's been a surprisingly poor Certainly, yeah, from the beginning of last season, because for a lot, of, a lot of last year they were running a second Porsche, but the 92 car, uh, and that car was invariably finishing ahead of what we would call the main car, um, just because they couldn't get a run. And it's not down to anything, not down to pace, and it's not down to uh, you know, uh, throwing off it or into someone. It's just down to the fact they just, just couldn't get the car to roll. And a great example is, you know, in Mugello a couple of weeks ago, um, they were leading, and also they were, they were the leading light of the, in the, and the AM class quite easily. And then just, I think it was uh, Ralph Bond just ground to a halt with a total gearbox failure. When does that happen in the Porsche? Yeah, never. Although it did allow them to get some mileage into the new car, which was helpful as well for Kravetnik to get some data. Uh, Alex Prince, Alexander Prince, uh, into the pit lane in the Hofer number 11 Mercedes. Uh, that was out of fifth in GT3, sixth overall because Red Ant Racing, Yannick Red Ant, back out. Those 992 Cup cars do go a very, very long way. And I'm indebted to Tom Marshall, like he's over in Ohio, who's tweeted a picture to at RSL underscore studio. And he <laughs> he's tweeted me a picture of his TT RS uh, engine beer. I understand now <laughs> why the engine's got to come out because the uh, the turbo is hidden away down low. Did, did they never, the did, did the they never consider a fast turbo change in an endurance race when they designed that car? Honestly. Mm, indeed. So. Well, anyway, I, uh, be indeed lovely, so. lovely interview. I'm going to hand back to Mr. Bruce Jones now. So Nick Damon takes his leave as tallest member of our team shuffles back into the global broadcast center also hello to jerry z in florida who's tuned in under three and a half hours to go so into the last 20 minutes before half distance today we've had just about everything let's go through some of the class leaders for you at the top lauren heinrich leads for gt3 for the 91 herbert then the red ant racing 992 cup car uh, and that is in third position overall, as we've got a couple of stoppers uh, at the JP Motorsport and CP Racing cars have come in uh, out of third and fourth. Uh, Hoffer in fuel at the moment. Where's our next leader? GTX, Nicola Michelon for the Lamborghini team. That's the RD signs, number 720, 12th position overall. Second in GTX, 16th overall, 758 VDS Racing Adventures, the Mark II V8 Mustang. Nathan Van Springel driving that bright red machine. In the third position in GTX, 9 und 11 Racing, or actually 9 und, und 11 is what they say. Ralph Irma uh, in 719 as another cup car comes in. This is the 10th place Black Falcon, the GT Silver and Yellow car. Check out another class leader. TCL Motorsport by AR. BMW M4, that's the G82, the new shape car. That's the 488, 31st, and leads GT4 ahead of Atlas, Bugida, uh, Bugira, excuse me, and uh, where is the fourth? Lion Speed, Jose Garcia in the Porsche. TCX and TCR battling it out in the TCE part of the race. Holmgaard, Jonas is still behind the wheel of the... Cupra number 102 from Yasmin Prysik, who's been in there for about an hour as well. And the 121 Wolfpower Audi. Then the really keep by top car, Jorge Belloc Diaz for the 123. And the TC is the Hoffer Racing by Bank Motorsport. That's their leader, Martin Kroll, behind the wheel there. Bruce, 
I did I did you a disservice. You bounded into the, <laughs> the Global Broadcast Centre. I did, full of anticipation, wet track, dry track, but it's spa Frankishon. Quick pit stop for lunch and uh, full of enthusiasm all over again. But every time, John, I look at the racing surface, like the drivers, it's just slightly different, isn't it? It's so hard to gauge. But admittedly now, even with a few windscreen wipers going as the cars go up the crest of the hill at Les Combe, it's so tricky to read. It, it's odd, isn't it? It's more. This reminds me of, uh, and uh, I mean this in, the, in, the, in a, a really positive way. It reminds me of old-fashioned racing on places like the Nordschleifer and the long version of this track here at Spa, where uh, you didn't know what the grip level you were going to have each time you came to a corner. Nowadays, racing drivers at every level expect if they do the same thing every lap they're breaking the same place they turn in at the same place they put the throttle on tyre technology car technology is so good that if you do that you will get the same result except when it's like this so these guys are much like the Sir Jack Brabham and the Sterling Moss who were drifting cars around every lap whether it was Formula 1 or sports cars and you know, this track in particular has always been a haven for sports cars. You guys were talking um, in qualifying about the 1970 race where for Formula One, where the, the speed was at over 150 miles an hour, and the sports car race, this, the six-hour race that year, the 1,000 case, was even quicker still on the same circuit. This, I think this is brilliant because what we're seeing here is drivers having to drive. Entirely so, and I just wish I was marginally older so I could have been to see the Porsche. Porsches with Pedro Rodriguez at the wheel, blasting through oh. the master kink and then turning right on that lightly banked corner down near Stavlo and coming up. It must have been absolutely mind-blowing. That said, the first time I saw an I-17 with the bodywork off, I, I went, oh my word. Just that little tubular body, body work, bit inside the bodywork, absolutely frightening. Driver's feet, what, about uh, 30 centimetres behind the nose of the car? I sat in um, the, the Solar 917 from the movie Le Mans, and, of course, it was in Kevin Jeanette's place down in Florida, and, of course, I slid the thing backwards and forwards, and I could hear the music in my head. And I, I got out and I said to Kevin, so uh, when are you going to put the roll cage back in? <laughs> <laughs> and he sort of looked at me, and, and I, because it was like, uh, I couldn't describe it, it's about what? Not even half an inch, maybe a third of an inch uh, across the tubing, and I thought that was just there to hold the bodywork, and the roll cage was, was to go back in because the car was being worked on it. No, that's it. And I was like, I am so pleased I don't have to raise this. Yes, I, I thought I, I absolutely exactly the same thing. Mean. Extraordinary. I mean, light is good. I mean, it was Colin Chapman's mantra at Lotus, but uh, they were quick. But uh, you can imagine, particularly the drivers in the very, very early days uh, when that car, just after that car was uh, put on the track for the first time, some of the drivers didn't like it. Some of the drivers declined to continue. But when it worked well and the drivers were had the full grip of the thing it was a phenomenal car very different of course the cars we see racing here but of course all the drivers still having to do what you were saying john they have to see what is in front of them feel through the seat of their pants the palms of their hands what grip they're finding where they can turn in and again it's all a learning process so heart of racing don't say aston martin do say mercedes top of the time <laughs> charts there but still that brilliant run from Red Ant Racing, but it's Yannick Redon now up into the lead of the Porsche class, but in second overall. So Joe Bradley also bounded back into the commentary box. <laughs> the order has been shuffled, but only to a certain extent. Only to a certain extent, and we can see that changing, Bruce. I mean, you know, since we went for our pit stop for lunch, we've had a, the, the track has changed completely. We left a very wet, damp track, and now we've got certainly, certainly, and part of this track, full dry conditions, and this is to the consternation of tyre choice, tyre decisions, and of course, just add in the complexity of when you're dealing with different levels of ability and experience from your drivers, you know, two, three, four drivers per car here for this weekend. You've got a lot to think about when you're trying to engineer these cars to get through this 12 hour race. And when you see how this is forming up now, I, I'm, I'm, all right, I'm, I laid all my cards on the table, earlier by saying we could have a 992 win thing when win this thing overall i'm still going to see it that's a very big possibility 
Well, let's find out what is happening down in the pits. I've caught up with Lipo at Motorsport, the number 10 um, Lamborghini Karong Lee. You started the race today, so I'm not giving you an update of what's happening in the pits at the moment, Bruce, but Karong, you started, did a great session out there for you. Good drive. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Uh, it's quite a hard for the race, but you know it's far. The weather is always kept changing. And uh, I brought in the slake. I remember I brought in the slake. And uh, this life, everything is good. Next life is fully wet. So we decided to box earlier and uh, to retire out. And uh, right now, it looks like it's uh, keep changing. It's going to dry again. But uh, we already checked the radar. It's going to go in wet again. When I, I'm going to do another double thing like uh, one hour ago. So uh, it's, it's hard. <laughs> You said at the beginning you were sort of, you know, not apprehensive, but you were un unsure because of the weather conditions and how they would change, and they changed enormously, but you handled it incredibly well. How important is that learning experience? Yeah, because uh, we're doing the Smart One F4 this year, so basically it's back to, oh, it's back to uh, uh, it's, it's it's pretty great, and uh, for us this is like a practice race, and uh, we're just trying to do well, trying to get at as much as that we can to, to running like lap by lap and I mean this is part of race and it may happen in the 24 so actually it's good for us so I mean it's, it's good practice so all the weather conditions we, we all face it so yeah let's see but uh, we just I mean be safe and uh, have fun you know Karong, thank you so much. No doubt we'll catch up with you over the weekend. And as I leave Karong, guys, I've just got to say, it's just started to slowly spit with rain in the pit lane here. It's a gathering pace um, as we speak. Of, of course it has, because we're back. Bruce and I are back in the booth for the remaining three hours and 12 minutes. We're, we're 12 minutes away, Bruce, from the, the first quarter. And it, I kind of feel we've had so much drama and incident. I feel like we've had a 24 hour race already. We haven't, we're just coming up to the three hour mark with another nine hours of this remaining. And as Dice just said, here comes the rain again. Check the windscreen wipers around the lap. Are they flapping as the cars turn into Le Corb? No, they're not. Are they flapping as the cars come past us? Not quite yet, maybe a handful. In fact, as the cars go down to Bruxelles, that's the sort of right-hander, and then further on down the slope. Actually, where they are using them, Joe, is at, uh, right at the bottom, at the lowest point, unusual. That's Campus and Curve Paul Frere. Normally, we see them at the first point of the rain comes in, tends to be around Le Combe. It comes at the top of the hill and then gradually works its way to the pits, but uh, they don't have a, how should we say, a, a, a right to have the rain up there. We also get it here at La Source at the end of the lap. Or you could look at it the other way around, the start of the lap, but right now, a little drizzle in the pit lane, but... Uh, Corners like, yeah, the windscreen wipers are on for the drivers as well when they go through Eau Rouge. So, yes, it's pretty uniformly around the circuit now. Some cars moving around as well. The number 21, winner in Mugello of the Haas RT Audi. Just uh, back in the race, a little bit down the order, somewhat in 18th, having just been into the pits. Uh, just like the leader, the heart of racing, I did say Aston Martin earlier, didn't I? But we were off air, so that was allowed. Uh, it's the heart of racing Mercedes, of course, Green Newell at the wheel of the car or having just taken the door. I'm not sure he's going to stay in the car. We'll see soon when he leaves the fueling area. That car we've just had glimpses of. Meanwhile, flip-flopping through the pit stop phases, and we're going to see this all the way to tomorrow afternoon. We will see various cars and teams taking over the, the top honours in there. 992 class leader Yannick Redon in the Red Ant Racing Porsche 903 numbered car back to the front of this overall lead and I'm, I'm going to say Bruce I can see this going all the way through to tomorrow oh you really really can but even as we speak while you were just talking there Joe a couple of cars including the 929 Porsche driven at the moment uh, let me see that was Mikko Pano who started it it's Kari Pekka Laksson and a fellow Finn front end washing out so he was trying to do that bit called turn in at Bruxelles when you don't turn into Bruxelles you carry on across the curbs gravel trap barriers on the outside tire wall but that just that moment we go it's okay I'm okay no I'm not okay and there was a car going down the inside and you can just see how quickly a race could come really unraveled it's a, it's a downhill sweeping right hander it goes through 180 and it's kind of double apex because you kind of hit the first apex let the car go at the middle of the road and all you have to do is take in maybe a slight you know 
five miles an hour too quickly and that corner sucks you to the outside. It's as if gravity is not working and the gravity pull, the magnetic pull is to the outside of that corner. You can lose loads of time there. And as, of course, the track conditions begin to change once again, it really is a big, massive headache for not just these drivers, but for the engineers. They're taking in all of that information. They're, they're taking information across the, the pits to car radios constantly in a race like this. Usually, you let your drivers settle down and relax, but you are going to be fed information all the time about it's raining here, it's not raining there, it's I've got grip here, I've got grip there. But also, you, you have a driver change, and the, the driver going in hasn't seen the track, they've seen it on the monitor 10 minutes before they got in the car, but their first interpretation, if you've got one driver, the weather's changing, he, he or she has got the constant appraisal, but a new driver getting won't have known what it was like the previous lap, so their question mark about how wet it is and how they like it or don't like it and is uh, certainly a different answer. And just let's add into the mix. We learned uh, earlier on yesterday for that uh, from Paul Truswell, who's the strategist at Red Camel Jones, the 909, Luke Broikers, younger brother and, uh, of Rick and son, of course, of Evo. He's never driven that car in the wet. I would have lost money on that. I mean, but he hasn't driven that car in the wet. And he was really, really worried, understandably worried, and a little bit concerned about just what the car was going to feel like, because he really he didn't have any clue whatsoever what the car should and shouldn't feel like. And what also did uh, Paul Truswell say down on the grid when interviewed before the race by Nick Damon? They'd rather it was one thing or the other. That's everybody thinks that, Bruce, yeah. You know, absolutely clear to be said, but it's it's flip-flopping between the two. What's happening at the front of the field? We just uh, wanted to check who was going back out in the heart of racing Mercedes, and it's Ian James who started the race. A 16 lap stint from uh, Gray Newell, so back into the hand of Ian. And in interesting dynamic, I've just noticed there. Fourth place overall, second in 992. So we've got two 992 class cars in the top four, but the 930 numbered car currently second in 992, fourth overall. That's HRT performance. What Adam Christopher doing? Now, we're, we're more commonly, if you listen on the RSL network, uh, especially the NSL coverage from the Nürburgring series, Adam is a, is a massive AMG Works driver for the Nürburgring. Here he is in an HRT Porsche, and he was harrying the Daniel Alleman car, the Herbeth Motorsport car 91. He was harrying that car ahead of him. And, uh, and, and we saw that the, uh, that, that gap has, has kind of closed, and that really shouldn't be seen. We shouldn't be seeing that. No, I think these mixed conditions have really, really given a helping hand to the Porsche Cup class. But uh, right early stages of the race, that HRT number 930 Porsche that uh, Adam Christodoulou is in that was being driven increasingly well by a driver who hasn't seen the circuit before. One of his two Chinese teammates uh, who races under the Martin, his name is Jin Ji Shi. He did an astoundingly good job, and that was the, the building stone. And the third driver will go into that car, presumably in the final third of this six-hour half of the 12 hours of spa Francorchamps, that would be the term of Eric Zhang. But uh, they are learning as they go and getting everything put in front of them in terms of weather. A uh, quick update for TCE as we've got the number 416 GT4 class Mercedes into the pits. Now in 33rd overall, currently 3rd in GT4. While they have that pit stop, let's have a quick look at TCE. Currently, currently, and we're seeing a flip-flop again. Uh, we're seeing this in the GT classes. We're also seeing it in the touring car classes. So the touring car endurance part of this race. Home Guard Motorsport now leads. That's the number 102. Uh, it's, um, it's Jonas Home Guard at the wheel of that car. Second place. And as I say that, Yasmin Prisic, second in the 121. That's the Wolf Power car, the Audi RS3. Third is the SRS team, so Sport Porsche 718. That car is actually in the TCX class, third overall in TCE. And then fourth place car, uh, that's the Rail Keep by Todd car. Now we've got Dad in the car, Jorge Belloc Diaz at the wheel of the 123. Currently 40th overall in that car. And then further down the order, currently 44th and 45th, we've got Mara Mercury in the 245 number, Roma Racing BMW M2. That car in TCX. And then we've got our sole TC class runner, and that's the ever present Hofer Racing by Bob Motorsport, Martin Kroll who I think Nick spoke to uh, earlier on. Car 331, 45th overall. Right, it's one on the door and one in the position because Pierre Kaffer's taken the Shearer Sport PHX Audi into the lead. It was second, but Yannick Redon has just pitted the 903 Porsche Cup class leader and original race leader 
for Red Ant Racing. He's reported to the pits for a quick stop. That's uh, pit stop number three for him. But, Let's uh, head down to the pits where we've got uh, Dinah Biggs. What you got for us, Di? With Thomas Gosner, who's just jumped out of the MP racing car. Unfortunately, we're right under a speaker, so Thomas, he can't really hear me, so we're just going slightly inside. He is OK? Yeah, great, thank you. So he can hear me this time. Um, a great stint. How was the traffic out there, and are you satisfied with where you are at this point in the race? Ah, yes, no, it was very nice. Uh, we had a little bit slippery, but no, no problem at all. Traffic was fine. And, uh, no, no, good to be here again after this rain. I could tell, you're, you're full of smiles. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, great race. A lot of tra there's a lot of traffic. There's a big grid, which is fantastic for, for the 12 hours of Spa. So are you enjoying managing, navigating your way through the grid? Yeah. I, I didn't understand you really. It's too noisy here. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you enjoying racing here at Spa? I am enjoying very much. It's one of my favorite tracks, I tell you. It's beautiful here. It's beautiful. It's very nice. And you've got a great team with you? Yes, very great team. All my family is here. Me with my three, two daughters and one son. Now Corinna is out. And it's a big fun to, to race with the family, I tell you. It's the best what you can do. Thank you for chatting to us. Sorry it was so noisy. Thank you very much. Well, very good to hear from Thomas Gosling. They're great to have a family team, but one team that's having an, or one car that's having an awful run. Land Motorsport, we had Christopher Meese challenging for the lead. Tim Muller then followed up, but Stefan Weininger has just put it off at turn 13. That's the second part of the Fania sweepers. It's the left-hand part just before we get to campus, and we are code 60 because it's stuck in the gravel. Did he fall? Was he pushed? Still waiting to find out, but conditions so tricky. They look My fault all that, you know, Bruce. It is your fault. F I, explain for why. Well, at breakfast, I said good luck to Christian Land, and that car is having a nightmare. A nightmare. We we had a, they had a nightmare with that car at Mugello. They had to take a ten lap penalty in the interval between the split race, and once again we're seeing that car bestowed with without any. The, the saying is, if it didn't have any bad luck, it'd have no luck at all, and that seems to be the case for the 55. I'm wondering why uh, Christian Land reacted like that, got you in a headlock for wishing him good luck. Now <laughs> I understand. I joke, of course. Doing the scramble deck. But uh, unfortunately, tail in towards the barriers, but uh, stuck in the gravel at the second part of Fania is that number 55 Audi. I was about to ask you whereabouts on the track that was, but you've just answered that there, Bruce. Um, so we're going to have a flurry of pit stops, I think. If uh, I mean, we've just had uh, into the pits the Yannick Redont driven Red Ant Racing. That's the current 992 leader, was the overall leader. It's just uh, relinquished that to and given that back to the Pierre Caffer now driven Shira Sport with Phoenix Audi. Car number one now taking the overall lead. Yannick Redon gone straight past the pits and into fueling. Has to go around the inside of the La Source airpin on the pit lane. And then the refueling biz are on the heritage pits, the historic pits on the downhill towards Eau Rouge. And as we wait for that car to go back out on track, it's now Kobe de Broeke at the wheel of the 903. And we see that 55 being dragged out there by the intervention vehicle. So that, that's not going to be uh, as long a code 60 as we perhaps thought, Bruce. The car already onto the kerb and almost onto the track, onto the tarmac of the track. However, he's pointing the wrong way. We'll soon rectify that, of course. Pointing the wrong way, and no doubt, unless he's very careful, will drop all the gravel that he's gathered in the, the any point on the bottom part of the car. And let's hope he doesn't put it at the apex of the next corner, which is the right-hander at Campus. And uh, the car very quickly recovered. And you do have to take your hat off to all the rescue crews around the circuit. And when the rain starts to come down, it's not that they haven't seen it before, but it's just a question of how much where are the cars going to come three abreast in the corner? Is someone going to end up in the gravel? But they've done a very good job to remove that 55 Land Motorsport Audi from the gravel. It was 33rd position after previous problems at the time of the spin and is off the top screen. We're very nearly at the halfway point in this race. So while a few front runners are in the pits it's the number one car in the number one position it's Pierre Kaffer at the top of the timetable for Shearer Sport PHX and this was a car that slightly struggled at the start it started from third on the grid fell back a little bit as the the big guns like Christopher Meese came through but uh, it's right there 
in the lead of the race by well, a tidy margin, nearly three minutes over Daniel Alleman, who's not long ago taken over the Herbert Motorsport 91 Porsche. Then come, even though, well, in fact, Adam Christodoulou now in the pits, but he was just in fourth, becomes third again as we have this Code 60. The pit's suddenly going to become very busy indeed. But what we need to know is Pierre Kaffer is leading this race. First overall, now second position, in fact, I think will be Daniel Alleman in that Herbert Motorsport Porsche. But the pits is busy, so let's go down to die. Yeah, I'm with Line Speed, uh, the number 427. Jose has just jumped out of the Jose Garcia has jumped out, out of the car. Um, you were sort of mid-pack when you brought the car in, but how challenging is, is this event been so far? Well, it's been it's been uh, very interesting. I mean, Spa is always a challenging track, but then when you throw in the un, un, you know the, the weather, it's you know uncertain. We have some rain. We went out on rain tires, but then kind of halfway through my stint, it got dried up. We decided to not. We decided to come in, but then we decided not to come in at the last minute, so we stayed out in rain tires, and it actually did help because it started raining once again. Uh, so it's it's really uh, unpredictable, and that's what makes uh, Spa so beautiful, right? Yeah, and you've got to try and read what's going to happen, but that's sometimes just impossible. Yeah, there's, and there's a lot of cars that have different strategies. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of GT3 cars out there on slicks, and they're struggling around those corners. Uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, the TC cars are, you know, you know, with the front wheel drive, sometimes can be a little better on the rain. So, um, it's it's great to be race for so many different classes and categories and different strategies. It makes everything very interesting. How would you describe Spa as a racing circuit? Well, I mean, I, I love Spa. I mean, I've, you know, our home circuit is in the Nurburgring, Ring, so clo the closest circuit to the Nurburgring Ring is Spa because of the weather, the Eiffel Forest, the unpredictability of the weather. Uh, it's a very fast track. Uh, the average speeds are a lot faster than your traditional, you know, Formula One track, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Good to hear there from Sergio coming over from the States to play and find Jose Garcia sharing with Patrick Kolb, who started that Lion Speed GT4 Porsche and Daniel Miller, but uh, all part of the experience. But everyone has been enjoying and maybe sometimes not enjoying the track so much. But PB Racing, we looked at their glorious Lotus at the start of the race and they've been having their share of fun out on the circuit. Yeah, well, it's a Lotus and in full Lotus tradition. Uh, they are, you know, they, they will always have an eventful and dramatic endurance race, but it's, uh, they're a great team and they're very, very Italian. They're, they're very, very Italian down there. Stefano Dasti, uh, Stefano Dasti is uh, the driver that's be the main, their superstar driver behind that uh, operation. And uh, it really is a great atmosphere. It doesn't matter what's happening to their race. It's a great atmosphere in that garage. Very, very dynamic, very, um, what's the, very vocal, very, you know, it's very Italian. It's full of brio, it suits the car. The Lotus leads from PB Racing. Um. I'm Federico Leo, we race with the PB Racing, in, with the Lotus. It is the all in the world, and uh, we will race in uh, the GTX class. What I, I saw until now, it is really, really organized very well. It is impressive, a lot of cars. I hope to do better than I can. The car is really, really nice but uh, it is a prototype. It is the only one, so we have to battle against the issue, the problems, but uh, Stefano is really, really a good driver and a good uh, team owner. It is my favorite track. I know the track very well. I raced it until uh, 2006 with the Formula Renault, Formula 3 World Series, and then a lot uh, of years in GT, and what I can see, there, there is a lot of passion of the fans, is, uh, you arrive here, you feel the passion and it's the most nice thing that you can feel. And then uh, the corners are really, really beautiful, like La Rouge is the only in the, in the world. I tried the car only five laps, but really, really impressive. It's not a performance like a GP2, normal, but there's really a lot of power in the, in the braking. A lot of braking, a lot of traction, and and the sound is uh, really impressive. I just told uh, Stefano in private that I think if uh, he would uh, decide to product them, to do them a lot, I think the future is uh, really big for him. Is delayed slightly from the overall lead of this race as he came in for fuel. Now, what is crucial when the Code 60 flag flies is the decision of whether to pit and top off your fuel is particularly governed by where you are on the track, and especially here at Spa, 
where lap times at the moment are in the you know two and a half minute mark. It was just uh, the 55 Audi has recovered. That was the one that put the gravel on the track. But the 920 Black Fork and Team Techstar Porsche. I was looking at the 55, and suddenly the 920 spun in front of it. They avoided each other, but that uh, is a car shared by Alexander Baum. We just had a Lamborghini go off as well, and I suspect we might have a little bit of splash of wind coming from there. The Lamborghini just getting it wrong, putting the power in, putting the right foot in a little bit too early, and spinning, pirouetting out of the bus stop chicane. The Marcars for Yates of the Van der Straten uh, team just taking avoiding action and having to go plenty of runoff there to get around it. But um, two cars spinning off at a pretty much exactly the same time at different sections of track, but connected. At opposite ends of at the circuit. At opposite ends of the circuit, Bruce. There. But actually, there, Joe, looking at Nathan Van Springle in the, in the VDS Mark car, when you go on the painted curb on the outside after a flurry of rain, it's not a place that offers a great deal of grip, and it'd be someone else's incident causing you to have one, but fortunately that red car with the wonderful white and, white and blue stripes, that livery that's been used since the 1960s so beautifully on all forms of racing cars, remained on the circuit and lives to fight another day. But these little moments come out of nowhere. Windscreen wipers on, definitely the top of the hill at Lee Cobb now. There's a lead change. The 91 Porsche of Daniel Alleman, the Herbert car, has gone ahead of Pierre Kaffer. Uh, just coming through Lacombe there, the 91 Porsche, as the number one Audi was just approaching Lacombe. So the Porsche, the Herbert car, taking over the overall lead while Kaffer was taking on fuel. So we wait for the timing screen to adjust to that as they come through. And it won't take that long, maybe another couple of minutes before we see that happen. Possible slight problem there. 924, the PK Car Sport Porsche, Belgian team, and Bert Longin uh, was the driver who kicked it off, but it's Sandstein's at the wheel at the moment, and the bonnet on that Porsche is bouncing up and down. One of the, the front left corner hasn't been properly put into place. So that's a distraction at the moment, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that, and no doubt the team will be look, be warned about that, because that, if it flips up, would uh, not be something worth considering. At low speed, it sits down, but at the end, at the top of the Kemmel Strait, it certainly was uh, flapping up a little bit. So that clip would have been undone for refueling. Remember, that bonnet has to come up. That's where the fuel tank is on these 992 Porsches. Rear-engined, very much rear-engined, behind the rear axle line on this uh, 992 Cup car. So that bonnet just hasn't had the clip. You can, We can clearly see an indication of what the problem is there. The clip has come undone or wasn't done up correctly. And the officials will see that, Bruce, and they may even give that car a mechanical flag for it to come in for attention. I did notice some of the drivers staying to the off the racing line at a lot of our corners, and I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's when, maybe when the rain is coming, the, the the optimum what we would call the textbook racing line is a lot more slippery. Just needing to correct myself. Left from right, right from left. It's the front right corner from the driver's point of view of the bonnet that's slightly loose on that number. 920 Black Falcon car. Axel Koenig at the wheel of that at the moment. He's the one. Facing a problem, but Daniel Alleman leading overall for Herbus Motorsport. You don't have to be Nostradamus to predict, even if they don't start at the front. They tend to work their way further up the order and get there, particularly if they're a series of Code 60s. They seem, with all their years of experience, the two Renault brothers, Robert and Alfred, just to know, know when to come in, when the pits are likely to be full. Might have just fallen their way, but it's happened so many times, you don't feel that's the case. So Daniel Alleman leading. Lap, last lap, 2 minutes 48. That's nearly 25 seconds off the ultimate pace, showing how tricky it is at the moment. But certainly at the top of the Kemmel Strait, it's full-on windscreen wiper action, so much worse than it is by the pits when, in fact, cars coming past, not all using their blades at all. Pierre Caff has fallen back to second place after just coming in to make that pit stop, and we haven't talked too much about the JP Motorsport uh, McLaren, started 40th, running in third. And led. Led Indeed. for a short while during one of the pit stop phases. So coming from 40th on the grid, and that McLaren showing great speed on the Kemmel Strait here and uh, on the run down to Blanchimont. Absolutely, uh, absolute flying machine. Very, very hard for the Audi R8s and the Porsche 992s to kind of keep on terms with it on the straight. Seems to lose a little bit out of the midfield section here at Spa. The 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 speed where the, the corners, the, the sweeps where you need a little bit of more a little bit more grip than perhaps the McLaren seems to have, but it's very, very slippery through the air. When conditions are a bit mixed, a bit half half as they are at the moment, I always look for the pace of the Santelot car. It's number 26, it's running in fourth place, but the best lap 
the last lap for Paul Everard was seven and a half seconds faster than Daniel Alleman managed in the race leading Porsche. So plenty of variation. Wow. But look at our top five positions. We've got Porsche, McLaren, Audi, Mercedes. A good mix of cars there. That is a mix. We've got pretty much all of our marks represented in some way there. Lamborghini's missing from that, uh, that list, isn't it? Down in 21st and 22nd positions. And we've got another spinner. It's the 967 off the track fortunately and rejoining just trying to debate where that is it's oh coming out of uh, speaker's corner the jackie x curve as it is now but it's full windscreen wiper action it's uh, down is that carrie peck Laxman? no it's amadeo Pampanini. oh yes you're right he'd been having a really good run up yeah. to that. i've been watching his times but code 60 withdrawn and just got caught out but luckily for him if you do rotate and go off the track if you end up on a piece of tarmac you've done very well and he did precisely that so was able to kick the car around and continue on his way. 967 HRT performance. Tricky conditions, slick tyres on a, an ever dampening track. And seeing the rain, it was falling very lightly with nowhere near the levels of rain that we saw earlier in this race where it basically torrented down. But at any moment now, we can go to that We're here at Spa. Wipers, windscreen wipers still being used on pretty much every part of this track now. So. At least it's consistent, Bruce. It's consistently damp is what we're seeing. And as long as it doesn't drastically change like we saw earlier, then the drivers can probably cope with that. Yeah, we see the odd off and half spin here and there, but uh, overall, that going up from two, I should say, 13, almost 14 seconds now between that number 91 Herbert car of Daniel Allen and Peter Caffrey the number one. Now with a full tank of fuel, having topped that up during the Code 60. Seems a bit brighter all around the last few minutes, and uh, certainly <laughs> you can't say that. Uh, why I haven't learned this over the years at Spa Francorchamps, but we go from full battleship grey to a little bit of uh, almost blue sky, well, white cloud, and now it's grey cloud, but it is a bit brighter. But just looking at the pace, wow, there's quite an advantage. The cars in second, third, and fourth all did two minute 49 second laps, and Daniel Allerman in the lead did two minute, just under two minutes 45. So that's a decent gain. He's nearly 14 seconds to the good over number one, which is uh, Pierre Caffer's Shearer Sport PHX Audi. But right now, I just want to see another lap from Paul Everard. There I was blowing his trumpet. He suddenly lapped eight seconds slower on the next lap. So, uh, well, it probably proves the lap times are getting worse because the weather's getting worse. And certainly every time you ride on board with a car, the windscreen wipers are on. Young Luke Broikers at the moment in 11th place overall. He's third in the 992 Cup class. Again, that's still very, very good, bearing in mind that car was given a spin on the first corner of the first lap of the race. First time in the wet as well for Luke Broik is that car, the 909 car, sporting the brand new livery for the Red Camel Jordans team. And Luke being very, very sensitive indeed, just keeping out of the way. Is that the leader? It's the race leader. And yeah, you know, keeping out of the way the leader. Pulling out of the way, and that was at Campus. So not only did he spot Daniel Anneman coming, but he, he went offline to let him through. And that's often where you come undone, particularly if it's just a little bit of a dry line appearing. But in fact, you know, just go into something that's a few degrees wetter and uh, that could make the difference. But he did, again, showing good experience for one so young. Yeah, using all the curb out of Blanchemont. This is the tricky bit, though. It's the, it's the slow parts of the, core, of the, of the course that can, that can catch you out where you... There it is, just getting a little bit sort of twitchy on the rear end as he went through the bus stop chicane. But hung on to it, it didn't phase him, and as he goes back on the power out of the bus stop chicane, which is, as I've said earlier, almost a hairpin, it's so tight. Now then, into the pits has come the Gosner car, and it's taking what looks like slick tyres off there and putting rain tyres on. That's the number 58 car. Well, you mentioned um, the pits, let's mention Nick Damon. Nick? Uh, always mention him. Hello, um, yes, so we've also got the 16 uh, car coming, the Modern Motorsports uh, Porsche. So I think a lot of the guys who are t uh, girls who are toughing it out on slicks have gone, no, this has gone far too far the other way. Uh, wet going onto that MP Motorsport and also onto the 16 Porsche as well. Uh, live up to date uh, from the pit lane, it's sort of medium spitting rather than actually rying. As here comes. Uh, uh, the 26 Antelop car as well, Pierre Everard. Uh, also, I would think, wanted to get rid of uh, the slick tyres he's on for wets as well. So the crossover has come, and we have a code 60. Why is that, Bruce? I could give you a couple of reasons. We've had a rotation from Thomas Roberts, stuck the number 919 Black Falcon Team Techstar Porsche into the gravel at 
Campus Corner, and someone else also had a yeah, problem, Joe. It's the championship leader, the Haas RT. Audi having a lurid spin at the top of the hill at Ragnarok. That's not the place to be doing a 360, and it's Olivia Bertels at the wheel of that car. He'll need a change of overalls when he comes in after that one. The car went through 360, Bruce, pointing in the right direction. He composed himself, went down the gearbox, no doubt, and he's continuing now. We've got code 60 for that car in the gravel, but that was quite a discerning kind of incident for Patels to cope with. He'll be on the radio now saying, uh, can I have some wet tyres, please, Chris? <laughs> Yeah, and bear in mind that uh, early in the race, the first real flurry of rain, rain we had uh, Fred Vervis aboard that one, and the board seems about right <laughs> on, on a boat, and that went to, just got to the bottom of the hill, past the old pits, found a stream going across, the, or a river going across the circuit, and had to get on the grass at Eau Rouge. Not many people get away with that. But for Hassarty, they're riding their form, riding their fortune. Olivier did that when he was in 13th position. That car, those drivers had the potential to come higher up, but at the moment, they don't need any more moments like that. That was quite yeah. a... Well, it was an enormous save. Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're going to consider that a, a bit of a comeback drive, aren't we, from the uh, from the Haas R team, Car 21, currently 10th in class and 13th overall. Nick, busy yeah. in the pits. Uh, we have heart, had Heart of Racing just... I think it's, is it James still aboard that one? Uh, just coming down and stopping for fuel. Got a couple of the others serving some uh, penalties, number 57. We saw the 955... Uh, Porsche, uh, that is, of course, the EV Motors by Willy Sports, or Willy Motors by EV Sports, one of the two. Uh, that car has come in for a tyre change. And Haas RT are going to be in in a second, and they will be putting wet tyres. And it looks like uh, Stéphane Perrin as well will be getting into the car, um, taking advantage of this Code 60 for a cheaper tyre stop. But obviously, they will need to pick some fuel as well. Yeah, certainly after that lurid spin, the wet tyre seems to be... Oh, and it's pouring down, Bruce. Just looking out the window across from the top of the pit, above the pits here. And we can see the rain coming down. It's not light rain anymore, Nick. It's pretty much pretty heavy rain. Chucking it down, I hear, in my ear. But when you're out on the track and it's as fully wet as it is now, actually, it's a good thing you're coming under Code 60 because you shouldn't be able to make a mistake at that speed. Yeah, well, you still can, to be honest. Of course you Bruce, still can. Yeah. So you can't make a mistake in the pits, can you, Nick? Oh, I'm sure I can make many and have. Uh, Land Motorsport, that car which started so well, but it's all been going wrong ever since breakfast when Joe wished them luck. Uh, they are in the pits as well, as is the 34 cars. They're both the uh, GT3 Audis for Land Motorsport. I keep wanting to call the 34 the car collection car because it's the same colour scheme and it's the same drivers. Uh, they are all coming off the slicks and going on to wets. There is a procession of machines now who are doing the same or getting some fuel, including the 763 Lamborghini, the 903 uh, Red Ant uh, Porsche as well. I'm just checking where these are. But the Red Ant car, is that going to go for tyres as well? They're just having a bit of a fuel up. Both the Audis from Land Motorsport have had this. It is raining quite a lot, you know. I've got my head slightly stuck out so I can see down the pit lane. It's getting wet. I'm getting damp. It's just, I might shrink. I might melt. Who knows? I mean, put your hood up, Nick. Reception. See, it's, it's professionally wrong. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are waiting now for cars to come in. And they'll be in any minute now. So we're going to get the Hass RT. We're going to get uh, all the cars, actually, this all second. Very bravely, Seb is trying to go out the middle of the pit lane. It is, it is now one of those things where the rain, I need to explain this in English terms. This is now summer rain. Not Nothing to do with the heat, but everything to do with the, the speed of fall and the size of globule. The individual droplets are hard and high and large, but the actual propensity, the speed, the number of them is not enormous. So this is the sort of rain you have just after tea uh, at a cricket match when you're hoping to see the uh, last couple of hours and it gets washed out and the Duckworth Lewis rules ruin the whole thing. That's sort of rain we've got at the moment. So it's chucking down, you mean? No, no it's, it eased back from chuck. And now it's ah. kind of, you know, if it was warmer, it's just missing about four or five degrees to be proper summer rain. As I noticed, all oh, the life I can need to get me out and also the... Uh, the pit man for one of the other teams. I've just seen that the Haas car, sorry, the, the Red Camel's Jordan machines come in again, and that's getting a full service, including driver change. Uh, the Herberth car is just coming out from serving a penalty. 
and that's going down the pits as well. So everyone's getting on. I'm being asked to move out of the way by someone. He doesn't know why. He doesn't know my lithe body. He doesn't know I can jump out of the way. I haven't been run over for years. Well, Do you know the last time I was run over in the pit lane? I was run Jean Lazy ran over my foot in Canada. There we are. That's a little trivia for you. Never get to top that, Nick. You need to retire on that. Nick. That is true. I made Michael Schumacher cry, and my foot yeah. was hurt by Jean Lazy. Uh, that Herbert car you mentioned coming into the pits there, Daniel Allerman coming in, uh, that's allowed Pia Kaffer back into the lead, Bruce. However, I'm pretty sure Kaffer is still on slicks. Well, maybe uh, maybe Nick can confirm that. Do you reckon number one, Pia Kaffer, the yeah. Shearer Sport car, is still on slicks? I do think that, but actually we have a, a double stop by two of the leading cars. In comes the Hass RT car, and just his right comes the McLaren, the, uh, the 69 machine, that from uh, J. Uh, P Motorsport, so the boss course, the Haas car is counted in 12th. Now, we can also see the fourth overall CP racing car in as well. It's a driver change for Haas. It's a driver change for the uh, undamaged uh, 72 Audi of the second one of the uh, Lithuanians. But I don't see any driver change for CP racing. Shane Lewis staying aboard that one and Christian Clean staying aboard the JP Motorsport, but uh, everybody is uh, rejecting slicks and absolutely embracing the wets. I tell you what, Nick, um, you, you won't have seen this, but if, if you are watching the live stream at home, you would have been right in the midst of that Haas RT pit stop there with the helmet cam there on one of the mechanics. That's what it feels like for the responsibility of changing those two uh, wheels and tyres, Bruce, and then getting that car back out. Uh, the number, the Haas RT car, uh, number 12, uh, sorry, 12th, car 21. That was very confusing. Car 21 is 12th. Uh, my uh, dyslexia, Lewis Keel. Uh, <laughs> Olivia Battelle's was the driver that brought that car in, but I'm pretty sure I saw a driver change there. We'll see who is who it ends up being in well, that car. Unless fairly sure Johnson. we mentioned that it was going to be Stefan Perrin it was, yes, lining up right, to, to hop right. aboard. But uh, while... You're right just right now the spray when the drivers get up but let's go down we're talking all things to do with that particular car let's go down this has RT and it's Nick uh, Olivia I mean that was um, well that's a definition of tricky conditions isn't it and they it caught you out as well it was a uh, it's a uh, very tricky on track yes um, it, it was a quite good run um, but it was very tricky yes the wet the dry the tires so you had a big spin. How frightening was that? Um, uh, I was lucky. Uh, I was just lucky. Um, it was a bit frightening, yes. For the race, for the team, so we are lucky we didn't uh, hit anything, so... And how much were conditions changing every lap? Is it totally different every corner every lap? Conditions changing... Um, Every corner, just every corner, wet or drier, it's so, so tricky to feel the car. It's, uh, it's not easy to drive right now. But. Congratulations on getting back in one piece. Thanks, Olivier. Thank you. Not easy to drive right now. I think that's the understatement of the day. So, so and also, Joe, it's so easy to think about the drivers going around one at a time. It's when you've got other people doing things that are also slightly unpredictable around you. And right now, corners like, I don't know, Blanchimont, they sort of fit large in a driver's brain when they're going around the lowest point of the circuit through campus and curb Paul Frere. They know what they're trying to do is carry as much speed as they can up to and through Blanchimont. But how brave are they? Well, we've just come out of the court 60. We've now gone green again, and this is completely different. You get a bit of a feel for how much grip might be in the slick tyres on the wet track. However, Pia Kaffer, our current leader in the number one Shearer Sport Audi, he is out there, and that rain is not stopping. That water is still coming down. And the more it rains, the, the less of a chance that Pia Kaffer has got. I tell you what, if you've got a choice of who you would want in that number one uh, Shira, Shira Audi, it would be Pia Kaffer, because he's so experienced. He'll know exactly what to do. But the, the problem is, of course, as you approach the corner, where do you break? You've got to have this gift from God like feel for the car, and you're feeling the grip under your under your, 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 your foot that's pressing the brake pedal and also through the steering and through the seat of your pants. But if you got it a few metres short or a few metres I too know, soon, but the next time you can't use that as a reference that's point. Right. So right. every time you've got to just 
have a guess a little bit, and that's where the years of experience, not just with the, the weather, the car, but also the circuit comes to play. That's where the Pierre Caffers are so mighty, the Adam Christazulus. Are they doing well? Oh, they're first and third at the moment. Yes, that's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alan stayed in the 91 Herbeth car, by the way. Um, we saw that car come into the pits, and it's now back out on track. And Daniel Allerman was the driver that brought the car in. He's changed on the wet, I would think. I would think so, but Nick also mentioned that uh, the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche was serving a penalty. Quite a group of cars were serving penalties yeah. down there. Whether it was a 10-second stop and go, whatever it was, it could have pegged him back. Will that put Adam Christodoulou into second place? We'll find out. But Pierre Kaffer leading the race for Shearer Sport PHX. It's Audi, then two Porsches, and fourth place, Anton Dukan, the third driver in the rotation, the 26 Santa Lock Audi. I can confirm, Bruce, that no the one did take a 10-second penalty. Okay, that's what it seemed to be feel about right. We've talked too much about GTX recently, and uh, the VDS Racing Adventures Mark car, the Mark II, Nathan Van Springle running that, leading that class in 16th overall. Next challenger at the moment is 9 to 11 racing with their Porsche, Martin Schluter, he's in 24th, and 25th, one position behind, and just uh, 10 seconds further back down the road, the RD signs Lamborghini, that's car number 720, they're the top three in GTX. Top GT4 car by the moment is Atlas BX Motor Motorsport. That's Takeyung Yang, car number 403, and that's in 29th place overall. Let's have a look further down at our other classes, and especially our touring car endurance part of this race. Roy Edlund now at the wheel of the Holmgard Motorsport Cupra. They are currently 33rd overall. They've completed 58 laps, and they are leading both TCR and our touring car endurance race, our touring car endurance 12 hours of spa, second place to them, the Wolf Power car, Yasmin Presig, still at the wheel of the number 121, they, they, she is in 37th overall, and then third still in third, first of the TCX runners, and that is the Porsche 718 Cayman and that's the SRS team, so great sport, Heiko Eichenberg is at the wheel of the 227, currently in just lost my Thing there, 38th overall, fourth. Just behind them is Alvaro Rodriguez uh, in the 123, uh, 39th overall. That's the really key by Totcar Cupra, and then a little bit further back, understandably, the BMW, uh, the BMW M2 of Roma Racing. Uh, that's Mauro Mercuri in the 245, 44th overall, and then the last of the TCE runners that is actually on track. The only car in TC, the touring car class, the BMW M2, that's the less powered car, the Hover Racing by Bob Wilkes. But Martin Crow seems to have been in that car quite a while now. 331 is the number of the car, 45th overall is where it is. Time for a sharp intake of breath. I mentioned a very good scrap between uh, a couple of cars for second and third places in the GTX class, and uh, certainly the one in third, that's Nicola Michelon, the 720RD signs Lamborghini. He really fancied going up the inside of the 911 Porsche. But that keeps its position. That was down at Campus. The, the move was blocked. I thought it might be a move to put one, if not both, of the cars into the gravel. Still always fine. They got through now, accelerating up the hill, but there's some distance behind that marked car that's been running like a train. It's quite a few positions ahead of them on the track. The second and third. In other words, Schluter and Michelon covered by just half a second in their battle for GTX. A little while ago, uh, Bruce, I saw a, a, a question being posed on Twitter. Uh, come, it came from the Benelux Supercars. And um, the question was, is it possible for a team to do an oil change in a long distance race? Um, the answer is yes. Yes, yes it, it, it is. We very rarely see it. We see oil being topped up as oil tends to get used in, in racing engines. Can you change hot oil? Um, is the question. It's actually pref preferable to change the oil in your car. If you do an oil change in your car, get it up to temperature and then drop the oil out because the oil's thinner and you'll get more of the oil out. If the oil is thick and cold, it'll still be hanging in there in the sun and in bits and pieces. So, yeah, you can, and I would suggest you do get the, the, hot, the oil hot. Oil hot? The oil hot. I've read all when you books. When you drop it out of the sub. There you have it. Good question, and very well answered. Right, Pierre Kaffer leading the race. The interesting thing for the me, me at the moment is who is exactly on which car. To our mind, we thought everybody was coming in and getting wet weather tyres, but looking at the pace of Anton Ducroix in third place, he was 12 seconds faster than the race leader last time round, and also 12 seconds faster than the next couple of cars. 
So let's see what's left. There could have been a bit of traffic. Car in second place, Anton Ducrat, he was fourth. That, it, it goes to prove. He passed Daniel Allerman and Adam Christodoulou on that lap. My eyes did deceive me. Santelot Racing, I said, when it gets these mixed conditions, and I thought that on the openings right at the start of the race, when uh, the driver at the helm at the, the get-off, which was um, Erwan Bastard, really seemed to struggle a little bit. But right now, I think they could have played a bit of a masterstroke. How far off the race lead is he? Just over a minute, a minute and two seconds. But last lap alone, he was nine seconds faster than our race leader, Pierre Kaffer. Let, let's just quantify that, though, Bruce. The reason why he's nine seconds quicker is because Kaffer's on, on slicks and the gamble might have paid off. The rain is easing off. It's barely a rain anymore just in front of us, certainly here on the pit straight. What it's like elsewhere on the track, I do not know. We, it, can be, it can be torrential at one part. It isn't. Nothing that we can see on the screens is telling us such. Uh, we've got cars with windscreen, uh, with windscreen wipers going uh, at quite a rate. We've got cars without windscreen wipers. Uh, a little bit of spray there through Blanchemont tells me that the track remains wet, but whether or not it stopped raining at all, perhaps Nick can tell us otherwise, but it looks like the rain is lightening off, and that's going to that's gonna be uh, Pierre's cap, Pierre Kaffer's gamble that is going to pee off if he can stay out on the street. Yes, no, wet, Very, dry. very lightly spitting. I'm looking at a puddle now. Uh, drip, 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 drip. That's how from the, uh, the uh, droplets are uh, coming down from the sky. So it's virtually stopped. Also, over behind the main grandstand then, um, which you guys can see, of course, as well, it is brightening up for at least half an hour of weather before we get some more weather. And there you have it, a career in the meteorological service for Nick Damon. That was six trips and we'd had enough by then, but it's, it's interesting. The fact is, from the, the commentary box over the start, finish straight, uh, we can see the top of the circuit at uh, Les Combes, so that means it's good. It's not in encased in rain at the moment. Lap times, for most people, it's uh, 2 minutes 50-something, but for those on wet weather tyres, Shane Lewis in the CP Racing Mercedes in sixth overall, he's banging 2 minute 42s. Same sort of time as the driver in second place, Anton Ducroix, in the Santelot Junior team. But we know, Joe, here at Spa-Francorchamps, the pendulum of fortune swings one way and then yeah. mysteriously goes back the other. It really does. I mean, the gap's coming down. Alleman is only one and a half seconds behind Duquan, but that's gonna that's gonna just leap. He, the gap's gonna just extend. Christopher Dulu, who is also on uh, on slick tyres on a wet track, he's catching on. And yeah, but the pair that of them were ten seconds, se ten yeah. seconds to slower than Anton Duquan. So he's fifty four seconds. He was over a minute down on Pierre Caffrey. He's now fifty four seconds, but taking times by the handful. But the, the battle of the Porsches on slicks between Alleman and the ninety one Herbert car. And Adam Christodoulou in the 930 numbered HRT performance. Both of different classes. Uh, Herbert is in the GT3 class, leading the 992 class as Christodoulou. And Adam, the, the gap between the 91 and the 930 was 10 seconds. Last time by was two seconds. They're due very, very shortly, and we'll see just what that gap's down to now. OK, a little battle within the overall war, just looking at the Porsche Cup class, and the fastest driver is the one in third place. Rick Broyker's back in for another stint. He's lapping as fast as Anton Ducat in the car that's in second place, closing in on the race leader. But he's taking a lot of time out of Adam Christodoulou as well, who's the class leader in uh, what position now? Fourth position overall for HRT performance in the Porsche Cup class. I I'm just looking and seeing that the track at Lacombe is still extremely wet. The spray coming up off the cars, I mean, it's completely different at the start finish straight and into the La Source hairpin, but up at Lacombe, down through Brussels, it's absolutely soaking wet, the track. And a lot of spray came off the cars at La Source. No longer is spray coming up when the cars are braking heavily for that tight right-handed hairpin, but uh, yeah, and that really tricky run. It's hard enough getting the exits of Les Combes right, then down to Bruxelles, as you say, two apexes, and then jacking its curb where you're going to the left. We've seen a lot of cars getting very loose and a few cars going off the track up there, so the drivers need to be absolutely on their tiptoes and those on slicks they'll be looking at the weather going come on weather come on weather get this track to dry fine at the source not so fine at the highest point at the circuit at the far end 2.5 seconds the gap between third and fourth overall Alleman in the 930 and to have a 
992 class car in the top five. We've had the car, we've had the 992 class leader leading overall. So still, there's nothing like a good, as, as great an equaliser as wet weather. Just adding the straight line speed of those cup cars, those cup, car, cup class Porsches, really, really fast. The only real difference between that and the GT3 spec car is a little bit more power in the GT3, but a lot more grip through the corners from aero and the like. The one car that was in the mix and is trying to get back into the mix, it's fallen down to eighth, thought it was ninth, it's now become eighth because Dr. Johannes Kirchhoff, the Land Motorsport 34 Audi, has just been passed on the last lap by first Patrick Kropinski, the JP Motorsport McLaren, that's up to eighth. Rick Broekers, third in the uh, 992 class, and again taking great chunks of time out of the car. The second in class, that's Koba de Bruca, the 903 Red Ant Racing, and also Adam Christodoulou leading the 992 class for HRT performance. He's fourth. Koba de Bruca, second in class, is seventh. But catching both and catching them fast is the car in ninth. Rick Broekers, 909, Red Camel Jordans, seems to be right on the money. We're inside the final two and a half hours of this uh, half, two, two half distance, that is, this first segment. 12 hours of spa split into two six hour segments. We go to Park Ferme conditions overnight. You can work on the car, however, there are penalties if that's what you want to do, and sometimes um, circumstances necessitate work being done on the car. It's not preferential, of course, because the penalty that you take for any kind of work on the car will be 10 laps. And sometimes 10 laps is the better option because some jobs take longer than 10 laps. So that was the kind of decision that Christian Land at Land Motorsport had to take a Mugello, and it took the car out of contention for the lead and put the car just out of contention for any kind of podium or anything. Um, so that, we, we will, as we get towards that part of the race, we will see if anyone does indeed take that decision. More of that tomorrow morning, of course. Right now, there's enough to contend with without trying to think of what's coming tomorrow, Bruce. We're, we're thinking about what's coming in the next five minutes. Yeah, would it be weather? Well, what, what is happening? Gosh, the gap between first and second, it was about a minute and five seconds, then it's 53 seconds, then it's 43 seconds. Is there a pattern? Ten seconds a lap is being wow. gained by Anton Ducat in the Santa Lot Junior, number 26 Audi, catching Pierre Caffer's Shearer Sport PHX Audi. Oh, actually, Pierre Caffer's now starting to find a little bit more form. It's drying out a little bit. He's on the dry weather tyres, and certainly Ducat must be on wet weather tyres. But almost sunshine up around the pits. Up at Le Corp, it's still difficult, and we've got a, an Audi off. It's the Haas RT Audi and the 967 Porsche. So the Haas number 21 Audi that started on pole position, and that has had a, a mix around Stefan Perrin, the fourth driver in the cycle. Did he jump? Was he pushed? And with two cars going around, every chance the HRT performance car would revert. So Pampanini, no, now Nicholas Sturt Sturtinger at the wheel. Sturtinger uh, may have come together or maybe just went off in tandem. Couldn't really tell whether they, that was the same part of the track, actually. We saw the SRT car, currently the 15, step up and number 21, just at the side of the track, and then we saw a Porsche Cup car coming back onto the track. That was the 967 with Nicholas yeah. Sturzinger, HRT Nicholas performance, 21st position overall. There it is there, the number 967 back and going back on track and circulating once again. No sign of the Haas RT, number 21. Oh, yes, there oh, is. It's damage. coming it's in damage. slowly, rear wing vibrating enormously. Therefore, has he got a flat tyre front corner damage, front left corner, not looking as it left the pits, to put it mildly. He's just come out of Le Combe, mm. and he's heading down to Brussels. So the number 21 car, it's got massive damage oh. on the front left corner. We've got the left front wheel not rotating at all. The right front wheel still is. Now then, Bruce, I'd say that car has hit something very heavily on that left corner. You don't have to be a detective uh, to say that. I think he's had to hit the barrier. I think he's hit the barrier, and he's hit the barrier at the top of Radion. That is a very high-speed part of the track. It was at the top of Radion where we saw the car. He bounced off the barrier, Bruce, and was onto the edge of the track. He hadn't just pulled at the edge of the track, he bounced there. Now, most cars at Radion, if they hit the barriers, they hit up 
over off the right-hand side of the track. This was hard on the left, under the foot, effectively, of that enormous new grandstand that offers the amazing views. But with the front left wheel out at about 10 degrees from true, pointing to the left for the, from the driver's point of view, it's about bringing it back round, not too fast, but actually at the moment, going down, down through double gauche, Cornerby Snow's Pujol, he's actually off the circuit doing his utmost, running on the tarmac area beyond the curbing, trying to keep out of the way. He rejoins the circuit just before Fania. This is going to be an agonisingly slow lap for Haas RT. He started the lap with Stefan Perrin in 15th position, but he's a tumbling down the order. And then, of course, you've got all the repairs to be made. And another thought is just trying to get into the, the twisting entry to the pit lane here with a front left wheel that's 10, 15 degrees out of true. That's not going to be the work of... Uh, it's not, it's not, even, it's not even going round, Bruce. That's no. the problem. It's, it's just stuck there in uh, slightly off to the left. So Stefan Perrin, who we've become very familiar with, Stefan and his teammate uh, Mathieu Dittry in the TCR class. Um, usually you see these drivers in that class of front-wheel drive race cars, Mathieu Dittry uh, just getting to grips with GT3, as is Stefan Perrin's teammate, the, uh, the Kim to Mugello for the first time in that car and ended up with the win. SRT are finding that it's a bit of a roller coaster ride is motorsport. They've had a, a torrid time already in this race and that torrid time continues. However, oh, left hand puncture as well on the 21 it looks like, doesn't it? Isn't it? No. That looks does not look right. It doesn't that, look that, entirely right. That left hand rear wheel was was wobbling around as if something is brought in the suspension area of that car. It also is quite hard to tell because it's marked from where it's hit the barrier, so it's a bit like putting a dot on the side of a wheel. Yeah. It looks so it's out of true, but just while that was happening, our lead gap has come down to under half a minute. Last time we looked, it was 43 seconds, now it's 28 and a half seconds. Anton Duquan continues to chase after Pierre Kaffer, but for Haas RT, that clearly has uh, dropped them way down. 15th at the start of the lap, haven't finished it, they're 19th, they're going to lose a handful more positions to more cars from the 992 Cup class, and then, of course, you've got the repairs to be made. He's and made three it. of the four drivers who've been out in that Haas RT car have had problems. He's, Down with Nick. Yeah, he's made it back. Uh, yeah, he's made a the right hordix of this. He's gone in hard on the left-hand side, damaged the, uh, the nose. He's flattened and damaged the front left. Absolutely right, there's some damage also on the uh, rear left as well. That's got probably just a simple toe link. So they're going to have to replace two corners and do some patching up with tape and probably tie ups and hopefully a, a lump hammer. Uh, Stefan Perrin sits in the car, shaking his head. But uh, this is not the work of the moment. He has, you can see here how, how he's just scuffed down the side by the sort of damage he's done to that front left. He's just kind of slightly peeled the bodywork off. He hasn't crushed it anyway. So he's either gone straight on. Uh, and just not got the corner and then got into the, um, into the barrier. Because actually, look at it, they could actually open the bonnet quite easily. It's just the uh, all down the side and the very important uh, steering and suspension bits, they're all broken. It was fairly much a straight run. It was almost straight line in the corner and the car very much at an, an oblique angle as it, it kissed the tyre wall on the outside at the crest of Radio on the left-hand side, right under the giant grandstand. Stefan Perrin out of the car, Nick saw him shaking his head. We don't know because we if anyone else was involved, because at the same time we had the, it was the 967 Porsche, Nicholas Sertzinger. We saw him rejoining the circuit. I'm not sure we definitely can add two and two that one went off to avoid the other, but uh, the 967 continued, made it back, I think, to the pits. Yes, five pit stops probably did come and call into the pits. Meanwhile, while we've been monitoring the return to the pits of the 21 SRT Audi. At the front of the field, the gap between first and second down to 22 seconds. Now, we are seeing the track come back to be a kaffir, certainly in places around this track. Still remains wet up the Kemmel Strait and up to Le Combe. However, the remaining part of the track seems to be uh, coming back to Pierre Kaffir's favour, still out on slicks. And Pierre Kaffir's last lap time by, 2 minutes 46 dead. Uh, in comparison to Antoine de Quint in the Santeloc Audi, two minutes 39, so about seven seconds. We were consistently lapping 10 seconds quicker than the leader. However, the number 26 Santeloc car now lapping about seven seconds. So that's what I mean by the track coming back to Kaffa. He's a, he's able to get a better lap time as that tyre becomes more suitable to the conditions out there. 
If anybody was just turning on the monitor anywhere in the world and looking at the, the circuit here, they go, oh, it's a properly wet circuit. But the lap times are starting to come down. The drivers on the wet weather tyres, including Rick Broikers, definitely at working towards the outer parts of the circuit to look for the, the wetter bit of track. But still, the 909 Red Camel Jordan's Porsche is third in the Porsche Cup class, but up to ninth place overall and catching the car that's second in class. That's the 903 Red Ant Racing uh, entry. Catching it by about five, six, seven seconds a lap. Adam Christodoulou, though, still leads the Porsche Cup class for HRT performance. Car 930. He's only three seconds down on Daniel Anneman now, but he is being caught and caught very fast by the two cars that are second and third in class. So just look out to see how much more Rick Broikers can gain in 909, going beautifully at the moment. Flashing his lights. Audacious drive by Luke, uh, by Rick Broikers now at the wheel of the 909. Just settling into the conditions and We've talked again, Bruce, now we see Rick going to the... What he's doing is he's using the off-racing line style or ventling corners. There may be more grip down the less rubbered off-line approach, but it's also cooling those those uh, wet weather tyres. The, uh, the, the the chunky tread tends to overheat very, very quickly. We heard, we've, had a, we've got it on good authority, that in dry conditions, those tyres are good for maybe just only three laps before they destroy themselves. There are certain parts of the track where they'll be cooling off and being suitable, and that's up at Le Corme and Le Bruxelles, but uh, other areas of the track where those tyres will just overheat. Well, absolutely so, and despite the fact that it appears almost completely dry by the pits, still, whenever you get a shot of Le Comte, there's still a lot of spray, but the mark of Pierre Caffer's excellence here he was losing 10 seconds a lap. You just mentioned Anton de Quan was now, now only gaining seven. Last time around, it was only three and a half seconds. Wow. So we're coming to meet the car on slicks is finding the track drier and improving. The car on wet weather tyres is finding the track drier and going worse. Yeah. But uh, last time around, yeah, just it was down to three and a half seconds. Gain by the car in second place. Under 19 seconds is the gap now, but bear in mind, it seems a blink of an eye ago that was a minute and three seconds. So it's been a really good chase by Anton Ducroix. But we might get to the point where the Santelot car, it tips over. And the tyres on yes. that, the wet weather tyres, are going to suddenly be the inferior tyre to have. But Pierre Kaffer has hung on. And that was the mark of the experience of the German ace that he could just read how hard to push. One little bit too hard and not game over, but and, certainly game hampered. And it's a very, very thin line between being a hero or facing disaster yeah absolutely fabulous drive as we would expect from a driver of the caliber of pair pierre kaffer fabulous drive let's have a look at the lap times yep yeah, with, with you another lap time from those two cars at the front of the field gt3 first second and third with sheer sports audi of pierre kaffer leading anton de Kline with the song team uh in set and we've got the herbert motorsport porsche of daniel alleman in third one minute 16 off the leader in that car. Adam Christodoulou leading the 992 class, currently in fourth. That's about to change because Shane Lewis in the CP Racing right. GT3 Mercedes took about five seconds out of him last time around. I think Adam, whatever tyres here on, they're starting to really not work and, for him. And last time through, Bruce, there was a five second gap between those two cars. So this is where we'll see the CP car overtake Christodoulou and put that pesky 992 class car where it should be, where it should be behind the GT3 car. There's a man oh. coughing down in the pits. Sorry. I presume it's Nicholas Damon. That wasn't deliberate. That was actually a coughing fit. Uh, I have to had, just had a quick chat with Stefan Perrin. He doesn't want to speak on camera. Uh, and that is because it was his own fault. He was no other car involved. He just lost the car at the top of Radion. And he is obviously, uh, as they say in football, as sick as a parrot. Well, yeah, pop him back on his perch, Nick. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, you, you got it's so easy to make mistakes. Uh, in these sort of conditions every single lap pretty much it's about lap three of this race has offered a different racing circuit different racing surface on this circuit and the, and the team will just get on with it i know it's a brand new team it's only a brand new team to this series it's a brand new team in creation the hassar t team however 
the core of that team are extremely experienced. And even team principal, uh, Sandrine Haas, she's been around, for, you know, motorsport and, uh, you know, renowned Formula One photographer for many, many years. She knows it comes and goes. She knows it's like a, a roller coaster ride when you get involved in this sport. And, you know, they, they took the win in Mugello. They are having a completely different experience here in Spa. And, you know, full season of European racing ahead in this in this 24 series. Yeah, you take what comes, take in front of you. She's also raced herself in these older long distance races and competes out in Antigua in some off-road events as well. So she's she's got the bug properly, but yeah, the thick and the thin of motor racing. 14 seconds now is the gap between our race leader, Pierre Caffer and Anton Ducran. But uh, hold on, people fancying getting wet weather tyres and going back to slicks. Let's find out. Uh, the Mark Cars Mustang, the uh, fantastic uh, silhouette Mustang car, that, as Bruce has rightly said, sounds better than every other car in the field. That has just come in for, I think, they're pretty much a scheduled stop because they are um, yeah, changing drivers. They're putting slicks on, but I actually think, now I've got a bit closer, because they're quite a long way, I think they were taking slicks off as well. I don't think that thing's ever actually been onto wets. So yeah, the Mark car has had slicks put on, but they were slicks coming off as well. So whoever's been peddling that round, uh, trying to contain an unruly uh, five litre V8, well done. Well, all, all credit there to Nathan Van Springle. Good job in a great car on tricky, tricky track surface. 615 brake horsepower in that car, Bruce. 615 brake horsepower on six Nathan? out there. 615 uh, horsepower, Nathan. I have Nathan for you. Well uh, Nathan, um, I walked up here, saw you doing a tyre change, thought, oh, they'll be taking the wet tyres off. No, you've been on slicks the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Oh, it's like super tricky. Uh, I was uh, driving a lot and uh, the car is uh, sliding uh, a lot. So yeah, I did that for my team for the first place. So I'm happy to to stay uh, to stay in the in the track. I mean, sometimes the rain was like rivers. How do you keep how do you keep the car on the track? Because you're just losing tire temperature the whole time. Oh, I don't know how because it's complicated to explain, but. Uh, I trust my teammate and my team, uh, and I, he say to me, uh, stay on the track, stay on the track, and I say, so, yeah. I mean, this, this car, obviously, is nicer in the track. It's a cracking car to drive. It sounds fantastic, the Mark cars. Yeah, it's an amazing car. I'm super happy to, uh, to be here. I just want to thank my whole sponsor to, to drive in this championship. And uh, yeah, uh, this car, it's normally for the Australian track, but here, it's a perfect car. So, Nathan, have you been in the Creventic series before? Is this your first Creventic race? No, no, this is, this is my first race, and this is my big, biggest race in my life, so I'm super happy to be here. You do a great job. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. Bye-bye. He really is. He's just, I mean, considering, you know, 615 brake horsepower at 7,000 revs, it's got a, a 5.2-litre, four-cam V8 in that car on slicks, in changeable conditions. We've talked about it since this race started, Bruce, about how difficult it is. And that young lad there has just been thrown that, thrown that huge monster of a beast around this track. And he's been, it, I haven't seen that car off. I haven't seen him make a mistake. I haven't, I've seen him take avoiding action for yeah. the running Lamborghini. I tell you what, just write that name down, will you? You're going to see a lot more of that, can I tell you? Nathan Van Springle, so whoever's sponsoring him, you might have got a gem there, but uh, he came into the pits from about 15th place, clear leader in the GTX class, and that was a, a job very, very well done indeed. But uh, wait and see who's taking that 75 VDS Racing Adventures Mark II V8 over. It was started by Raphael van der Straten, the team that... Uh, the family that, uh, of course, put its names to the team, but I would reckon it'd be Nick Geelan going through towards the end of the race, but we'll confirm that when the car has had its refueling and rejoined. What I can tell you, though, 10 seconds was the gap between, well, it's down below 10 seconds, nine seconds flat now. Pierre Caffer still hanging on from Anton Ducoin. Five seconds gained that last time around. It's getting tighter. Into the pits from second place in TCE. Yasmin Prysik has brought in the Wolf Power Racing Audi and has jumped out of that car. Not quite sure who is going to be taking over from Yasmin, but currently second in both TCR and overall in TCE. That car very much in contention for a great finish and currently uh, behind the leader, Holmgard Motorsports Cupra, still leading with Roy Edlund. I'm not sure if uh, Nick is anywhere near the Wolf Power Racing. I'm very near. Oh, well, I'm at the pit. Uh, yeah, they, um, they stayed on sticks as well the whole time. 
that's obviously a little bit easier with front wheel drive but they and they but they came in they only replaced the fronts so the rear stayed on but they were slicks as well so a uh, few cars have braved it all out and at this point of course they are going to reap the rewards because there is a, a gradually drying track and oh, when well, the next shower could be well, minutes away yeah what's interesting and, and surprising me bruce is just how many cars we're seeing coming in and have, have been out on that track which we saw spray i mean the, we saw um footage of the uh, the kennel straight where literally you can't see the cars for the amount of spray that's been kicked up and there's a lot of cars being on slicks and are still out there on slicks wow super impressive i'm just going to give you an ever smaller number 6.8 seconds that is now the gap between the race leading number one shearer sport phx audi and the fast closing but no doubt wet tire shod uh, Anton Ducroix, the Santa Lorque 26 Audi. 6.7 seconds, two and a half seconds gained last time around. The gap is coming down, but the increment of gain is also coming down. And for Santa Lorque Racing and Anton Ducroix, there were also four cars between them and the race leader as they went out of La Source and down the hill. And of course, Ducroix will have to pass them as well. We'll lose, no doubt, a bit of time. But caution, so much caution is required at this point. And still at the top part of the circuit at uh, Les Combes, it's full windscreen wipers on and I think Nick your little jip little jape about uh, rain coming in a couple of minutes you could be right and certainly as the cars are coming up through Blanchimont they're still putting out a lot of spray fabulous driving for pretty much the whole field yes we've seen mistakes hardly surprising in these ever-changing conditions the live stream continues to show on board of that 909 Rick Boitus driven car currently third and only really seconds, tenths of seconds in between that car and the Corby de Broglie car, the Red Ant car, dropping down behind the GP Motorsport McLaren, rightly so, as the track conditions come back to dry. The Patrick Kapinski, Krupinski, still at the wheel of the GP McLaren, and that car currently seventh. The battle up between the second and third place 992 class Porsches, Red Ant Racing, and Red Camel once again go talk to tour. Kobe De Bruyne in the 903, Rick Bruyne is in the 909, currently in the 904. And there is only a matter of what, two seconds in between those cars? And in fact, they've come together on track. And this is now looking like a Porsche Cup Carrera race as they come past the pits in front of us, heading towards the side by side into the source. Old style uh, circuit comes from me as. Rick Breuters round the outside on the entry to the source airpin out of my sight now down the end. That was a very impressive move. He was on the outside line. I thought, oh, it's going to go. But Rick was so, so late on the brakes and gained probably two and a half car lengths, I'd say, under braking for La Source. And then I think Kobe de Broca, you know, far less experienced, just thought, well, OK, you caught me. You gained about three seconds of me on that lap. No point blocking you. Nice and neat and tidy. And that is uh, very much a mark of the pair of them uh, performing in these super tricky conditions. But if it's almost completely dry at La Source, it's far from dry when they reach the top of the straight, the top of the Camel Straight. And they just have to be aware every corner is providing something different. I can provide you something different. A number, it's a small number, 3.1 seconds now is the gap between our race leader, Pierre Caffer and Anton Ducoin. So even with the traffic that blocked Ducoin at the start of the lap in the number 26 Audi, he gained great chunks of time, about uh, three and a half seconds gained last time around. And it's only 3.1 seconds between them. So at that rate of gain, he should be right on the tail of Pierre Kaffer at the end of this lap. This will be 76 laps on the board. Great battle for overall honours here, and it's going to come down to the next couple of laps. 2.43.1 was the Kaffer time in the Shira car. 2.39.5. So enough time in just one lap for Antoine Duquen to take that lead next time by. We'll keep an eye out of the window for those two leaders coming through. Meanwhile, as we discovered, or as we described, I should say, the second and third place battle for 992 honours, that's flip-flop round, and now we've got the 909, who by the time they've gone through Eau Rouge and up the hill and across Radion and onto the Kemmel Strait, Rick Broikers had already created a bit of a cushion that was going to be of some comfort to him when they went into the braking area full of comp. 
CP Racing, it's been an up and down race. They were very early to come in. Remember, Charles Espinel start, started the race. It was either after three or four laps, he came into the pits. We wondered what he was doing. Just came in and went round to refueling. Since then, he's been running on a slightly different sequence to the others. But fourth place for Shane Lewis could become third. He's hunting down uh, Daniel Alleman. Started the lap just under two seconds down on him. Has been gaining two seconds a lap. So the CP Racing Mercedes picks off one of the junior class cars and he's setting off after that black Herbeth Motorsport Porsche down through Jackie Hicks curve they go and at this moment Shane is doing one thing absolutely clearly he's looking for the wet track he's driving what wouldn't be the racing line he's trying to find the moisture and I would suggest that Daniel Allerman is on slick tyres and uh, trying to avoid what moisture is still there can you remember Bruce when you first learnt you and I are the same age can you remember Bruce the first time you learnt about race drivers putting their car deliberately into the wet to save the wet tyres from destroying themselves. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? No, I don't, but you're going to tell... Fuji, 1976. Oh, oh, absolutely so. James Hunt. The driver of the race from Mario Andretti, Mario of course, Andretti, who won yeah. it. That gets lost in the midst of time. He won it for Lotus when they were in a very low point in their career, but the rate at which the tyres were chunking and yes. falling apart at uh, yeah. Fuji... The track was falling apart, effectively, as well. It was a, an astonishing race. If you've never watched it, go and take a look. If you want a race of uh, mild excitement, don't watch that one. It's full excitement. But we've got plenty of excitement yeah, here because Santalot racing, Anton Ducat, now right on the tail. Oh, less than a second down on the number one Audi. We said it would happen on this lap. The McLaren that is running in seventh place is only just in front of them. It's about to go a further lap down, one would think. And he's not really wanting to trip over the leaders, for sure. Here they come together, though. There's about to be a change of lead. We've got Nick in the pits, but just hang on, Nick. We're about to see Ducourt change position with Pierre Kaffer, who remains on slick tyres. And you know that Kaffer's reacted to that. Now we come to the drier part of the track here. The drier section of track through the... Fania. Piff Paf Fania. The right and left comes back to benefit Pierre Kaffer a little bit more. And we see there the number one, Shira Sport Audi, pulling away slightly, a little bit of a cushion. But that's going to continue all the way back to us and underneath us, Bruce. Yeah, so let's find time to dive down to the pits before a move happens. Well, it's got very busy here, so I assume it's a X amount of minutes since the last Code 60, because there's all sorts of cars in, including, I think, the CP Racing Machine, I think it's coming for a, uh, a full service. We've just had the uh, Red Ant 904, that came in and changed the slicks. 720RD size Lamborghinis also changed the slicks. Yep, I'm right, here comes CP Racing. Still says Lewis at the car, my guess is that will change when they uh, get round and down past the, uh, the timing out on pit exit. Uh, we've had a couple of the uh, b smaller BMWs here. We have the, uh, the 440, 420, sorry, we've got, uh, down the road. Now we've got the uh, uh, the 245 from the TC class, and looking a long way down, the only 16 as well. So we've run that period of very little happening, apart from perhaps having a problem, and now everyone's coming in and taking the opportunity to decide for the next 20 minutes at least, uh, slicks of the tyres to have. OK, while we've got a hugely exciting lead battle at the moment, it looks like it's settling in favour of Pierre Kaffer, who's found a bit of form. We have crossed just two hours to go in the six-hour first half of the 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps with Kravensic. So let's have a rundown on who is where in the touring classes. So TTE being led by Home Guard Motorsport, Roy Edland remains at the wheel of the 102, 30 second overall, and it's got a bit of a gap before we see our next TC runner, and that's the TCX class runner of the Porsche, Porsche 9, uh, sorry, I saw again, the Porsche 718 Cayman. That's the SRS team, so Grinsport, Heiko Eckenberg in the pits with that car 227. That might see a change of position when we next see these cars go out. Up into third in TCE has come the rear of keep by Todd Car Sport Cooper. That's Alvaro Rodriguez at the wheel of the number 123, 37th overall. Fourth is the Wolf Power Car, Ivers Valles in the number 121, the 39th overall, fourth in TCE. And then we've got the Battle of the BMW M2, the TCX class, more powerful, 450 brake horsepower. Car number 245 currently in the pits with Mauro Mercury. And then running in sixth in TCE, we've got the BMW M2. That's the 365 lesser powered Hofer Racing by Bob Motorsport. Michael Bond at the wheel of that one. Car 331. And they are 45th overall. So the gap first to second closing down, but now opening out again. It suddenly seems we had the tipping point between first and second at the very lap that Anton Ducan thought he might be able to make the move. He'd gained two seconds. Pierre Kaffer. 
is coming through and uh, anyone on rain tires we saw cp racing coming in they definitely were still trying to find some uh, wet track for their for their failing rain tires but of course they've now moved on to sticks but now is the time to go through the the results with the uh, four hours two-thirds of the first half of this race so we've still got two hours to go and leading shira sport audi by the tiny margin of 2.3 seconds with pierre kaffer ahead of anton Ducan, the santaloc junior team audi so it's audi from audi then porsche from porsche with the 91 herbeth motorsport car daniel alleman at the wheel still in third position then the top car in the porsche cup class it's HRT performance, Adam Christodoulou, car number 930. And with the, the sudden pit stop for CP Racing, that's dropped them down the order. And up into fifth place goes the heart of racing Mercedes with Ian James at the wheel. Sixth place is Patrick Kropinski in the 69 JP Motorsport McLaren. Land Motorsport, the number 34 car, creeping up the order, Dr Johannes Kirchhoff. And the second of the cars in the Porsche Cup class, it's uh, Kobe de Broeker in 903 Red Ant Racing. Completing the top 10, we've got Moderna Motorsport. Francis Chia still holding on to the wheel there. John Shen started that Moderna car, number 16. And just having dived into the pits, it was fifth. It's fallen to 10th place. CP Racing, Shane Lewis, Mercedes. 909 Rick Red Camel Jordans. That's been working its way up the order, running very well in the Porsche Cup class. That's 11, that's 909. And number 11, the Hofer Racing uh, Mercedes is 12th, Max Partel at the wheel, then ET2P Racing, Paolo Bouguera has just taken that over from Javier Morcillo, that's car number 90, 14th place, Villy Motorsport by Ebi Motors, working its way with every lap seemingly up the charts, 14th overall, then two Lithuanian entries in the Porsche Cup class, 992, that's Mantas Mikushas for Porsche Baltic, and one of the Juta racing cars, their Audi, is uh, tucked in behind Egidius at the wheel. 17th place in the GC class, HRT performance, and that's uh, Nicholas Sturzinger, just had a little off-track moment about 10 minutes ago. That's in 17th place. 18th place is Bert Longer back at the wheel of the PK Car Sport Porsche. Then the Lamborghini from GT3 Poland back in the hands of the driver who started it. In ninth, it's now in 19th place, Andrzej Lewandowski at the wheel. Then MP Racing, it's been rotating. It's gone through three Gosners. It's in the hands of Corinna Gosner at the moment, and that's in 20th place overall. A second car from Juta Racing, a second Audi, and that's... Uh, Vitenis Gubinas in the 71 Audi in 21st, 22nd position. Red Ant Racing, a car that led the class, led the race for one stage, the 904 car, and that's just come out of the pits. It's lost a lot of form. Leipert Motorsport, Lamborghini, Keron Lee back on board that, and that's in 23rd and 24th position, but leading GTX by a tiny margin. Nick Geelan's just taken over from Nathan Van Springle. 25th position, 9 and 11 racing. That's car number 719. And they're just having come out of the pits, 929, a car that we've seen from all angles, had a few spins so far. That's HRT performance with American racer Greg Gorski taking it over. 27th position, yet another Lithuanian team. It's Nicola Michelon in the Lamborghini. That's refueling at the moment. Then come the two Black Falcon Porsches, 920 in 28th position at 919 in 29th. Then Land Motorsport, it's had its problems. Stefan Weininger had a spin in that as well. It's car number 55, an Audi from the GT3 class. Then GT4, class leader. It's car number 416, the Bagheera ZM racing Mercedes. And another Mercedes, this, the one from the Korean entry, Atlas BX Motorsport, car number 403 in 32nd position. Still going, what a big GT field we have. Lion Speed GP powered by SRS Team Saw Grensport. Good backup crew for that Porsche Cayman. That's uh, car number 40, 427 with American racer Daniel Miller at the wheel. And then comes Lars Zanen, 488. That's the outlap for the BMW from TCL Motorsport. Sankia Motorsport also running in the GT4 class with the BMW. That's being refueled, and Thomas Erdilly will be at the wheel of that. Then Vortex V8 car 701, started by Lionel Lamouche. He's at the wheel of that. He's in 36th position. 37th position, the X Swift Racing. Toyota, the one that had a cockpit full of smoke early in the race. And then PB Racing, car 726, their 38th. 39th is the Haas RT car, having many repairs after Stefan Perrin just went off slightly, but with some damage at Radion. And finally, 979, 40th position, the Speed Lover Porsche. That was pitting after the very early laps with a fluid leak. And then we've got 43 cars in all. 41st position, the PCR Sport Mercedes. Then the 755 Land Motorsport Audi. That's in the pits at the moment for Land Motorsport. And 702 Vortex, Laurent Misbach, also in the pits with his car. 43 runners in the GT class.
We'll leave Bruce to catch his breath there and uh, have a rundown of our TCE class. Holden Garden Motorsport, been at the front of the class now for quite a while. They're, they are leading our touring car engines part of this 12 hours of spa. Really keep by Todd Car Sport, they're in second place. The SRS team saw Gren Sport, car 227, they're in third. Wolf Power Racing, the number 121. Uh, uh, Audi RS3, they're in fourth. Fifth is the Roma Racing by BMW. Uh, that's the BMW M2, car 245, they're fifth. Sixth is the lesser powered M2 BMW of Hofer Racing by Bob Motorsport, car 331. And then a car that went into the pits very, very early on. It's uh, It had a catastrophic failure of some sort, the Wolf Power Racing 117. And it was a shame that because Mark Smenden and Rob Huff really looking forward to see those two drivers in this race. Uh, but mechanical problems put that car out of the race and into the pits very, very quickly. So there you have it. And while that was going on, the clock kept counting down. We've got one hour and 51 minutes. What's happened? The gap between first and second. It's Pierre Café from uh, Anton Ducat. It got down to half a second or so. It's nine seconds now, dude. Yeah, nine seconds. Let's head down to the pits where Nick has got an update for us. Go ahead, Nick. It's, it's for the Land Motorsport 755 uh, Audi. Now, the driver got out and confidently told us that the problem was uh, the turbo. The problem actually was the gearbox. And if you can see in there, hopefully Seb can, can fire up the camera, there's all swaths of metal that shouldn't be there. The gearbox holds itself. That screwdriver shouldn't do that. And, uh, and it dumped all the gearbox oil, and that's contaminated the clutch as well. So they have a lovely new gearbox, which hasn't got a big hole in it, uh, and a new clutch, and they're working away. The supposedly errant turbocharger is sitting there going, ha, ha, ha. I'm absolutely fine. It was the <laughs> naughty gearbox. <laughs> it's a good job they thought it was the turbo to pull, pull the motor out where they, they were upon. They found a hole in the gearbox. I don't, know if went, would, I don't know if it went like that. As luck would have it. Yes. I'm not quite sure it went like that, but that's. Uh, it's a, I'm glad to see they've got to the bottom of it. Um, Nick, um, as we've got a whole couple of cars off, I was about to ask you to go and check on the Haas RT team. Meanwhile, up at Lacombe, We've got the number 720 Lamborghini, and that looks like an Audi R8, both off uh, right in the middle of the track as well. Is it the Haas RT car? I'm trying to look at the colours no, on no, the, the roof. Has, the Haas RT car's in the pits. Oh, in the pits. Prepared. OK, the 720 Lamborghini, Audricius uh, Boutacuvelis, uh, RD Signs car, that was running second, third in GTX class, recently after a pit stop had fallen back to fourth. That's, that is oh, uh, okay. an Audi R8. I think it could be one of the Juta racing cars. They're red and white. So 71 is my guess. Juta, Juta racing. He's on driver's right as you come through the first part of Lacombe. Yeah, it, yeah first part of Lacombe. It's Vitenis Gubinas, and the number is indeed on the roof. In fact, I thought it was a bit of marking. Thank you for spotting that from the pits there. Now, who jumps, who pushes? So what I can tell you is up in the braking area, going for the inside at... The turn into Le Combe and the Lamborghini on the outside was half a car length in front, but uh, two were going to tango, tango there. Tango became tangle, and uh, the Lamborghini went to, through 360 degrees, rejoined, and then fired up. But uh, the Audi came from way, way back. The Lamborghini just well, did not expect that. Even though we thought it said 71 on the roof, I can now see 72 on the door. And that has reversed back across the track. So it's the other Audi from uh, the GT3 Am Audi from Juta Racing. And that went, f and leader coming into the pits, I'm being told. Yeah, and more importantly, going into the garage, uh, Pierre Capra has brought the car in. Uh, Elie Earhart waiting to get on board, but it's not just coming in for a tyre change. It's gone up on the dolly jacks. Don't forget, this happened before earlier when they were complaining about a bad vibration. But the car has come in, and they are indeed slicks on that car. I don't think there's much of a doubt about that. They do the old peering thing. They do love to peer into the back of, a, uh, of an Audi, don't they? If in doubt, just peer in the back of it. Man now climbs onto the buttress on the right-hand side, had a really good search about what's going on down there. So Pierre has obviously reported that something doesn't feel right, so perhaps, he sh perhaps the car's not perfect. Perhaps he shouldn't be losing 10 seconds of laps. Perhaps it should only be five because of the weather. But he's, uh, they have wired everyone back in again. They haven't actually changed the tyres, by the way. Uh, they've taken two of them off and left two of them on. 
And now they're, yeah, they do that thing again. They're having, they're obviously not happy with how this car feels, whilst it obviously is producing some form of lap time. There's a lot of waggling going on at the rear end. Um, just trying to see, is something loose? Is something loose? Or is it just, you know, that weird feeling racing drivers get occasionally where they think something's gone wrong? They've got uh, just right-hand side tyres. They may have no tyres on it now, uh, but it's, it'll have to come out the dolly. So this is a, uh, a stop that's going to be costing a bit of time. To see if I can grab a word with Pierre. I think a word with uh, Audi Customer Sport Racing at the moment. Apparently it's slightly more important than us. Can't believe that. Um, the car looks up to fun. They're not really doing anything to it now at the moment. They're just kind of wandering around with a set of warmed tyres. Have they plugged a laptop in yet? Nope. Nope, nope they've kind of got a peering. A bit where with the... Pierre, Pierre, that must have been uh, great fun on the slicks. Oh, well, great fun. Yes, it was fun, of course. But uh, there w it was also on the borderline on, uh, on one stage. As you can see, as you could see, but uh, I have to say, on the right point, it made click again, and uh, the last couple of laps I, I could go, but unfortunately now we have some vibrations again, and we are still looking for this problem. I don't know, but it was really fun outside to drive. I have to. So just when it got dry again, you started to get that vibration again. Is it? Is it? Do you, did you get any near, any near what the problem was last time it was in? No, we couldn't find something, and I need to find the, to ask the boys. I don't know. Thanks, Pierre. So as you say that, the car is wheeled out with some fresh slicks now, straight out of the tyre warmers, because tyre warmers, they're a good idea, you know, and it's not very green uh, to crash a car and have to replace loads of bits you have to make again for the sake of one gallon of diesel. Oh, sorry, Green Lobby, you're talking rubbish. Yeah, let's not get into that one. Let's have a look at some uh, issues there. We saw a couple of cars there getting pinged for track limits. It's actually the leader or the car that took over the lead while we saw both the number one Shearer Sport Audi into the pits. The Antoine Duquen Santelot car that should have taken over that lead also came into the pits. That was more of a service situation. We see the 26 now in fueling while they were in the pits. The Daniel Allemann driven Urbeth car came through and took the lead. And as he did, though, he got so excited, he, he's been pinged for track limits through Eau Rouge. Well, the reason he was pressing so hard through Eau Rouge, he had Adam Christodoulou, leading runner in the night Porsche Cup class car, right under his tail, made a better exit, and someone hasn't made a better did, fist of things. Did Christodoulou go by? Uh, yes, he did. Into well, the lead. Yeah, I'm just double, double checking that because I've been, <laughs> been distracted. The 418 uh, Mercedes sitting sideways in the track, PCR Sport car, waiting for that to get going. And that seems to be on the exit uh, of the drop down from towards Roussel. So Adam Christodoulou has indeed taken the lead. He had a much better run through the corner, but they both are being checked for exceeding track limits. Yeah, but just let's just put that into some context. Christodoulou's in a 992 Cup car. Can someone call Christodoulou on the phone and tell him you're in a 992 class car? You shouldn't be doing that, mate. But he is. He's a rebel, but another rebel is Nicholas Damon. <laughs> Yeah, it's not often I'm, in, I'm compared to the same sentence as Adam Christodoulou, in fairness. Uh, but my surname apparently is quite hard to spell as well, properly, even though it's only five letters. Um, yeah, it's back with Hassar T, because uh, Joe wanted an update. Um, they are now in the process of rebuilding. The good news is that they are reusing the mounting points for the front and rear suspensions. There hasn't been any chassis rail damage, so they've just taken off the mounts using back the same screw holes. They are working their way through the process, which is uh, quite a long one when you replace an entire corner because they're taking some of the things off the uh, existing bits that have broken the corner and replacing them on the, uh, the static parts. The rear is virtually finished. The front's got a while to go. I hate to predict this. I, I, if I say it's 20 minutes, it'll be an hour. If I say it's an hour, it'll be 20 minutes. Obviously, the key thing they have to do is uh, get it out uh, prior to... Uh, the intervention that did on 10 laps. I'd like to say also, there is a man attacking an incredibly expensive Olin shock absorber with a very, very big spanner and a hammer, which is slightly worrying me, because I'm thinking that thing's worth thousands, but they must know what they're doing. Well, thanks for explaining that. I was slightly worried you were playing the castanets. I could hear the tapping sound in the background. I know your song and dance routine. Nick, Nick estimating how long uh, the job will take on replacing the suspension on an Audi R8. Um, Nick's changed suspension and Audi R8 many, many times, surely, for him to be able to do that. Maybe <laughs> not. OK, <laughs> moving on. Chris Dulu, incredible, incredible drive from, from, from that HRT performance. Number 930, the 9 denoting the class it's in. 
and that's the 992 class runner into the lead of this class, uh, into the lead of this race overall. And he's already pulled 1.7 seconds on Alleman in the Herbeth car. Now we've got a cup car leading a GT3, not just a GT3 car, but a GT3 field of cars. Incredible drive by Christian Dillon. And he's doing it on a track that is pro almost properly dry. They're lapping very close to the best time within a couple of times. And there's still some cars out there, I would warrant, that are still on wet weather tyres. They need to come in. Their tyres must be absolutely crucified at the moment. But I would think the gap is uh, Daniel Allen. Adam Christian who dives into the pits. I was going to say it's going to be five seconds between them. It is, but that's with Christian now behind because he's entered the pit lane. He's obviously going to go down and check with Nick how long an hour the R8 suspension takes to be changed. But uh, out of the lead goes Adam Christian He's with Nick. It's a full service, driveways to get in, a new set of boots going on to Chris Duda's car. As I pointed out to Joe, I have chained many a broken Audi R8. I simply press uh, Control or Delete <laughs> and then request new car. And it's fixed do. instantaneously, it's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm sure it's exactly the same for Hass RT, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, you have to predict how long these. It's our job to guess shit, stuff, stuff, you know. We have to guess stuff all the time. That was close. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have to guess stuff all the time. Anyway, Christian is out, and I'll have a word with him uh, in a second. Thank you very much. Now, a car that had been going incredibly well, but unfortunately just going sideways and off the circuit is uh, 758 Nick Geelan, second now in the GTX class car. Slightly out of a pit stop sequence with the GT3 Poland Lamborghini that now leads it. But uh, after that brilliant run by Nathan Van Springle, a bit of a setback with Nick Geelan at the wheel, but it looks though like it's rejoined the circuit. The Mark II car from VDS Racing Adventures. Just checking the lap pace we're getting from Daniel Alleman. And oh, so I'm not entirely sure how long ago he came in. It's all been a bit of a blaze because with the sudden flurry and wet weather tyres having to be pulled off and slicks to, to be put on. It's been uh, chopping and changing, but uh, just to reiterate, Adam Christodoulou in from the lead, just waiting to see if the third driver will get aboard the 9.30 Porsche. Two Chinese teammates this weekend, Martin, who started, and it looks like it should be the turn of Eric Zhang to replace Adam Christodoulou, but that was quite a drive, Joe. Darren Wood, who's uh, watching back in the UK, is asking if it's ever been done before, ever, if we're 12, uh, a 24 inch series race has ever been led by a cup car. I think it has. Don't ask me to be specific. I think it has. We certainly haven't had a, a 992 car win a race overall, but we have had an IMSA race won by a GT class car. Uh, Petit Le Mans was won by a GT, a GT Porsche, wasn't it? Back in the rain, rain affected race many years ago. I think Nick was there. Yeah, he probably was, but he's quick on his feet. Adam Christodoulou is quick behind the wheel. Let's unite Adam with Nick. Okay. Is that just showing off, leading the race in a Awesome. Well, we, we just stayed out there like, uh, I know this place like the back of my hand and it was just one of those that if it only rained a little bit, then we'll just stay out there because it dries so fast here. And honestly, the, the cup car's a lot of fun to drive. And I think actually when you're on slick tires versus GT3 cars on slick tires in the wet conditions, because it's a skinnier tire, I think it works a bit better. But uh, no, it's a lot of fun out there. So uh, yeah, just, just try to go as quick as I could. We'll see where we end up after this pit stop because we were hoping for a safety car, that's why we were, or a Code 60, that's why we were staying out there so long. But uh, no, I had a lot of fun out there. Yeah, I mean, is it down to the, the weight distribution of the Porsche as well? You know, with the weight over the rear, that helps keep heating the rear tyres, is that an advantage? Yeah, I guess so, like, especially with the slick tyres in the damp conditions. But it's just about getting the thing rotated and then, like, point and squirt with this thing, all the weights over the rear, so you use whatever grip you've got to your advantage. Um, but it's just one of, the, it's one of those, just staying on the wet lines and just trying to stay calm. Um, I, I didn't even realise we were leaving overall until they just said so. We know you as an AMG driver, we know you as a Nürburgring specialist. Is it, is it just... As a professional racing driver, not that hard to convert to a, to a, to a Porsche. I think like, I've been racing long enough, and I, it's the first time I've been in the 992. Uh, I did a little bit of coaching and testing in the 991 with customers over the last few years. But uh, I like to think any of the top guys will jump in a car and, and be quick straight away. Look at some of the Audi guys and Lambo guys that have jumped in between different brands for the start of this year for the Nürburgring, and straight away they're quick off the mark. Great stuff, Adam. Thank you very much. And I need to answer a question for you, Joe. Uh, the Porsche Cup cars used to lead at Dubai every year after an hour because they wouldn't stop 
as early as the GT3s. Ah, so yeah, they would lead point. on a fuel uh, strategy or fuel yeah. tankness. And he'd always have a few laps. And occasionally, there's a problem around that time, we'd see one leading about two and a half hours. But certainly, we've certainly never seen a Porsche leading as far as any intervention, be it three hours, four hours, or six hours. Yeah, yeah, I've had, yeah. I would love to know if uh, we've ever had a cup car leading one of these races by, you know, by the by because of performance rather than, you know, early in that race the fueling aspect will have affected that. But uh, you know what? It doesn't detract from a, a pretty superstar run there from Chris De Dula. I mean, he, he, he've come to uh, to know Adam really well uh, with him racing in this series before, and of course in the. NLS at the Nürburgring, of which he is a bit of a specialist. Um, he really is a superstar, and it was a superstar drive that that car in through the overall lead. So uh, Daniel Alleman in from that overall, which he just uh, overall lead, which he just took when Adam brought the HRT Performance 930 Porsche in to the pits. And now it's the turn of the number 91 car. Driver change occurring down there. They had four drivers in their lineup, so it could probably be Alfred Renard. I think that was the, the the news we got down on the pit. We thought it might be Robert, but with Lauren Heinrich. Making a five driver lineup, they've obviously decided just to have the four, but uh, looks like a fairly standard pit stop for the 91 crew. They're right up towards pit exit, I think they're the final garage before uh, the track, uh, the pit lane turns to the right and then runs down the hill towards the fueling area. But up on the jacks, down on the, down on the tarmac. Again, standard pit stop, executed very well indeed by Herbert Motorsport. New leader though, Bruce. There is the new leader, the heart of racing, Mercedes. Goes through into the lead, Ian James, who is at the wheel of that number 27, Mercedes, and will take the lead. And I believe he's just been in the pits and he's now out. Uh, Not sure. No, I think he's only had four pit stops. I think he should be coming in for Roman De Angelis, who is yet to go out. Yes, you're right. Yeah, he's yeah. been in the car over 90 metres, 93 to come up to 94 minutes. So, yeah, I can't just uh, work that one out. So Ian James now at the wheel, and you know what, Bruce? If this, you, if this is where we're at, with you know we're coming in towards the last pit stops tomorrow afternoon, it's not so important that, and it's going to be just down to where you are in relation to the leader, as to what you do towards the end of this first segment, whether or not you pit uh, out of sequence to put yourself on a fuel fuel load, or whether or not you restart tomorrow's. Uh, section the, the, the last six hours on an empty tank and then pit early. It, it, it all you're all heading towards and trying to gauge where you're going to be for that last fuel window, which is about 80 minutes, just over an hour for a GT3 car, so maybe 70 minutes, 55, 70 minutes. You have to think backwards when you get towards the end of well, we treat it as two six hour races, but one thing that's just suddenly occurred on our screen is green. Cars now setting their fastest lap of the race. So often are sort of on actually just looking there, checking their pit stops. They're actually very early in their stint, but they're on slick tires on a track that is now dry, as opposed to the predecessors. Those who were on wet tires were struggling to get any <laughs> wet patches to drive on, and those who were on slicks just had a damp track to drive on. But now it's a properly dry track. And consider this, Bruce. We started in beautiful sunshine, totally dry. And for the, to see green lap times being produced on the lap on the on the timing screen, that means quickest lap of the race since we started this. So that's the quickest lap times from those cars. And one of those cars, no surprise, the Monster Motorsports Porsche, currently eighth in GT3, the number 16 car, Benny Simmonson. You know, they've they've kept that superstar in the toolbox right until the next stage. They, they have to. All the drivers at the moment are in the top 30 something. There are five drivers who set their cars fastest lap. None of them are in the top 10. So it could be the case you put Am Am Pro. It could be going that way. But I, when I see the drivers in the top 10 starting to beat their best lap time so far in this race, we know the track conditions are at their very very best. Right. Let's just run down the order if I may. Ian James, top of the charts, heart of racing, Mercedes, but I think that will be coming in. In fact, it's uh, Daniel Alleman. Uh, it should be coming in very soon to go to Roman De Angelis. That's the lead of the race. Daniel Alleman came in in the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. That's still listed as second. And 96, the Santalok Audi listed in third. Elliot Earhart just took over the Shearer Sport PHX Audi. That was the one that Pierre Caffer did such a good job on slick tyres, but then they brought in 
that car and stuck it in the garage, checked it out. But it, 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 its first pit stop, we heard there was there was something slightly untoward, but they're still right at the sharp end of the field for Shearer Sport PHX. Dropped two laps off the lead lap, though. Two laps off the leader, I should say. Uh, that's what's caused that. I did it. Uh, we, we're still not aware. Maybe that's a, a mission for Nick if he chooses to accept it, is to find out exactly what the concerns were and if indeed they found what was causing those concerns. Because that was what's delayed that car. It was, uh, it's kind of put it out of sequence with the cars ahead of it, currently fourth, which isn't too bad considering you've been in the pits all that time. Absolutely not. So Ian James definitely must owe us a pit stop. He's one hour and 37 minutes into the stint in the heart of racing. Mercedes, Roman De Angelis, Canadian racer, has yet to have a go here. Ian James had two goes. He's enjoyed it so much. He was racing here last weekend, but that was the heart of racing. Aston Martin uh, in the World Endurance Championship. But he's getting to know the place. Never raced here before. Well, not for 25 years, as he explained. And suddenly two in two weekends. And... Uh, at six hours last weekend, the WEC, the World Endurance Championship, and two lots of six hours this weekend, so he's definitely got the spa bug and getting a lot of track time. Leading the race, but the pit stop surely will be this time around. 992 now being led by the 909 numbered red camel car. The point is still at the wheel of that car. He's been in the car just over an hour now, and that car's currently fifth overall. Second in the 992 class, Ayrton Redon, now at the wheel of the 903 numbered red ant Porsche. And then we've got the HRT Performance Porsche 930, Shinji Z, or commonly known as Martin, Martin now at the wheel of the 930, having took over that car from Adam Christodoulou, third in 992 and ninth overall. Well, unfortunately, we just had a clash going into, <laughs> into La Source. The number 71 Audi, one of the two Juta racing Audis, was given a clatter up the inside. A Lamborghini went up the inside and into the flank of the Audi. There is debris all over and it's gonna be quite hard for the drivers it's blind for them it's just around the corner oh. and the bonnet has folded back on the windscreen of the Gosner family car the MP uh, racing number 58 and uh, that has rotated through the family and it's going up with the bodywork rubbing on the front of the car the driver how anything can be seen as he's got through Eau Rouge got through Randy on he can look just about under he's got a the tiny, folded back bonnet he's oh. got a tiny slit between the folded back bonnet and the windscreen he can barely see I bet he's crouching down he, po he possibly is at, at his slack and his belts the wiper struck so the bonnets flew up on the 58 and it's David Gosner one of the three Gosner oh. children of Thomas and now at the top of the crest of the hill up at uh, Lake Con. the track goes right and he hasn't managed it at all he missed the turning point with the car that has bodywork and he's pulling off parking as far from the circuit as he can and even on the slope the bonnet doesn't I'm, go down I'm not sure he could have been any further away from the pits no he, it happened at the source and he's driven that car with the bonnet up masking that uh, windscreen all the way up through Eau Rouge down the Camel Street and he's pulled off on the outside there's a bit of an escape road on the outside of the Lacombe sequence of uh, corners Marshall there with a cigarette over an, over an engine bin. Not really advisable, but that's another story. Is it a whistle? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that's a lit cigarette, yes. But we'll think about that later. The 58, though, that's going to have to be recovered with a flatbed truck or the like back to the pits before the 58 Mercedes can resume. Code 60, not surprisingly. OK, it's the old circuit, effectively, where it used to go into the next valley. That's the straight ahead for Lake Comp. The uh, Marshalls have managed to wrestled the bonnet halfway down, but now they're pushing the 58 Mercedes back out of the way. Code 60, but importantly, Ian James didn't dive into the pits, but I think, Nick, everybody else did. And certainly the SBS team that runs uh, Heart of Racing is waiting for him. Uh, we have just seen the uh, Santalock team. They've come through just for fuel. Drivers stayed on board. There has been a full service for the uh, 909 Red Camels Porsche in the uh, Porsche Cup class. We've also had a couple of the other cars trundling through. We've got the uh, the um, four, four, the, the brains gone here. Uh, a couple of the Mercedes GT4 cars, but uh, yeah, I think so. Did, did Ian miss an opportunity to come in earlier? Because they are waiting for him now, and it's by the way, it's going to be Gray Newell who's going to get in there. They really are saving Roman DeAndre's drive time for tomorrow, aren't they? So they've got Gray Newell going back in the car. It's coming in now, isn't it? Here it comes, as does the MP Motorsport. It's a phalanx of Mercedes. We've got the uh, bright silver Korean 403 Atlas GT4 car, uh, the Charles Putnam driven 85 machine, and right at my feet, here stops the leader, uh, the heart of racing. Uh, Mercedes AMG, and as I said before, it's going to be Gray New York getting in, Ian James out. So we're having an interesting situation where a number of cars are coming in from the lead. 
Thank you very much, Nick. And just to highlight who else went off up there, the Sankia Motorsport GT4 BMW was shoved out in that battle. One of the two Juta racing Audis, and up the inside came that uh, David Gossner-driven bright green metallic Mercedes that was the bludgeon and the incident under investigation, quite clearly. The track has been largely cleared at La Source. The pit stops, I would think, have largely been completed. So drivers yeah. walking away yes, from the car. Yes, they have. I, I turned the microphone off to prevent from deafening you because, you know, that's the sort of classy guy I am. Uh, but it takes a while to take back again. Yeah, they, they, are, they are all running through. We are, of course, going to wait for the Gosner car to come back, which I assume will be on a flat bed truck. So uh, I think you can see him studying it in, one the, in some of the shots. I don't think Ian James is around for a word. I'll see if I can grab him in a second. Thank you very much, Nick. And now it's time for a very quick interview. Let's take a look what we got to see. Hi there, I'm Stephen Cho, uh, driver for the uh, number 403 Atlas BX, uh, Hanguk Atlas BX uh, AMG GT4. Well, I think uh, you said it. I mean, it's one of those uh, world famous circuits uh, that is on every driver's list. Um, you know, great history, uh, a lot of amazing races that have happened here. Uh, we can see today here uh, at the square is an amazing uh, atmosphere, so uh, the fans are great, uh, the atmosphere, the, the area of uh, Belgium here is beautiful, the circuit is super challenging and so uh, it's always um, a lot of fun to come here. Yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be uh, 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 really good, I'm uh, definitely looking forward to it. Uh, the, the Astro was great, but I'm not as experienced in a, in a front wheel drive car, it was my first time in a TCR, first time at Spa, my first session was in the wet very cold in the dark. So I'm sure that uh, from that experience, uh, this time will be much better. Uh, we've got our crew with us here as well. So, you know, not underestimating the challenge uh, or the competition, um, but very much looking forward to it. And uh, we're prepared very well. And so uh, um, cautiously confident. You know, we're based in South Korea. We've done most of our racing there. Uh, and so to have the opportunity to join Kreventik here um, and to race the European series across all of these uh, famous uh, circuits, um, you know, we're really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we're, of course, representing our team. But as you said, because we're the sole South Korean entrance, you know, there's a little bit of uh, uh, pressure, responsibility and pride, I guess, uh, to represent all of Korean motorsports. And so, you know, we're looking forward to it and uh, just relishing the challenge, I guess. Yeah, I think, of course, the, the, uh, uh, the focus is to do well in the championship. Um, but when you come to an event, I think you just focus on the event. Um, as you said, in Mugello, we had a, a, a nice result. Um, the competition was really tight there, and we had a bit of bad luck, but also a bit of good luck. Uh, so, you know, I think this event is going to be also very challenging. Uh, there's a lot of entries, um, and we know that the competitors are really strong. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we've, keep, we've got, you know, an eye on the championship as well. So maybe that means, you know, we're starting to be a little bit conservative in, 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 uh, in, in certain areas. With the, with the strategy, but uh, yeah, I mean, one eye on the championship, but focusing on the event for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, again, it's a, it's a great organization. Um, working with the, with the guys at Creventic, uh, you know, we, we get a lot of support, and um, you know, it's always uh, 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 really nice to, to work with the guys. Again, the calendar um, across uh, different countries and, and all these, these different uh, circuits. It's a great challenge and it's also a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, with endurance, you know, so, you know, we've done most of our racing over the last 14 years, mostly doing uh, sprint, sprint racing, uh, which is, of course, uh, exciting and great in its own way. But uh, endurance has been fantastic. It's a, a, a whole, whole nother challenge for us. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, trying to expand our experience base uh, on the endurance side has been really good. Yeah. So David Gosner walking around, looking at the damage to his car, looking slightly rueful there, sort of kicking tires, not buying a new car, but uh, the bonnet is damaged. And the car has been pushed back behind the barriers now, so he's not intending to drive that background to give to the family. So he'll just have to greet the family later. Not sure what information he's been given there. Looked a bit of an ambitious move there down the inside, but uh, while we deliberate that, let's head down to the pits where Nick dearman has got Ian Jibbs. Yeah. Well, Ian, you bought the car in from the lead. It's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, I mean, we took a bit of a gamble and they left me out on slicks there when it was raining pretty hard, but it, it turned around, came back to us. So, uh, yeah, we're in a blast out there. There is a massive ebb and flow about this entire race. I've, I've got no idea who's, who's actually leading overall. We've got, we got Porsche 992s in the lead. We've got cars on wet, some people with slight wet setups. How do you see it? 
Well, it really is. You know, you, you have to be so patient when you're on slicks and it starts to rain. You have to just let everybody go by and then it comes back to you. But, uh, yeah, we're just happy to be out there. And every lap we do, we're raising money for Seattle Children's Hospital as usual. So, Great stuff. Now, you're saving Roman, aren't you? You really aren't letting him have any fun today. No, we're just like, you know, we're just getting him hungry for tomorrow. I think some more rain comes tomorrow and then he can light the place up. <laughs> I think it's like maybe some more rain today. It's just, who knows? Yeah, I know. Uh, but he'll work hard tomorrow. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. So right, plen then. plenty of smiles all round in the heart of racing team camp. But for all the drivers out on the track, it's still code 60. And some of the cars out there, I'm thinking, I've seen you off in the gravel several times. I've just looked at the number 55 Audi. It's way, way down the order. And that was the, one of the Land Motorsport entries. It's had its problems. We saw Stefan Weininger go off. Tim Muller had a moment. Christopher Meese brought it in at the end of the first stint, which was early because the crew, crew wasn't ready for him. But uh, they, I'm sure, will try and pick off a few more places to work up. They're down in 28th position overall. Tim Muller at the wheel. Still waiting in a damp downhill uh, drop on the old pit lane. Cars trying to find a space in the refueling area. It's really tricky. It's a very narrow stretch of track, narrowing to a point at the bottom of the run. And uh, you have to make space for cars coming in, cars going out. So we'll let's have a look at what's happening in TCE. A car that's just getting on with its business, the 102 car in 30th overall. Uh, Magnus Holmgard, Holmgard Motorsports Cupra, currently leading the touring car endurance series. It's got five GT class cars between itself and it's completed. So you can see that 82 laps. It's a lap ahead of the other cars in TCE as we go green out on track. Only three cars left in the refueling area. They'll be slightly frustrated. It went green while they were at a standstill, but it shouldn't be too long. And let's see how quickly we get up to full racing speed on a track as good as it's been at any point in the race so far. The fastest laps for some of the drivers outside the top 15 or so were starting to come in. We had that code 60 because of the clash up at La Source and David Gosner looking a little bit bashful by his parked Mercedes. Parked away behind the barriers up the escape pro, so completely safe now up at Le Combe. But for the drivers, it's about how much heat could they keep in their tyres on a track that's uh, dry, but uh, still quite cool. And certainly as the cars went down to Bruxelles for the first time, uh, going back to racing speed, a few of the Porsche Cup cars were having a little bit of a moment before they turned into the first of those double right-handers. But right now, don't muck up. Let's see what pace we can go. We've got an hour and 20 minutes remaining in this first six hours, the 12 hours of spa Franca Shaw. Let's settle down all over again. The multicolored livery of the Willy Motorsport by EB Motors Porsche 955, current championship leader. So it look like at the wheel of that car, currently fourth in 992. A little bit off the car in third, which is now flip flop back to be Luke Breukers, now at the wheel of the 909 Red Camel car, just having took over that car from his brother Rick. That car now giving the lead back to Ayrton Redon in the Red Ant Racing car, the 903 leading the class. Luke Breukers now at the wheel, and it seems to be that the majority of the driving being done by the two younger brothers. Dad did start the car, I believe. Did, did, no, he didn't. Has he been in the car today? Uh, not that I saw. We did take uh, time off to have a, a buffalo steak for lunch, but... Uh... <laughs> No, it gives him another day to recover after his surgery at the start of the week. It's such a Broika's family thing. Surgery, smurgery. Come yeah, on, let's go race. I mean, in fairness to the he did say it was keyboard surgery. He declined the, the full clear out. And uh, to be. And we're talking about only last week that he had a burst appendix and went into hospital. And to make that the, the doctor offered him two options, and he took the option which would enable him to race here at Spa. If it had been anywhere else, he might not have been so bothered, but. Racing at Spa is an annual thing for the Broncos family. And for those of you who didn't get to listen to Nick interview, Nick's interviews on the grid at the start of the race, that of the two options, if he took option A and woke up with tubes sticking out of his side, it hadn't gone the way he wanted. But he woke up with no tubes, that meant racing at Spa this weekend. You've always got to tip your hat off to, to Evo Broikers in particular. So strong behind the Creventi too, he sort of makes it happen, but just doesn't ever want to miss one of the rounds. And particularly now they're racing in the Porsche Cup class. I think that adds real piquancy for this circuit. They've raced on for so many years with the TCR car, but now they're racing yeah. something at the sharp end. Let's see where the car is. 909 after the shuffles. 11th place overall with Luke. May gain a place on the next lap as well. So very well placing car. Still 11th as it starts another lap. As the 55 Audi, I mentioned it's had its problems, going for another rotation, a semi-rotation. 
and rejoins and oh got onto the grass suddenly the tail of the car swung round and it kissed the barriers may not have even removed any paint but it's sitting across the circuit and now only now goes to the outside of the circuit to find a larger area of tarmac with which to rejoin tim muller having a bit of a nightmare of a 12 hours of spa it hasn't really gone his way tim muller is uh, again having some issues to contend with and is he as you describe, Bruce, that was just body work there that he did yeah. the forward and back. I'm not sure that would have caused him any problems. He's now been able to pull that 55 Land Audi, Land Motorsport Audi, back onto the off track. He's now gone back onto the track from the runoff and continues, gathers himself up, gets his composure back, down at 26th overall. Not usually the spot where we see Tim. And, uh, this Spa 12 hours is a kind of a one of those races to forget for everyone in that 55 uh, Land Motorsport Audi team. And I do take full responsibility for wishing Christian Land the best of luck after that dreadful work in the jail. That dreadful work continues. Got to change soon, Christian. Yeah, worth pointing out that was a car that was right at the sharp end of the field. With Chris Ramey starting in fifth position, soon he was in second, challenging for the race lead. But then, uh, since then, it has gone a little bit wrong. But I would say weather conditions as good as they've been at any point in the circuit. Still some grey cloud in the distance, white cloud in front, but the track is dry in the lap time. The fastest time of the race we've had so far, I think, was at two minute twenty-three. Just waiting for the race leader. Heart of Racing, Grey Newell, Mercedes to come through to never see what sort of uh, pace they're setting now in the dry. But it should be the mid two minute 25, 26, as I would reckon, maybe in the next lap or two as they get fully up to speed. But our race leader, Grey Newell, got more than 97 seconds, a minute and 37 seconds clear from Anton Ducan. But then, of course, Grey's only just come out of the pits at the start of his stint. But then, likewise, so has. Uh, Dokar in the Santa Lock Junior Team 26 well, Audi. I think the significant factor there is having pitted and retained the lead. And that, I think, is the first time we've seen that all, all race. And that's a, a significant part of the race with, uh, what have we got, less than less than a, an hour and 15 minutes now before we press the pause button. I'm not sure we've actually mentioned that the third driver in the rotation for JP Motorsport, we've had two stints from... Uh, the other drivers, but Norbert Seidler, sorry, Seidler has finally got in, the Austrian, a shame with fellow Austrian Christian Klein and the, the pole. Uh, for, for the McLaren team, of course, that's Patrick Krupinski, who's the mastermind behind the team, but uh, Norbert Seidler, very, very quick peddler indeed, and he's uh, starting to close in on the 34 Audi of Land Motorsport that's running in fourth place. So that McLaren started in 40th position, worked its way bit by bit up the order in the early stages of the race. Very good run from Patrick Kropinski. And uh, getting closer and closer to the sharp end of the field. So there are five GT3 cars in the top three positions, uh, top five positions. That not too much, but uh, we've got a, a really good tussle for position at the moment. Just actually at the tail of the top ten, Charles Putman holding on to that tenth place for CP Racing. But uh, Luke Broikers now is attacking in the Red Camels Jordan, still third in the Porsche Cup class. But uh, So in a way, his battle is slightly irrelevant with uh, Charles Putman, but he wants the track space. Well. He wants to head off after those up ahead. And it's uh, Martin, or Xinji Zhi, the HRT performance car that Adam Christodoulou got out, is the next target. That's second in the 992 Cup class. And Red Ant Racing with Ayrton Redon in uh, the lead of the class in sixth overall, a little bit of the way up the track. Yeah, it's for overall honours, of course, which is when it comes to podium time, and tomorrow we'll see Nick Damon take us through our podium presentation in his own inimitable style. It will be Charles Putman who has got his more as full of that 992 class Red Camel's car. Luke Boyk is now trying to find his way by in the... GT3, expect to see it. He's just pulling away slightly on the run to Porsche Mop. The 992 class car just running out of puff. We've seen how slippery these cars are, not seemingly the case through Blanche Mop. Well, I was just talking about how track conditions are superb. One of the very fastest laps of the race has just been set by a driver in 16th place overall. Two minutes, 23.9 seconds. For Juta Racing, the 71 Audi, that was the one we thought had spun, but it was the sister car, 72, that got around. And Jonas Gelzinius at the wheel. Looking up and down the column, of course, I did spot a 2 minute 22 
second lap, 2 minutes 22.8 on the nose, and that's the car number one, Shearer Sport PHX, which is the one that we think has had slight problems, but when it's on the track, it's really flying. It's just moved up ahead of Air Tarredon into sixth overall, so the top six positions now in the hands of GT3 runners. And again, Elliot Earhart putting in some good laps, 2 minutes 24.8 last time. I think the 222 is our fastest lap of the race. Please. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what yeah. I've hunted for, and that's exactly where I think we've got to. Oh, in fact, I'll give you a two minute 22.4, the car that's had its problems. That would have been Christopher Ooh. Meese in the 55 Audi, but alas, right. with the other problems, that's down in 26th place. Out on the track, though, a lap ago, as the cars went up to the top of the hill at Le Combe, it was uh, Charles Putman in 10th place. He's still there for CP Racing in the Mercedes, but tucked in behind him, Luke Broikers, the younger of the two Broikers brothers, is looking for a way by, but Charles knows this circuit very well indeed. He's putting his Mercedes where he needs to, but he might need to pull across at Bruxelles to protect that position but he's left the door slightly open and Luke's having a look but it's a two-part corner and as they exit the second part on the wide line CP Racing Charles Putman was ahead but of course he was then on the tight line for the next corner for Jackie Ixco and Luke Broikers went wow show me the outside I'm young I'm going for it the thing is though Bruce that outside line is slightly damp isn't it and that's quite brave. I mean, uh, uh, Luke probably felt stifled there by the CP Mercedes. I'm pretty sure I can see a bit of smoke coming, coming from the rear right-hand wheel arch when the car corners left. There seems to be a bit of wheel arch rubbing on that right-hand rear tyre of the CP Mercedes. A bit of smoke coming from that. We'll, uh, we'll continue to check that out. We'll go through a right-hander now. And then as we go through the left hand of sorry, no, we're a different part of the track. We're at uh, through campus and through Stamadol. On the run down to Blanchemont now, the CP Racing Mercedes, which is not in a battle for class honours with that car ahead of it. We've had a change of position in the CP car, currently third in the GT3 AM category. Worth pointing out, of course, the driver that's leading the race outright is first in the GT3 AM category. That's Heart of Racing's Grey Newell. He and he's been sharing the driving with Ian James. They've nearly got five hours under their bonnet in the six hours here on Saturday at spa Francorchamps, and being fed red meat and hit with a stick in the cage at the back of the garage is Roman De Angelis waiting for his go tomorrow. But, you know, they're really doing the hard yards at the moment, leading this race by... Uh, 1 minute 22 seconds over the Santalot Racing Audi, which, yes, at the moment is hauling him in. We knew that would be the case. You, I tell you what, what a situation to be in. Talk about keeping your powder dry. I mean, Roman De Angelis is the, is the superstar driver in that number 27. Greer and Ian will both probably agree with that sentiment. And to be in a position where, with one hour to go before the break, with just over an hour to go before the break, you've got the lead of this race and you've got, you know, almost four hours of Roman De Angelis tomorrow. It will be four hours, because he'll maximise his two-hour stints as much as you can. It's called doing the hard yards, and they've done the hard yards oh, yeah. through very, very tricky conditions. So that makes it all the more impressive where they've got to for Heart of, Heart of Racing team with their Mercedes run by Mercedes specialist, SPS Automotive Performance, and that's going very well indeed. I'm looking at Charles Putman's car. Which wheel arch did you reckon the smoke was coming from? It's through the right hand, Bruxelles. It's through, le it's through left handers. Through left handers, okay. So take a look when it comes down the slopes, the Jackie X curve. Couldn't quite see it. I think that no, was also the camera there. angle, but we'll keep an eye out for that. But uh, looking at lap pace for Charles Putman, two minute 34, that's about right. Maybe a little down from where he might be at this stage of the race for the track conditions as they are, but also he's early in his stint. He's a half an hour into the stint, so it's time for to I didn't want to say that. We'll gloss over that. Um, if Dai is... I know Dai's listening, I'm talking about. Um, the Hassar T car still in the pits. Now, Nick said he would give them, what, 20 minutes, did you say? An hour, right. I'm not sure it's been in the pits for that amount of time. No, I wouldn't have thought so. We saw Stefan Perrin not long into his stint, but I would reckon that was maybe 40 minutes ago. Mind you, time is flying because uh, a lot been, is happening. It's been in, uh, been in 70 minutes, uh, so an hour and 10. Ah, oh, right, it's, Nick's telling me it was an hour from when he said, which is hard to quantify, really, because <laughs> I don't know how far into that 70 minutes. So when do you reckon then? So, uh, Diana, down in the pits, it seems relatively quiet.
racing the number 85, Charles. Um, you're, you're standing outside the garage here, just sort of watching and listening to what's going on. How would you summarize uh, this event so far? Absolutely chaotic and crazy and awesome and nerve wracking. Obviously the changing conditions and which tire to get at which time. And we're keeping the Hankook guys busy mountain, mountain tires. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, very challenging obviously, but it's one of the reasons we do it, you know, true endurance racing today for sure. Are you having any issues with the car? Is the car losing fuel or is everything okay? No, so far the cars run perfect. Drivers have missed up a little bit here and there, but other than that, uh, the car's still running just as perfect as it ever has. You're so used to doing these long races at, with the same team, with the same teammates. How much confidence does that give you coming into events like this, especially when it's you know such a tricky one? Yeah, lots, obviously. All the guys at CP Racing, we're a real tight-knit family. You know, we don't see each other for a couple weeks, a couple months, we get right back into the groove again. Communication's good, set up information, everything, and just, and, you know, Heino and Jan and the guys that work on the car, we never have an a issue with anything. We were remotely thinking about anything mechanical can go wrong with the car. It's always absolutely perfect. So confidence here is important, especially in these conditions, especially at this track. Every driver we talk to, you know, they describe it as a bit of a roller coaster here at Spa. You're just having to contend with so many different aspects all the time. Is that what keeps you wanting to come back and keep doing this? Absolutely. It's it's one of the most challenging tracks in the world, for sure. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we do it for. If it was easy, it wouldn't uh, be as much fun. So, yeah, the... Obviously, it's beautiful here, the changing conditions, but this track, it is a, it is a true roller coaster for sure. Well, I'll let you get back to the team, Charles. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Interesting to hear. Of course, Charles has been out explaining why the drivers keep coming back. Now, during that interview, I had a slight message, and Joe thought he'd seen something coming issuing out of that CP Racing Mercedes, and I think I've heard a message suggesting it might be some fuel that's uh, that's leaking out of that car, so it may be something that needs investigating. Car's just gone through Blanchemont, and definitely some sort of either smoke or mist or something is coming, whether it's fuel or whether it's a, a tyre rubbing on the wheel arch. Um, we just saw it through Blanchemont there. So Putman at the wheel of the car in 11th place overall. He is currently third in the Amplas. Antonio Senera in the ETP race in Porsche. Um, is the car behind and also that car also in the GT3 AM class so that's a class battle that's beginning to develop in 11th and 12th overall and again I'm still keeping an eye on the gap between first which is the grey newell driven heart of racing Mercedes and Anton Duquan the 26 Santa Lot racing Audi it's down to around a minute it's coming down fairly fast indeed now Great battles up and down the order, but one that's very close indeed is fourth place. Norbert Siedler has just moved ahead of Tim Fogler, the JP Motorsport McLaren. And Tim Fogler having been passed, having to dive past one of the uh, Porsche Cup class cars. But uh, as he does that, the McLaren black and gold in livery escaping up the hill towards Blanchimont and pulling clear. So we expected Norbert to go well, and he is. And not far behind Norbert, just look for the green out uh, of the yellow and black Audi. The luminous yellow and black Audi, that's Elia Earhart, who's coming, and he's coming fast. And he is behind Vogler for track position, so that's a two-car battle for fourth and fifth. It's now a three-car battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah, but there's another car in that group, and it's the car that's second place. It's the uh, Anton Duquin Santelot racing. It's the bright green livery on the Santelot car, 0-2 on the screen. So we've got... Uh, <laughs> Class positions and outright positions and, and tucked in behind the Santelot car is the number one Elia Earhart car, which is trying to fight its way back. It lost time, as you point out, was uh, two laps down because of time spent in the garage sorting out whatever mysterious problems they had. But right now, the pace is with Earhart marginally faster uh, than Anton Docan, but it's how they work the traffic at this moment. Yeah, trying to get that lap back off that second place Santelot car. And we'll see. If Earhart can do that, they're out onto the Kemmel Street now. And we've got the three Audis that are coming together. Vogler, Earhart, Seedler in the, in the McLaren, slight, just slightly ahead. We've got that uh, Antoine Duquesne getting involved in that battle, but uh, he's a lap ahead of everybody. And he's about to put another lap on Vogler if he's not careful. 
he's right on the tail of Vogler through Purcells. And that track looks slippery, Bruce, doesn't it? It really does. It's as though the temperature suddenly dropped and people just aren't getting any grip. And to prove that point, off the racing line at Radion, but not doing what Stefan Perrin did, one of the Porsche Cup... I'll tell you who that was. I think that was Benny Siemenson, who's just set the fastest lap. I was about to talk about him. He's seventh place, but he's catching Elliot Earhart. And unfortunately, he cut that corner a little too much. Oh, Rouge, he just couldn't get the car to turn in properly. The second part of the corner where it fuses into Radion, across over the curves, across the painted track on the outside, but fortunately got back to the black stuff, the racing circuit, and then continued on up the Kemmel Strait. But a uh, heart in mouth moment there for the flying day. Car number 16, Modern and Motorsport. It was started uh, by John Shen, then it was into the hands of Francis Gia, but uh, Benny Siemenson, we know he's quick and he's proving it yet again. In fact, faster than anybody else on the track at the moment. We've got a couple of 10-second penalties being issued to a couple of the cars at the forefront of this field. Uh, we've got the number 69, number 69, Norbert Seedler McLaren. That's uh, been given a 10 second penalty to serve. It's in fourth at place. It, at its next pit stop. The 85, the CP Racing Mercedes, track infringement. Again, track limit infringement. So it's uh, six defence at here. So a 10 second penalty. Now the 979, which is. Yeah, it's had its problems in the race, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's been given a 10 seconds. But I think the important one's there. The 69 McLaren and the 85 Mercedes, they are going to serve 10. So they're going to take 10 seconds more than they would have liked in their next pit stop. Yeah, we had some had some penalties earlier in the race. And, uh, of course, it all gets slightly lost when you have the uh, code 60s and the whole flurry of cars running in. They're not running at their sort of natural given stopping times but they know a race at Spa is very seldom going to do that there will be code sixes there will be a chance to dive in there will be a reason to dive in of course because uh, with rain coming down earlier in the race several times did you guess right can you stay out on slicks did you guess you needed to go to rain tires and that was wrong you needed to come in so staying in sequence is something that's very very hard to do so let's just uh, round it up it's almost a minute precisely the gap between Gray Newell leading this race and the heart of racing uh, Mercedes from Santalot Racing's number 26 Audi with Anton Ducroix going very well in that next in line Ralph Bone somewhat further back and not as quick in the 91 Porsche but then comes Norbert Seedler but as Joe just pointed out there is a 10 second stop and go penalty to be served and out of sequence a lap down but pushing the car that's second is Elia Earhart the number one Audi from Shearer Sport PHX. Very quick indeed, but at the moment is slightly a distraction for Anton Ducroix. He's second and he doesn't want a car that's a lap down, sitting on his tail, lap after lap, fainting to go to the inside and just really making him quite uneasy. That's a great battle. That's a great battle. We've got the, the number 34, Tim Vogler. In He's fifth. got the second place car ahead of him, uh, behind him, right behind him, uh, who's about to put him another lap down. And then you've got Elia Earhart behind the second place car, but he's already gone that lap down off that car. And then about to join in is Benny Simonson. Last time past the pits, 21 seconds was the gap, but that's going to close. So those three Audis are about to be joined by a Porsche. And Benny Simonson will want to get involved in the modern motorsports car. And he can't wait. Three cars just lapping together and really pushing on. I mean, Duquesne there. We saw there on a replay how De Quinn was really, really pushing and he was getting a little bit of power oversteer through, I think that was the second part of Fania, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly it was. We saw cars going up there, including the number 55 Audi. At the moment, that's circulating, but way down the order. And now, only now, does the car that's second get out of that battle for fifth and sixth positions. And this is the moment into La Source with the VDS Racing Mark car in the middle of the track. <laughs> and... I don't know quite frankly how Eli Earhart managed to t turn as tightly as that, but by the time he went on the pit wall side of the Mark VDS car, around the outside at La Source went uh, Tim Vogler in the Land Motorsport Audi number 34. He got the move done. He's now trying to get a slipstream up the Kemmel Strait. And it really is up the Kemmel Strait. If you ever tried walking it to try and see if he can get past Anton Doka. Anton don't, doesn't want any of their battle. He's in second place. He's closing down the gap, gap to the race leader and he's being harried. It's a good position to be in, though, putting yeah, a is. lap on the cars be directly behind you. That's uh, true. Especially considering we're less than an hour now to the interval. So we're going to tomorrow where everything closes up. And Earhart flashing the lights there at Vogler. That's the battle for fifth place there. 
Elie Earhart in the black and bright Dayglow Green livery. They're just coming up behind the white and blue car of the Land team. But what, what's he got ahead of him? He's suddenly got another gaggle of cars. This is in front of the car in second, which got fifth and sixth. They're a lap down on his tail. But if he hesitates for a second later in this lap and gets caught by the cars in fifth and sixth, it could be quite mighty. And uh, it was a nine, 919 Porsche. I think that's Matt Kehoe at the moment. Let's have a look. Yeah, American racer down in 28th position, goes for a little bit of a rotation, waits his turn and rejoins the circuit. That was just above Bruxelles corner. The Audi back continues, though. What a great, uh, what a great race this is. It's a race for fifth and sixth. The green car ahead of them, that's a lap ahead in second place. The white and blue car, that's Tim Vogler. And then the black and bright yellow car behind is Elie Earhart. And that's the battle for position. The white car against the black and green car is the battle for position. Through Blanchemont, up towards the bus stop now. Through the left hand of Blanchemont they go. Earhart will be lining the car up for an outbreaking manoeuvre. They've got traffic ahead. They're going to end up tripping over traffic. And Vogler has to, and Earhart has to step in behind. And right there in the middle of the bus stop chicane was a Lamborghini. I was going to say a slow Lamborghini. A GT3 Yes, yeah, the GT3 Poland car. That's Andrei Lubendowski. He keeps out of the way, but it's very hard in the bus stop chicane. And Tim Fogler dives up the inside, but around his nose and up into fifth place goes Elia Earhart. Took the outside line into the La Source hairpin, gets the job done, but while they were doing that, getting around the Lamborghini, finally Anton Ducan's got a little bit of breathing space. Still stays in second place, but now he can concentrate on continuing to close the gap to the race leader, to Gray Newell in the heart of racing Mercedes. It's under a minute now, 57 seconds. It's still a, a mountain to climb, but I think with clear traffic, we'll see Anton Ducan taking three, four seconds a lap out of the race leader. But the clock keeps tanting down. We're under an hour, 55 minutes remain. Until the first half, this is six hours today. We've got six hours tomorrow for the Creventic 24 hours of spa Francorchamps. Now then, the question is, can that number one Shearer car just pull away from Vogler in the other Audi and get on terms with the McLaren ahead of him on track? It's the McLaren of Norman Seidler. The GP Hotspot McLaren was... Is that seven seconds? No, it isn't. It's four seconds, actually, so not much time to make up. However, Vogler's not over, is he? He's not done, is he? He might have had that fourth place taken from him. Sorry, that fifth place taken from him. But he kind of wants it back. He's very fast on the straight, and as we go through the infield section here at Spa, out of double gauche and heading towards Fanyet, or Piff Path, as it used to be called, he looks a little bit flustered, I must say, uh, Tim Vogler. Elie Earhart taking a much cleaner line uh, through the double, double gauche, double left-hander. And uh, where are they in their tyre sequence, their pit stops? They're sort of halfway through a run. They're 44, 45 minutes into a run. We've got 54 minutes remaining, so they more than likely will have to come in. Delighted to see the, yeah. the one Toyota Supra is still in the race, entered by... X Swift racing events and the guy driver who started, I believe, was Gavin Pickering. He got out of a cockpit full of smoke, but it's uh, every time I look at those Supras in GT4, they look a great tool, really wieldy. Yeah, let's have some more of them, please. Yeah, they're a great looking car. Proper sports type looking sports car, the Toyota Supra, and a bit of a beast. And uh, the Supra GT4 from Toyota very, very looks very much in place in that GT4 field here. Electrical fire is out, Gav. Described that, uh, well, you know, well, well, there's no smoke without fire, and uh, obviously some overheating electrics caused the cockpit to fill with smoke. That hasn't occurred again, has it? Not as far as it's I can see. So, clear. going well, going well at the moment, but you have a little setback, but you've got 12 hours to play, and I think it was only half an hour in, so at the time, Nick said, yeah. don't worry, you've got 11 and a half hours to make it up again, but they're pressing on, that's good to see. Right, Gray Newell still leading the race in the heart of racing Mercedes. He's uh, 54 seconds clear, but he's losing about pretty much three seconds a lap to Anton Ducat, who's really driven very well at Spa. The, thing is, the thing is, Bruce, when in, in what is it, 50, let's call that just under 53 minutes. In 53 minutes, that 54 seconds, if it finishes like that, that's going to disappear. Because tomorrow at the restart, those cars will start side by side. So it doesn't really matter 
where you've, as long as you finish on that lead lap, you could finish with the leader directly behind you. When you come to restart tomorrow, you're going to be right. Be, you're going to be right with the leader. You're going to gain all of that lap back. So that gap there, as long as you're on the lead lap, that's all that counts. Right. How many cars have we got on the lead lap? The leader, correct, and the car in second place. Yeah. Yeah, only exactly. the pair of them. So he's effectively. Well, as we say, just uh, 55, 54 seconds now. But it's about also just keeping the car on its toes for tomorrow, feeling all is good, all is right. It's about keeping things clean. And even at this late stage of the race, just a short few minutes ago, Matt Kehoe went for a spin in the 990 Black Falcon Porsche. But uh, nothing to more, but it could happen. The CP Racing, Charles Putman-driven Mercedes is going slowly down the slope past the old pits. Is something untoward? Is he picking up the pace again? Turns into Eau Rouge up to Radion. That car is in 11th position overall, looking at his last lap time. 2 minute 34, that's sort of ish, that's where he was, but that certainly looks slow to my eye. It, it does look slow, we're going to be able to see. They're on, he's on the Camel straight, and that car behind him just reeling him in. Yeah, that's the 9 on 11 Porsche in the Porsche Cup class, sorry, in the GTX class, 27th overall, but yeah, it certainly took him over. Just trying to see anything else. This is the car, the CP Racing Mercedes, we thought was leaking fuel. What if the fuel has been unloading faster than he knows? He hasn't just checked. Think he's gone out thinking he's got a certain amount of fuel on board and it's leaking out, but the 911 car, which shouldn't be as quick, is right on his tail now, down into Bruxelles. Uh, Charlie Putman, very experienced driver, been racing for literally years and years. He started mainly racing in the US, but he's been racing in Europe, former champion, of course, in this series, team's champion, driver's champion. And the car has picked up a bit of pace. I'm not sure he's on at full race speed, He's just gone through Jackie Hicks here. He goes through double gauche now. So he's still got quite a bit of this lap to complete before he, if indeed he is going to pull in the pits. We suspect he might. Out of double gauche, still going downhill towards Fanyet, which is a right left S's. But well, he's done more than an hour in the car, so it's, it, and we've got, what, 50 minutes remaining, so he's not going to be able to do all that without coming in. So maybe he is going to come in this time around. But the 911 Porsche. 27th position, it's all over the back, but can't find a way back. It's uh, Martin Schluter at the wheel of that oh. car. We've got one, two, three, four cars off. We've got the 55 Audi again oh, that's off second the circuit. Car. Santalok Audi from second place, and Elia Earhart beached in the number one Audi. We've got uh, a green and black Mercedes 418 to my eye. That's also in the gravel. So I think uh, one little manoeuvre has gone wrong. Tim Muller gets the 55 car going together. And on the replay, the, port, the Mercedes is spinning in backwards. The 55 Audi rotates behind it. The number one Audi rotates and is facing backwards. And all the way around the outside of the circuit, through a gravel trap, and fortunately, beyond goes Anton Duquin. Oh. But uh, the number one Audi is beached on the kerbs, and the 418 Mercedes, no, don't say, just bring it home. That's at turn seven. It's the exit of Les Combes. You've turned right, you've turned left, and it's the sharper right before you go down the slope to Bruxelles. And for Elia Earhart, who, who was driving so well in yeah. that great little battle, uh, they came across the 55 Audi going backwards, having had the 418 Mercedes going back, and the, uh, the Audi's been hit in the rear. Let's go down to the pits with Dyer. There's going to be a scramble. Race leader. Hi. There is a bit of a scramble going on down here. You're absolutely right, Bruce. The 85 CP Racing came into the pits. They actually were not going to do that. I heard you talking about them earlier, but they have had a driver change. And uh, Charles Espenab has jumped back in behind the wheel. They've changed tyres as well. And uh, <laughs> that was a bit hairy, Shane. That was a bit. That was a bit of a hairy stop there. Wasn't quite expected. I saw you running from the back of the garage out to the front. Yeah, I was that uh, looking at the screens. My job is to kind of help them. If I'm not getting in, my job is to help the driver get in. So uh, we've been working on our our pit stops and our driver changes every day since we got here, and that just showed uh, what the hard work pays off. Yeah, you all jumped into action pretty quick there. I mean, um, the, John, um, the guys up in the commentary booth were, were discussing whether there was something wrong with the car. Ah, they've sort of seen maybe some, they thought maybe you were losing some fuel or something or just concentrating on that, but it seems to all to be okay. No, everything's okay. Sometimes as well as if you see in the back of the car, when they pull the nozzle, a little bit of the residual fuel kind of goes to the back section of it. And every race when we get done, there's this dirty mark and it looks like we're leaking fuel where it's just a part of the Mercedes kind of goes out there. All the other Mercedes aren't white in the back and so you only really see it on ours. Everything's fine. So was that a change of strategy at the last minute there? Well, I mean, we weren't, it was either myself or Charles were going to finish uh, today's event, 
Um, it was kind of perfect timing right now just to get him in and out. Um, we're, we were really hoping to be on the lead lap on this one, but we just didn't catch the, the weather right a couple times. Thank you so much. So there you go, Bruce. It was uh, pretty frantic. So behind me, as you, uh, I'm at the, the entrance to the pit lane. So the looking just down there, there's two or three cars in the pits and a few more coming in. Stop go penalties uh, being taken down here as well. Well, it's very much the time. The 34 Audi that was fortunate not to get involved in that schmozzle at Malmedy, which is effectively the exit of Les Combes, stayed clear. That is serving one of several penalties we knew were coming away for these cars. But for most of these crews, they needed to make a pit stop in the final stage of this six-hour race, the first part of the 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps, and the timing was perfect. Uh, so for Heart of Racing team, they were literally the first car into the pit lane when we went to Code 60. The Audi's up there still being pulled out, and it appears on people looking at replay, it was the uh, 55 Audi that probably triggered that. Certainly it arrived just after the Mercedes 418 that was going in backwards at that corner. And uh, I mean, I'm sure fingers will be pointed, but the car that really got caught out, the 418 is now back on the circuit, being pulled clear of the gravel, but you really had to feel for Elliot Earhart. Back of that grouping, spun around, stuck the car with its tail deep in the gravel up there, and it's taken a long time. It was uh, fighting in fifth place and is now fallen to seventh and will lose more positions because uh, the recovery's taken a while and of course the track will have to be swept after cars were brought out onto the surface from that gravel trap joe yeah it's going to be a bit of a cleanup job i think we've uh, we had the unfortunate sight of elia herhart and the number one audi and we'll uh, just review what happened it looked like potentially we had the land car going around the 418 mercedes and we had the second place, Antoine Duquan Santelot car, taking avoiding action, and he didn't make any contact with any car, and he managed to scramble that car across the gravel trap. Unfortunate for the number one, the number one car of Elia Earhart was completely different. He got hit, I think, and then when he tried to regain the track, he got beached on the curb. He, he remains beached and is still in the process of being recovered. So that is just... That is just the look of the gods, that. It, it really, really is. And quite a few more cars have decided, well, we've been given penalties. We will serve them now because it's code 60. That sucks it up a fair bit more. But uh, certainly for Anton Ducroix to have to go to the outside of two spinning cars, it's then diminishing returns because the gravel trap, which he drove to the back of to get to an access road, you then got the tire ball coming across your nose. It's coming diagonally. And you must suddenly think, I've got, I've got, um, phew, I've got some traction. I'm away from the gravel. And then he steered around. But uh, there was no choice at all for Elliot Earhart. So you really do feel for uh, his co-drivers in that number one Shearer Sport PHX Audi that uh, Pierre Caffo has done a lot of the hard yards and uh, Sven Herberger, who started the race. But it's a car that's had a, its own problems. It's had that vibration problem that they can't quite detect. But I must say, in that stint, Elia Earhart was having no problems. He was as fast as anyone on that track. Great battle uh, with the 34 Land Motorsport Audi, but unfortunately, it's been scrambled. I've just noticed the 27, that's our leader, the Heart of Racing Mercedes. It's been given a 10-second uh, track limit infringement. Now, that's been issued. Now, that was, I think, after that car has come into the pits, which means it's going to take the 10-second penalty. I think the 10-second penalties may be applied, or they may they will have to take them tomorrow. I need to let's have a look at the regs and come back to you on that. Well, we've got 44 minutes and declining uh, remaining until we get to the first six hours or the completion thereof. The number one car is back on the circuit. It's bearing the scars of battle up its right hand it's flank and it's crabbing. So it was a big hit that it took. It was just out of the camera shot. It arrived with that a group of cars. Elia Earhart, well, the back end of the car right, is right. out by about five degrees. Right rear tooling has gone on that car. So the right rear tire is tracking right out. It's, it's, it's basically trying to turn right while the rest of the car is going to try and go in a straight line. So the car is what's called crabbing. Looks like it's going sideways in a straight line. Uh, it looks pretty hideous there for Elia Earhart. That's 10th uh, and falling down the order. So still code 60. It's been a busy day. If you write down the number of incidents in this six hours, no big accidents, thank goodness, but small spins with uh, fairly large consequences, as we saw just then. Everyone, however, even if they kept it on the black stuff, will have a story to tell because the track conditions have been changing almost by the minute. This has been the longest stage in the race in which we've had dry weather conditions. And uh, just as you thought the drivers were starting to, to make the most of that, uh, things started to unravel. So every class has been full of action. And 
while we looked at the GT3 class, we've talked a lot about the Porsche 992 class, and uh, one of the cars that's been going quite well in that, just lost a bit of ground recently, is uh, PK Car Sport. But, you know, other people's incidents have dropped people up and down the order. That class is still being led, though, by HRT Performance. Martin, in the fueling bay, building on the work of Adam Christodoulou, is leading that class, and the car that's always been in the mix. Red Ant have had two cars in the class, and one remains, and it's in there in second place in class. It's going to be to the finish. That's gonna, I was going to say, Bruce, that's going to go all the way to the chequered flag tomorrow, isn't it? It's, it's you know what? Um, just to give people an idea, wherever you are in the world, we've just gone past 5 p.m. here in Belgium, and we've got 42 minutes of this first six-hour segment, and then we, we are going to, you know, the, the second six hours, if you're familiar with 24 series racing, but the, the, 99, the 992 class, as ever, one of the most, if not the most competitive classes. So end of uh, Code 60 within a minute, Joe, and then we'll do it all over again. We've got 40, just over 40 minutes remaining. So let's look at the times. Two minutes, 26, the gaps are in first and second, and that's the 70, 27 Heart of Racing Team Mercedes. But of course, that penalty, will it be served today? 10 seconds stop and go. Well, he won't be coming back in the pit. No. So he won't be able to. And I'll keep an eye on that. Um, it's been issued. Uh, usually we get a notification of when it's being served. But I think that in Frit, that penalty for track limits was given after the car had already been in the pits. He was one of the first ones coming That's in. Right. And then I looked at your screen yeah, and yeah. suddenly a flurry of penalties right, were being yeah. added. They were working in race control, firing through their pile of paper. It's yes. not a pile of paper, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Is it not? I don't want to spoil your dreams. It's an <laughs> enormous pile of paperwork. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Oh, well, you mean it's done electronically? but they have to be taken in the order in which they are issued in most racing championships. Otherwise, if it was a pile of paper and your one just kept getting near the top and dropping down, it wouldn't get read out necessarily. So the Code 60 is going to continue. We thought it was going to end within a minute, but they're still sweeping up, right. apparently up at Malmedy on the exit of Le Combe. Quick update on TCE into the pits in the lead in the Touring Car Endurance Series. Uh, just going out of the pits, actually. The Home Guard Motorsport car continues to lead. Shall I continue? No, no, i just get to say, while we're in Code 60, let's hear from PK Carsport. We were looking to update ourselves on what was happening in the Porsche Cup class. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Stinus Longin. I'm driving for uh, PK Carsport in our uh, new Porsche 992 Cup car. Yeah, it feels uh, really good to, to drive this uh, new car in the 24-hour series championship. Yeah, Spa is a really challenging track, uh, especially because of the, a lot of fast corners and also the long straight, so it's almost that you are driving to another village. So yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really nice, also the woods and everything, uh, I love it here. Yeah, especially here in Spa because of all the fast corners and, and when the fatigue is there, I think uh, it's, 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 uh, when you have an, an incident, it's always on high speed. So yeah, you have to take care of uh, the whole 12 hour race. Um, yeah, it will be challenging. Yeah, I think so. Now we, we drive the pole in the 992 AM class. So happy with that, um, but still we want to get higher in, uh, to, to be the fastest 992 on track. But uh, we all have to learn. So uh, yeah, looking forward to the race. This race here in Spa, especially for us, is just to learn the car. But uh, happy with, uh, with the pole position in the AM class. In the number 123, 36th overall and third in TCE. Well, let's hear from down in the pit lane because something is happening with the number one. It arrived into the pit lane and the crew have just wheeled the car into the garage. Quite a lot of damage to the rear, as you can see. I think Seb is in the garage now, so they're checking around the car. The driver is staying in the car at the moment, but they're um, checking the rear, they're taking the wheels off, and I'm assuming they're brake changing at the back there. So a bit of work going on with this car, as we saw on track, it came to have that coming together. So lots of work going on quite frantically because I think we got sort of 45 minutes left we want to get this car back out. It, it's under 40 minutes to go. Black tape being put on the black car, the number one, of course, the Shearer Sport PHX car that's shown great pace. It's worked its way up and down the order, but sadly, down is the direction. It was in fifth place fighting for fourth and then got caught up in an accident ahead of it and the repairs are going on in the garage at the moment while Gray Newell continues to lead the race in the heart of racing Mercedes. One minute and 48 seconds, the good, but with the sort of Damocles, whether for today or tomorrow with that 10-second stop-and-go penalty to be included in the mix for that, Joe. We, I think we've, uh, we've established that that's not the work of, the mo of a moment to replace the rear suspension on that Audi R8 
and we're seeing a full service now what we saw a mechanic just put on there that's the setup gauges to do tracking and stuff so once you've had a tooling boot and you've got to realign the whole all four wheels and that is just a very time-taking job even at the pace and the skill and expertise of a team like that 40 minutes has become 37 and a half minutes. It's declining all the time. So let's just run down the order at the very sharp end. We heard from Joe just a short while ago with the touring car classes. Let's just give you a refresher for the moment of just the top five because it's changing. But it's Gray Newell leading the 27 Heart of Racing Team Mercedes. Second place, uh, one minute and uh, almost one minute 50 seconds behind Owen Bastard, Santa Locke Junior team. They've had a good run. 91, Ralph Bone in the Herbeth Motorsport. Porsche, importantly, a lap down. Only two cars on the lead lap, and we park them up as they finish. And any gap, as long as you're on the same lap, closes right up. Fourth place, Norman Seidler. It's been a very good run for JP Motorsport, the one and only McLaren. That will be catching, one would think, Ralph Bone, but let's see how they settle down now. We're back on full green racing. And then in fifth place, and leading the Porsche Cup class... It's Luke Breukers. He's got uh, enough fuel surely on board for that car to get through to the first end of the first six hours here at spa Francorchamps. Other cars in the pit garage include the number 55 Audi, of course. That was one that triggered that incident up at the crest of the hill at uh, Malmedy there, and that is having the bonnet up and inspection. But right now, Gray Newell goes on to another lap. That'll be lap 104 he's starting. I'm sure the gap to Owen Bastard will come down a bit, but actually... That's fine, you can protect surely a minute's advantage uh, in 36 minutes remaining. Magnus Holmgaard leading TCE there in the Holmgaard cart, just circulating. Full green track now, and hopefully we'll see this 12 hours of spa. We are about 35 minutes away from completing the first half of that 12 hours. And what a position to be in at the front of this overall field. 103 laps completed for Gray Newell in the heart of racing. SBS is the team underneath that Mercedes. But you know what? If you go to the back of that garage and they've got a big box, and in the box, when you open it, is a Roman De Angelis that they've kept nice and dry, nice and, you know, less fatigued. He's, he's been sleeping. He's just ready to uh, be unleashed, take the lead off, undo the chains, put him in that car to start that car tomorrow in the lead of this race. And, oh, my goodness, what a strong position. I mean, I know we've still got six hours, but that is a very, very strong position to be in. With Roman De Angelis, who hasn't been used at all, you can get four hours of running from him tomorrow. That's phenomenal. I love the picture. It's sort of a cross between a sleeping parrot in a cage with a blanket <laughs> over the top uh, and the school leopard that's about to be uncaged. Yeah, I think the leopard be more uh, of a metaphor. Well, we'll see. Who knows what conditions he'll be setting off in tomorrow, though, because we've had a lot today. Actually, this race has been largely dry, but we've had these flurries of range that have kept things more than interesting. And even now, cars running off the line at unusual points on the circuit can still kick up the, the damp patches. And that's exactly what the Santa Lock Racing Audi is doing. Going past the Lotus, many laps ahead, but uh, for... Owen Bastard, who's uh, finishing the race, took over from Anton Ducan during that scramble of pit stops during the, the most recent Code 60. Urban was started the race and has been very, very impressive. So let's see what he can do. But there's not much he can do. He's a minute down on the race leading heart of uh, heart of racing Mercedes. So all he has to do is just stay on the same lap. But he, he does. just doesn't want to get caught in other people's trouble. And we saw how close his teammate did. You know how difficult that can be, Bruce. Well, let's find out what's going on in the pits. Pits, down with die. I'm in the Land Motorsport garage, the number 55, Chris Mees, has just jumped out of the car, had to bring the car into the garage, looks like a, a bit of damage in there, or is it electrical? No, one of my teammates unfortunately had a little contact earlier, so um, it looks like the tow link is broken. I just went out of the garage to check the car, and obviously the steering is 45 degrees to the left, uh, which isn't ideal on a track like Spa. I guess you've got to go and check to make sure, haven't you? Because when it sort of looks as if it's OK, that's not always the case. No, exactly. So you can't look under the bonnet until you really open it. So um, we're going to fix it. It's going to take about 10, 15 minutes, and we go on a track again, but obviously race over. That's very sad. I guess you're disappointed in that. But just talk to me about the race that you've had so far. What were the conditions like in this latter stage of the day? Uh, I'm lucky enough to not be in the car when the when the rain came. So uh, my day so far has been quite short. I only did the start in for half an hour, then we pitted already. Obviously, with the mixed conditions, um, it's quite tricky also for the non-professionals. 
Uh, it's not an easy task for them. They managed well until obviously now we had the contact. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but it's part of racing. Thanks, Chris. Just to add to the number 55 Land Audi's tale of war, they've been given a 20 second time penalty as well to add to that. It's a, an infringement of Article 27 of the General Code of Driving Conduct causing a collision in basic terms and with other penalties being thrown around as we get towards the conclusion of the first six hours. That 20 seconds will be added to the um, race time at the end of this six hours, I, I, I believe. I need to confirm that. I haven't had a chance to look at the regs like I thought I would be able to, Bruce, but uh, we'll, we'll clarify that as we get uh, into tomorrow. OK, uh, but that, here's just a little thought for you while we, before we dive into those regs. If you... 20 seconds doesn't make a huge difference. If it doesn't cost you a track position... <laughs> you always think it's more fair to be added to a, a, the start of tomorrow in terms of you have to serve a 20-second stop-go. Because at the moment, if you're 20 seconds ahead of someone and, you know, it's not served now or it's taken away from your time, then they, that's, you could suck up that gap. That's right, because the gaps close up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I'm not, that's what I needed to clarify. Because it doesn't make sense adding 20 seconds no. to someone's time when we're all going to start together on the grid tomorrow. There's the leader in the... Number 27, Bryn Ewell, part of racing by SPS Mercedes, just on the Kemmel straight now. And that gap is over a minute to Owen Bastard in the Sonderlock car. Always been there or thereabouts as the Sonderlock team, as indeed has the Herbeth Motorsport, Ralph Bond-driven Porsche, car 91 in third. And then, and you know what, the drive of this race today, for me, has been that McLaren, the JP Motorsport McLaren, Car number 69 started in 40th position, that car, and it had, a, it had a torrid time. It had a torrid time in qualifying, and now it's just clawed its way back and continues in what could be easily a podium position. Well, it's continuing in fourth place, but it's being caught hand over fist by Benny Siemensen, who's just put in the second fastest lap of the race. Two minutes, 22.6 seconds, and closing in in fifth place. We saw Benny a few laps ago running straight on <laughs> at uh, Radion across the curves, across the painted stuff, but not collecting anything. He is flying, so his teammates at Modena Motorsport will be very pleased indeed. That's the driver who started, John Shen and Francis Chia. And the 16 Modena car keeps on rising up the order. Gray New, although, seems to have this one under control. What are we looking at? 30 minutes on the nose precisely to the end of the first half of the 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps. He's almost precisely, likewise, a minute to the good over Owen Bastard. And Owen can close in as much as he wants, but he's not going to claw back a minute in just the last half hour. Or is he? Because just so, not so long ago, we had uh, Tim Muller getting things slightly wrong and taking five cars off up at Malmody, including that car in second place, which was driven at the time by Antoine Ducan, but he's uh, gathered it together, avoided the barriers. Now, Erwin Bastard is in that second place car, but it just goes to show at any moment, particularly if we have another incident that gives a code 60, the field, we, you know, we, has another chance to get it wrong. One car that's impressed all day, it's almost always in the lead of GTX, it's running in 16th place overall. It's the VDS Racing Mark car in which uh, car number 758, started by Raphael van der Straten. The van der Straten is the VDS in VDS Racing. And then the very impressive Nathan van Springle, fellow Belgian, took that over. His first appearance in the car. This is the biggest race he's done. And now uh, Nick Geelan bringing that home to, the, to complete the first half of the race. And that has had a good run. But uh, Dai is very busy down in the pits. Let's find out the latest. Yes, I had hoped to have a bit of an update from the... the the number 58 team for you, MP Racing. Um, the car has come in, it looks, it's looked quite badly damaged. However, just speaking to Karina and her father, they are pretty confident that they will be back out tomorrow. They've put the garage doors down, now they've opened them up again. And they're now just looking through the car. They didn't want to be on camera, unfortunately, to, to discuss it, but they are actually all running around quite frantically looking at the car. There's a lot of superficial damage, obviously, with bodywork but they're now just checking the engine and looking through. They've got the um, laptops out, so they'll be going through all that data, but they feel comfortable that they will be back on track tomorrow. However, looking at the car, not so sure. Mm. I never want to be on camera I, either. <laughs> I, I, I never want to see a car really just fall out of a race. I mean, it's, you know, 
long distance racing is all about getting to the finish, that's the challenge. We've got cars side by side, the second place car of the um, Sanilac team now with Umba start at the wheel. That car being challenged by the Land Motorsport number 34, Max Edelhoff, about to unlap himself on that second place car. He'll want to do that because if he ends up on the same lap, which I believe just that, no, I think, yeah, if he does that, then tomorrow's restart, Max will be right on the tail, quite literally, of that number 26, the Sontelot car. So that is quite an important task ahead of him. Uh, at, this, at this stage, Joe, small differences on the track can make big differences in terms of the second half of the race. So it really, really is critical. We might think we're just on the we've got dry track to run through to the finish. We've been through all those flurries of rain. It's just simply running to the end of six hours. But it's more than that in so many of these cases. And, and you know what I've been saying, Bruce, that you've got to treat it like a 12-hour race. In this situation, you haven't. It's very, very different. And if you are, if you have got the car ahead of you, that is a, a lap ahead of you, then it really is important to get by it because when we do go to the interval, you basically gather that all of that time back. Leader just crosses the line, 107 laps completed. And Great Newell continues in the 27. We'll wait a few, well, almost a minute, I think. It was just under a minute, wasn't it, last time by? I don't uh, want to raise the alarm, but the right. last time around, the, the lap from Great Newell was a 2 minute 41. I expected uh, laps in the, in the high under two minute 30 so i'm going to see the gap will have definitely come down but even if you back off drive it at 95 percent you don't suddenly start lapping in two minute 41 so i'm not wanting to be a scaremonger looking at the 27 heart of racing mercedes nothing visual there to that's untoward it's still flashing zero zero one on the windscreen and i don't see any rain on anybody i don't see any uh, um, windscreen wipers being used so there's a reason why he's going around in almost 10 seconds almost 10 seconds slower 47 seconds now that was what just under a minute last time by he took he took 10 and a half seconds when i say he i mean owen bastard in the santa Lock junior team maybe there was an incident that we didn't say may not see may not have been picked up either but a two minute 41 was the alarm bell for me and owen bastard even in a group of traffic in the santa Lock audi that's number 26 as i said took 10 and a half seconds out of the race lead We've got what left? 25 and a bit minutes remaining in the race. Can't see anything untoward with the race leading heart of racing. Mercedes, we know they just have to stay in front, but suddenly to have a much, much slower lap, and I'm still looking at every image I can to see if anybody is running with uh, windscreen wipers. But some cars, including the car in fifth place, Benny Siemerson, has just set his wow. fastest first sector time. So clearly nothing wrong between the start line and the top of the rise up the Kemmel Strait towards Le Combe. Benny Simonson only four seconds or so behind that. Well, that's all actually three seconds, Bruce, um, because the McLaren ahead of him, 16 seconds behind Ralph Bourne. In yeah, but he Porsche. took. He took. Uh, when I say he, I mean Benny Simonson took five and a half seconds out of the JP yeah. Motorsport McLaren. Norbert Siedler, nobody's fool. He's pressing as hard as he can at this stage of the race. But a two-minute 28.9 second lap. We're going to see a it's change. impressive from Siemenson. We're going, to, we're going to see a change there for fourth, aren't we? We've got the McLaren being harried by the modern motorsports Porsche of Benny Simonson, fourth and fifth places. It's the number 16 Porsche of Simonson, the number 69 McLaren of Seidler. And as the leader clicks by another lap, eight laps completed. Right, he suddenly found 10 seconds. I don't know what right. happened on the maybe previous traffic. lap. It could, well, a lot of traffic, and maybe someone had an incident in front of him and he had to sort of go wide, didn't see it happen, but the gap was, uh, suddenly came down, a much better lap there from Gray Newell. 23 and a half minutes remain in this race. Erwin Bastard will do all he can, but surely he can't claw him in from over a minute away. That's how it was just a handful of, maybe 10 minutes ago, it was a minute and 30 seconds, I think it was, and it's got down, but we'll see what it is. But even around this lap, every lap, the gap's been coming down, but that was a much better lap from the race leading American Grey Newell, heart of racing team, the 27 Mercedes Grey with the blue and yellow flashes on it. And looking very good, quite a subtle colour scheme. Certainly some of the other ones are much, much brighter, including that bright green Santa Lot Racing Audi, which takes only this time two and a half seconds off it. That's much more like it, just 44 and a half seconds now, but uh, the stem has been, the flow has been stemmed, I think we can say, by the race leader. between McLaren and Seidler and Simonson to come through, Bruce. One and a half oh, seconds yeah. between them at the last timing interval. 
They're not going to catch the car in third place, which is the first of the cars that's a lap down. That's Ralph Bone. He was uh, 16 seconds clear of them. Well, they might, but I don't think they quite will. But their own little battle could be very, very interesting indeed. How is Max Edelhoff doing in sixth place overall? I believe he's gotten past Owen Bastard and he's put himself on the... Yeah, what happened in recent laps, he's moved ahead of the leading car in the Porsche Cup class, which was Luke Broikers in the yeah. 909 uh, Red Camel's Jordan car. And I'm just looking to see what the gap is back to the car that's second in the Porsche Cup class. The HRT's performance with the Chinese driver Martin, or Jinji Xi, making his uh, debut here. He's lapping faster than Rick Broik Luke Broikers. He's really putting on a show on his first run here, but he's oh, he's got to find 50 seconds. That's not going to happen. Green, you were lost at least another two and a half seconds there. Up down to 44 and a half seconds. What's 47 and a half seconds? So that's what? That's nearly three seconds, actually. Um, so Bastard is closing the gap. However, that gap's just going to disappear when we get to the uh, when we get to the pause element of this split race. Uh, Ralph Bond still in third place, two minutes and 16 seconds behind the leader. And we look for that McLaren battle that should be coming through underneath us any moment. There's the lead up. Now that on the track, they are just behind the overall leader. So the gap to Seidler and Simonson, that you, we don't need it. We don't need a stopwatch there. There's the Porsche there, hunting down the McLaren, and then the car ahead of them, that's the overall leader. Now, if these two cars can get by that Mercedes in front of them, that's going to unlap themselves for tomorrow's restart. But this is the battle there. That's the number 16 Porsche of Benny Simonson chasing down that black and gold McLaren, who's about to unlap himself from Green Ewell. Here goes the McLaren down the inside into Lecomte. Can Simonson follow him through? The answer is no, not at this stage. So the McLaren will get a bit of a breather with, with Simonson, unable to get past the leading Mercedes and close that gap to the McLaren by unlapping himself. Well, I didn't think we'd see that, but let's find out what's happening in the pits while the overtaking manoeuvre takes place. Die. I am chatting to Christian Clean at the moment while you're discussing what's going on on track. Um, Christian, it's a bit of a game of cards, this race so far. A very difficult race. Uh, results are changing, weather conditions, all the code 60s. When to come in to change tyres, not to change. Putting fuel in the car, it's really a difficult uh, race in terms of strategy, how to play it out. You really have to play the long game, stay on track, no mistakes. I mean, so far we had a quite a decent race coming from very far back uh, right now on P4, I think. Uh, so far, so good. But it's still another six hours tomorrow. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive um, move through the field for you and, and the guys behind the wheel. But how challenging has it been? It's very challenging. First of all, it's the first time that JP Motorsport, we as a team, are here. So we don't know the other cars, we don't know the other teams, the drivers. Uh, sometimes if you're in the whole, the, the whole year in the series, then you kind of know which drivers to take care of, of cars. Uh, and we have to say, Patrick, our team owner, managed it very well. He did most of the running today. Uh, he himself got us up to P4 in the, in the, in the early stages, so he did a mega job. Uh, we have to continue this, uh, this kind of uh, level of driving now, no mistakes. And uh, then it could look like a decent, uh, a decent result, but again, it's, uh, it's all up to the strategy, a bit of luck as well, uh, Yeah, the way the, the, the race pays out for you. Are you satisfied with where you are at this point on the first part of this race? Yeah, I would say so. We, we, are, we are up there at the front. Uh, I think uh, we only see really tomorrow uh, when, when all the, you know, the refueling and the pit stops are done, when, it, when it's basically cleaned up uh, for tomorrow. Uh, but I think, you know, we're up there in the mix. Another long six hours tomorrow, so happy with that. How much are you enjoying being back here racing at Spa? I love it. I mean, Spa is, a, is a, one of the best circuits in the world. Doesn't make matter what car you're driving it. Uh, obviously, the weather was a bit challenging today, but that's also part of this circuit here, and I enjoy myself. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Good to hear from Christian, clean there, and uh, his McLaren and JP Motorsport unlapped itself 
uh, from the race leader heart of racing team who is now a lap down so but anyhow he has got benny seamson closing in on his teammate norbert seedler all over again so still fourth place for jp motorsport with the mclaren but benny seamson got the wrong side of gray newell for several corners so just as it was a nose to tail dropped it back a little bit but while that was happening Lapping on his own, not in trouble with anyone else. Urban Bastard got to 33 seconds away from the race lead, but the clock is counting down faster than his. And the 34 uh, Audi that's been running so well in this race now being pushed back into the pits garage. That was up into sixth place for Max Edelhoff. Came into the pits. What have we got left on the clock? 17 and a half minutes, and yet the engine cover is off. Yes, that is never a good sight. 17 minutes. If this, if this repair takes them into the interval... That's a 10-lap penalty. That's a 10-lap penalty. Attention on the car it, during the interval means you've got to take that penalty. And right turn lover has spotted exactly the sort of thing we're being spotting, Bruce. But this time he's focusing on Ralph Bourne in the 91, unlapping himself and putting himself on that lead lap. He only has to get ahead of him because when we when we throw the flag to bring the interval into place, he'll regain that whole lap. It was so easy for us to focus on the battle between first and second. Remember, there was a lap, 2 minutes 41 for Gray Newell, 10 seconds down on the car's natural pace, the race-leading car, and that could be the difference that's let the McLaren unlap itself. Benny Siemensen in the modern motorsports Porsche. Shall we go down to die for that? Let's, yeah, uh, wait, wait, die. Got, Sorry, die. just checking why that Edelhoff 34 car is in the garage for Land Motorsport. The temperature on the gearbox was too high, so they decided to bring the car in and check it all out, which is why they're working, <laughs> working at the back. Sorry, secondly, crashed into me. Um, so they're working pretty hard to see if they can rectify that. But at the moment, they're sort of saying that's what they think the issue is, but we'll see what happens in the next few minutes. Now, well, if, big if drama. My, Thank you, Di. If my memory serves me rightly, it was a similar issue that the Land Motorsport team had to take in that 10 lap penalty at the Jello. I might be wrong on that. It was, I'm sure it was in a gearbox, an issue with a gearbox. Nick's looking at strangely. Well, I'm sure they had to change a gearbox in the interval. What do you think it was then? He has no idea, so he's giving me a grimace. He's grimacing there as though he's in pain, and he has no idea what we're talking about. And he's just woke up from his nap, to be fair. This is Corns. <laughs> so, Gray Newell leading the race. The gap is coming down. It's only 28 seconds. The heart of racing Mercedes ahead of the Santa Lock junior team Audi. Car number 26, Owen Bastard pushing on. But uh, now just over 15 minutes remains. And that will get us to the end of the first six hours of the 12 hours of spa Francorchamps. But the important thing in recent moments has been drivers unlapping themselves. And with Max Edelhoff, just as he's done the hard work for Land Motorsport, that temperature gauge too high for them and the, they've detected he came into the bits but so is Luke Broikers who just moved in the 992 class leading car number 909 for Red Camels Jordan he couldn't get to the finish without a pit stop and he's just pitted as well so the cars from 6th and 7th are in the pits that means maybe just maybe Charles Espinel will move up a position in the CP racing number 85 Mercedes Charles Espinel does pick his way past Max Edelhoff but Edelhoff uh, certainly the language in the pits, the body language, was not of something in a, a visual rush. Maybe it's something they can fix, maybe it's something they cannot, but it's a real setback. Good run from Max Edelhoff there, but Gray Newell, is he just pacing it at the front of the race? Well, he's still in the front of the race, but the gap is coming down. 28 seconds now is the gap between first and second. And at each of the timing sectors around this lap, the gap is coming down more, but I think that 28-second advantage is ample. Yeah, he doesn't really need to push any more, that'll do, to be honest. Ralph Bond, 1 minute 58 time-wise. Um, 2 minutes 15 for Simonson, he's now ahead of the McLaren. And the McLaren, 2 minutes 17 minutes down on the leader. So, Luke Breakers into the pits for a quick stop. I'm not sure if they've changed drivers there to take it to the finish. What? Down to down to fueling for them, but the clock continues Just to tires. count down. Just tyres, I'm Just told. Just tyres, we're being told. And they've gone into fueling, have they? Yes, they have. So that's the uh, leader in 902, in for tyres. Seems sensible. The 27, though, Bruce, that has had an outstanding run in this race. Well, I think the interesting thing at the moment is the 408 Toyota. The one Toyota in the race serves one of many penalties the crews have been gathering through the first six hours. That is that the part of racing 
car has just served six pit stops. The two cars behind it, the Santalok 28, uh, 26 Audi, has had eight pit stops. Ralph yeah. Bone, the Herbeth Motorsport Porsche, eight pit stops. You have to guess, and sometimes, particularly with Herbeth, they think any moment you can come in under code 60 and get more fuel if you're not stuck in a queue is advantageous. And yeah. Benny Siemenson, though, just continues to fly. He just banged in the fastest first sector of his car at this late stage in the first six hours here at spa Franco. So he's in fourth place not long ago he passed the jp motorsport 69 mclaren for that position he's way too far back surely he can't get another 16 seconds out of ralph yeah. bone he's faster than bone at this moment but i, I think getting into fourth well, has been a good job for modern motorsports last time through he was a second quicker than ralph bone however let's see he's gone green in sector one let's see if he goes green in sector two he's been very quick in that first sector which is of course uh, La Source, Hall Rouge, and down the Camel towards the Com. Um, let's see if Simonson can close that gap. The gap is 16 seconds to Ralph Bone. Again, that gap's going to be irrelevant when we get towards the finish of this, uh, and we're only 12 minutes away from that, Bruce. Right, 12 minutes away, and that means Martin, who's just taken the lead in uh, the HRT performance. A uh, Porsche that's leading the 992 Cup class is into the lead of Cup 2. Uh, the, sorry, the... Porsche class after, of course, we saw Luke Broikers come in to the pits. Oh, Haase, uh, now let's find out. Sorry, we have Dai in the pits and the cars emerged. Two cars have emerged, Dai. Yes, yes. The 34 is back out, just taken off from the pit lane there. Um, although I can see some stickers hanging off the rear of that car. They put more oil in the car um, and they seem to have resolved whatever the issue was. And they're getting back out, obviously, before we get to the end of the session now. Yeah, very important not to have the car being worked on during the interval. That's an immediate 10 lap penalty. So great work from the Hasarte. I mean, they're out of contention. This is now developed into a, what will be a six hour test session for them tomorrow. Unless something really, really dramatic happens to everybody in front of them, they uh, will, of course, rejoin many, many laps down. We'll clarify that as we get into tomorrow. Into the pits has come the number one. That is the car that had major suspension damage, and that was an, an outstanding job on the number one. The Shearer, the Shearer car dropping all the way down to 25th spot from being in contention from an overall podium. You damage there on the right rear corner, and bodywork, bits of bodywork being missing. Uh, good use of uh, gaffer tape there. Whatever it was, that was uh, flapping around. They've now removed. Looks like it's been off. Yes, I'm not sure if it's flew off there on the camera. Yeah, I'm afraid it would have flown oh, off. That gravel was... on the on the floor here as the car just took off there. But lots of tape flapping around in that one as we saw them just taping up that bodywork. So here we were at the start of the race. It was all about Audis working their way to the front, and several of them have taken a tumble, most notably recently the 34 Max Edelhoff car. Glad to see that rejoined. Whatever it was, whether it was gearbox temperatures, which was the initial report, and that's dropped it down the order. But for Santalot Racing, suddenly they're waving the flag for Audi, and the next closest Audi is down in 13th place due to racing. Jonas Kajilnis, it was a car that was spun not long ago, about an hour ago at La Source, but it was all Audi in the early stages, and they have had their problems. It's all Mercedes at the moment. The gap may be coming down. Not may, it is. It's down to 24 seconds, the gap between first, Grey Newell, and the 26 Santalot Racing Audi in second place. And that, in turn, is well clear. One and, a, one and a half minutes almost clear of Ralph Bone in the third place, Herbert Motorsport Porsche. But the fact is, we've got three cars in the lead lap, four cars uh, on the lead lap as Benny Siemenson goes through, and I think five cars. Surely Norbert Seidler will get through before Gray Newell. Yes. McLaren crosses the line, so five cars on the lead lap. 113 laps on the board, and we're getting towards the end of the first six hours here at spa Francorchamps, waiting for Gray Newell to come round one more time. That will be 114 laps on the board. The margin may come down, but as long as he leads this race at the checker, he'll take the start. Crosses the line now. Yeah, the pace is fine. He's got enough to get to the finish. Surely he will start first tomorrow when the race kicks off at 10.30 in the morning. So the heart of racing by SPS continue to lead. Let's have a look further down the order and in the TCE running. We've had a very strong showing from the Home Guard Motorsport Cooper Leon. The Magnus Home Guard driven car 102, 30th overall. Now has three GT cars. Uh, they are on 106 laps completed. And the next car in TCE, 104 laps. So a two lap lead going into the 
second part of this event. Second place, Jorge Pellegruith, the current reigning young driver, European champion in the number 123. Currently 34th overall in the rail keep by Top Class Sport Cooper. And then in third place, all TCR cars uh, running in the top three in the Touring Car Endurance section of this race. And it's Yasmin Prysik in the Wolf Power Racing Audi RS3. Yasmin Car 121 in 35th overall. Fourth on 101 laps is the BMW M2, the CS Racing Car, Roma Racing by BMW, with uh, Johan Lambrechts at the wheel of the 245, their 40th overall. And then the uh, last of our runners out on track in TCE is the TC class car, the only TC class car we've got here this weekend. BMW M2, it's the underpowered car, underpowered, slightly less powered car, I should say. Over racing by Bob Motorsport, that is. Martin Kroll at the wheel, 331 is the number of the car, and they're in 43rd place overall. Thanks for running through those, Joe. But one car I, I think we've scarcely mentioned, but bit by bit it's been going up the chart. Hofer Racing, car number 11, the Mercedes that uh, kicked off at the start of the race in the hands of Chantal Prince, now in the hands of her husband, Alexander Prince, moved up, getting closer and closer to the tail. He's in eighth, heading for seventh. Will he get there? We've only got six and a half minutes remaining in this race, but his next target is the car that's leaving the Porsche 992 class. And the car that's third in GT3 Am, Hofer Racing, number 11 Mercedes. Alexander Prince has been doing a superb job. He's been super consistent the last 10 so laps I've been looking at him. And even now, he's setting his first best sector time. Wow. So he's timing it well. And as a, other cars have hit problem, you take it, you gain the position. And certainly that's For been a climb. Former champions, Hofer Racing. Exactly. Consecutive champions, actually. They won two years running. And uh, they, they had a horrendous qualifying and were way down uh, from where we expected them to be after yesterday's qualifying so it's been a bit of a recovery drive for the number 11 Mercedes and seventh over uh, seventh in class I should say but they're all, all they're also on a class podium there third in the GT3 Am class of this race so uh, they're heading in the right direction going into the final six hours which will um, what time did you say we start 10 30 10 30 in the morning we start yes we can get in for then we'll give right. it a go yeah. Is it so, no, it's 10.30, the start of tomorrow's race. And uh, looking forward that, to that enormously. We've had so many variables today, and having commentated last weekend on the World Endurance Championship that was super wet here, it was, uh, it's really provided some incredibly exciting racing. The fact we've got another six hours tomorrow is enthralling. I would suggest we'll get the majority of the 50 cars that started today out to play again tomorrow. Been minor damage, but it was good to hear from Dai a short while ago that the MP Racing... Uh, Gosner family Mercedes was being worked on and they expect that to be out in a good way, out of the race, not out of the race tomorrow. Yes, they worked really hard, didn't they, to, uh, to get that car repaired, to resume. They'll immediately take a 10-lap penalty like we've described. They're the 121 car. That's the Yasmin Prysik driven Wolf Power racing car. That car currently third in TCE, third in the TCR class. And the TCR, uh, the TCE battle, I should say, is kind of strung out so much. She's chasing down Jorge Bellon-Ruiz in the rear keep by Tokar. And the gap is 14 and a half seconds between those two cars in that class. So ahead of Yasmin is the Cupra, the Audi RS3, of the Wolf Power team there, the purple, distinct purple livery for Yasmin. You've kind of seen that livery, and I think of Yasmin Prysik straight away. Yeah, it's good to see, but I tell you what, we may yet have a change. Alexander Prince is now in the number 11 Mercedes, he's just gone, he's picking off more positions, but in terms of track position, he's uh, he's up to seventh overall. So he's moved ahead of Martin, who's uh, leading the 992 Cup class. That's dropped uh, the Chinese driver down to eighth place. But Modern and Motorsport aren't finished yet. We've got four minutes left on the clock, just under now. And Benny Siemenson is about seven seconds down on Ralph Bode in the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche. Surely he cannot manage that, but he is closing all the time. Well, Ralph Bourne, as we see the Hofer car go going ahead of that Herbeth car. I thought it was the other way around, but the Alexander Prince absolutely on a charge. He's found his speed. He was a little bit concerned earlier on by the way he was driving with the changeable conditions, but he's absolutely coming into his own here and absolutely charging round 
he's been putting in personal best sector times for that car throughout this race coming here very late in the in the race but he's, he's already pulled ahead so he's pulled a lap back from the third place Ralph Bon Herbeth car and he just look at the gap he's pulled from that number 91 Porsche so right. he's given himself a huge cushion there. Well, Ralph Bone, you might think he was safe in that third place. I said Benny Siemensen's closing. He's seven and a half seconds down. But Ralph, going down the hill past the old pitch, just didn't want any risk at all. Yeah. If you're coming past and you unlap yourself on me, that doesn't matter quite so much. But if you take me off, that does matter, because I'm protecting third place for Herbeth Motorsport here. Leading the race, though, Gray Newell, under 14 seconds is his margin now. 13.8 seconds last time, his margin over Owen Bastard in the Santelot Racing Team. But look at the clock, two and a half minutes remain. Six hours, the first six hours here at spa Francorchamps, very nearly coming to a close. He's got to stroke it, and he will start tomorrow's race, surely at the front for the Heart of Racing Mercedes team, run by SPS Automotive Performance. But uh, now on a dry track, Quickish laps, but of course the tyres are a little bit tired. It's the end of the stint. It's almost the end of six hours of racing. Just two minutes remaining, waiting to see what the gap is between Gray Newell and the 27 Mercedes for Heart of Racing. And Erwin Bastard, he won't be able to close it down. So the gap I'm really looking at is Benny Siemensen in fourth place, the 16 Modern Motorsport Porsche, catching the Porsche, the black Porsche of Herbeth Motorsport and Ralph Boat. I think there's enough in hand from Ralph to hold on to third. Or is there? We're getting towards last lap as well, Bruce, before we uh, bring this first six hours to a close. Inside of uh, just about inside of 90 seconds. Here comes the leader then. That will be going on to the final lap of this first six hours. Green Newell crosses the line. He's completed 117 laps. He'll finish the first six hours on 118 laps. Just out of the source now and down towards Eau Rouge. I was going to say the gap will be under 10 seconds. Oh, I'm very wrong. It's 10.6 seconds, the gap from first to second, from Gray Newell to Erwin Bastard. But as Gray Newell dives down past one of the BMWs of the junior classes into, and importantly, out of uh, Radion for the last time in the first half of the race. We are now on the last lap. He's negotiated a pinch point there. All he has to do is keep it clean up the hill to... Combe in the background, 10 seconds, no doubt closing, but with no time left to do it is Owen Bastard in the green-nosed Asantalok Audi, car number 26, but it's 27, the Mercedes of Heart of Racing, leading out of Lecombe through Malmody, the corner that had, well, you can see the gravel is all rucked up because that's where we had a schmozzle, as I described it. That's a technical turn for five cars off the circuit. Yeah, I like that term, Bruce. I've used it twice now. Shemozzle. That's being parked for a decade. Yeah, schmozzle. Um, cars will come together tomorrow for the restart, so the, the gaps between them into the final stages of this lap um, are going to be rendered irrelevant. The interesting bit to look out for is the fact that we've got five cars on the lead lap that will be starting literally side by side. The first car off the lead lap, and I believe actually We've got six cars, six cars on the lead lap as Charles Espinlaub goes through on 117 lap. Ah, sorry, no. no. There we go. Sorry, no. I got that totally wrong. I'm misreading the timing screen. I missed the fact we've got three cars on the lead lap. Four cars. Because Benny Siemensen is very close to Ralph Bone. The gap between them is now only, what, oh, 10 seconds? Ah, right. So, right. So we've got Charles Espinlaub. He is, I saw that right. The 85 car is the first lap off the lead lap. Yeah. So we've got uh, the first five cars, the McLaren being the last car on the lead lap. Espen Laub is the first car off the lead lap, and then closing down on him is Alexander Prince, who's the fastest Mercedes, if not the fastest car on the track at the moment. One of the fastest cars on the track with a 225 last time by. And here comes Green Newell. He will take the check and flag to complete the first six hours of the 2023 Hankook 12 hours of Spa. 118 laps on the board. He will start the second half of the race, the six hours tomorrow at 10.30 in the morning from a pole position in the heart of racing Mercedes. And Dai is down the pits even at this very late stage. Yes, I'm here with the team celebrating the number 27. Um, that is the most satisfying position to be in at the first half of this race. Yeah, obviously uh, half the job done now and uh, just the two amps are driven so far. So we're proud to, uh, proud to be where we are. How would you describe this session? Nerve-wracking, uh, crazy, and uh, 
changing. I mean, like we just never know what the weather's going to do from lap to lap. So uh, we're just glad uh, no incidents and uh, cars in good shape. What's been the biggest challenge for not only yourself as but you know being behind the wheel, but for the team? I think it's just planning. You know, it's really hard to do the strategy when you don't know what lap to lap the weather's going to do. Um, keeping the tyres, you know, the right pressures and stuff like that with the changing conditions has been a real challenge. Uh, but faultless pit stops, they're great. How would you like to see tomorrow go? Ah, same as today. In the lead. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ian. Thank you. I'll tell you what, Bruce, what a position to be in. They're not just in the lead. They've got Roman De Angelis there. That young man is a massive hot shot in the car. And to think that he's got, he can, they can maximise his driver running. The two hands have done their, their driver time. They've done their job. Um, I'm pretty sure they'd let him do the whole six hours. That's not going to happen, of course. But uh, he'll certainly maximise his driver's stints. So it bodes very, very well. However, there's one thing looking good on paper. The actual, what we've seen here today, just has been literally a roller coaster of a ride for pretty much everyone. With the intermittent rain that Spark can bring, the intermittent driver, driving standards that you know, varying racing drivers can bring and a, a range of skill and experience brought together. The TCE leader there, the Holmgard car of Magnus Holmgard finishing there in 30th overall, the number 102 will start from the TCE pole position. Thank you very much and let's go back down for an interview at SPS. I am, yes, I'm with Roman, who you were just chatting about, and uh, the commentary team were just saying they're obviously, the team are using you, going to be using your talents tomorrow um, to benefit from what you have today. How are you feeling? Yeah, I definitely dressed for the part. I had my, my suit on, ready to go a couple times today, um, including right now. So really, really good job by Gray and Ian today and the whole team. Um, I, think, I think we won, uh, won the day on strategy for sure um, and keeping it clean. I think a lot of cars had issues and... We made some really good calls to stay on slicks, and Ian did a great job. So, put us in a good position for my busy day tomorrow. How were you feeling, though? You know, back here in the team garage, watching everything unfold. You were obviously anticipating that moment where you might get in the car yourself. Yeah, I had, I had my my helmet on on pit lane a couple of times, so um, kind of used to it with Mugello the way it worked out. But yeah, I mean, tomorrow will be a, a great day. I'm excited to drive. It's supposed to rain, and I enjoy driving here in the wet quite a bit. So it'll be uh, really enjoyable. So as you've been here with the team today, have you been chatting to the engineers constantly on strategy, watching what the drivers are doing, talking to them when they come back in? Yeah, I've been in a, in a chair behind them pretty much the whole day. So I've been, uh, been not busy, but entertained, um, watch everyone, everyone do their job and uh, kind of get an idea of how the race is going to function. So I have a good idea tomorrow for, for how to play it out. So Great. Well, we'll talk to you tomorrow for sure. Thank you so much. He's Canadian. So he's used to driving in the rain. There and you go. As he's just said, he enjoys driving in the rain. Quite That's right. Quite formidable. Heart of Racing team. We just heard from Gray New uh, from uh, Roman De Angelis there. Ian James and Gray Newell did all the driving, and they were victors of, of the first half of the race by 7.7 .7 seconds. It came right down as the 20 socks, 26 Santa Lock racing Audi it got closer and closer to the heart of racing Mercedes but first they have finished so second place Santa Lock junior team Herbert Motorsport just held on with their 91 Porsche to third place from the charging Benny Siemenson in the Moderna Motorsport Porsche fifth place also on the lead lap JP Motorsport McLaren and sixth place did stay on the lead lap was uh, CP Racing Charles Putman Charles Espinal and Shane Lewis seventh place Hofer Racing really closing in very hard Indeed, an HRT performance, the top Porsche Cup class car, Martin, the Chinese racer, bringing that home in eighth place. And in fact, there was a real sort out in the Porsche Cup because uh, the 955 Villy Motorsport by Ebi Motors car moved up to ninth at the end, which is second in class. Third in class went to E2T pay, E2 to T E2P racing, sorry about that, and Red Ant racing uh, down into fourth in class, fifth in class at the end after real sort out, Red Camel Jordans. They uh, tumbled down with that late pit stop, costing them time. 13th place overall, Juta racing with their Audi, and then Red Ant racing their second car down in 14th place. That led the race at one point. Car number 758, top in the GTX class in 15th place overall, just ahead of the Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini. 
Uh, that's car number 10. 17th place, Land Motorsport. It, it's ran, ran higher than that, but that late pit stop and push into the garage put the 34 car down to 17th place. The Porsche Baltic crew took 18th place overall. HRT performance second car, Roberto Pampanini was one of the drivers in that. That ended 19th. PK Car Sport also in that grouping in 20th position overall. That was with their Porsche. Then the Black Falcon Team Techstar car, car number 920 was 21st. 22nd was GT3 Poland with their Lamborghini Super Trofeo car. Then 23rd position, the HRT Performance uh, Porsche, just ahead of the 720 RD Signs Lamborghini from the CLU Racing Team. That was running in the GTX class, running third in that category. Due to racing, Another of their Audi 72 was spun off quite late in the six hours today, and that dropped it down to 25th position overall. And Shearer Sport PHX, a late sort out. Elia Earhart was fighting over fifth place. They've dropped to 26th place with A, a delay being pulled out of the gravel, and B, time having repairs in the garage. Bagheera by ZM Racing, first in the GT4 class with their Mercedes. Good job for them. Then Black Falcon, Team Techstar, then 919 in 28th position overall. Lion Speed by GP powered SRS Saul Rensport is a long name it's a GT4 Porsche Cayman that's good for 29th position 9 und 11 racing Porsche that was 4th in GTX in 30th then 403 the Atlas BX motorsport car uh, largely Korean crude come, came home in 31st first position not so far ahead of TCL Motorsport by AR Performance uh, BMW. That was 32nd. 33rd was the better place to the two Vortex V8s. That was car 701. And then the initially smoky X Swift Toyota that ended up fifth in GT4 in 34th position. PB Racing. 35th overall, that was 6th in class. That was the little Lotus, lovely little Lotus. 36th, the 979 Speed Lover Porsche. 37th, Land Motorsports Troubled, but very quick in parts, number 55 Audi. That was the car that set the fastest lap of the race in the hands of Christopher Meese, but it had its problems. Then PCR Sport, 418, that was the Mercedes in the GT4 class in 38th. Senkir Motorsport, the Czech team with their BMW, 39th. And 40th position for MP Racing, it was the bright green Mercedes that had the nose down the Okay, my brother will start at 30 hours, come to a bit slower, finish this time.